Denver Broncos are going to get better today, boys. And we are going to be here to break it all down. Welcome back into DMVR's coverage of the 2022 NFL Draft with my ultimate guys. Mm. Some are <laughs> calling this the death lineup. <laughs> this is the death lineup, the, the death lineup. <laughs> yeah. for more ways than one. Uh, Henry Chisholm, Andre <laughs> Simone, two guys who know the draft. I'm just here to talk and make bad jokes. Mm -hmm. Did we um, go live on Twitter here? I think I think we did go live on Twitter. Yes, yeah. so we are I, very live. Just for I've Ryan, we're all out. over the internet. Yeah, That's for, great for my account. I like to take all the credit <laughs> for things around here, just like you guys as draft picks. Um, this is gonna be fun. We cannot wait to find out who are going to be the new Denver Broncos. And I think the most exciting part, guys, is there are so many good players left now. The less exciting part is that we're still 32 picks away from the Broncos picking. For now. That does sound like a lot when you say it. For now. Do we want to hit the best available? Yeah, let's check out the best available according to who? Dre? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep, so I take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And That's we have right. All right. Uh, best available, numero uno, Nicobe Dean. I'm Only obsessed. first round grades still available So according to my board. I'm obsessed. Yeah. Um, I never yeah. once considered the possibility of him being a Denver Bronco. Mm -hmm. And so I just never cared. It's like um, Trevor Lawrence last year. Like, I'm not going to obsess over Trevor right. Lawrence tape. Right. Mm -hmm. He's never going to be a Bronco. Well, now it's at least not not a possibility, mm. um, which so means true. it is you a possibility. Like <laughs> um, and so this is like the ultimate dream for me. And, you know, like throughout this draft process, we've been talking about Oh, David Ojabo, that's the one who could potentially slip and obviously is a top 10 prospect who you could get. We never talked about N'Kobe Dean because I didn't think he had a chance. Last night, the Georgia defense sets the record for most ever first round picks off Crazy. of one side of the ball on one team. And yeah, the best player on realize. that team is still on the board, in my opinion. Um, he was by a safe margin, right? Yeah. Like the most consistent playmaker week in week out so i feel like i'm taking crazy pills over here because mm -hmm. yeah. i'm yeah. like oh we're really doing this positional value thing with that guy yeah. with yeah. that guy like i think he's actually a perfect example of it now that defense probably would have been great without him but a great middle linebacker can be transformative for a defense and so for me it's like Go get this guy. Forget positional value. And the second round is where you could take risks on positional value, such as Javante Williams last year. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, this is like the ultimate dream. This guy, I think, would be transformative for the Denver Broncos defense. I think he'd be, you know, a 10 year fan favorite. Um, just, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. He has a chance. I mean, it's interesting to look, though, because he probably was their best player. Yeah. Like, yeah. he probably just was. Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, Trayvon Walker, the number one overall pick. I think he graded out as like their 17th best defender by production, which is just crazy to think about. Right. You know, Quay Walker, the other inside linebacker, he wasn't even... I'm sorry, 17th? I'm pretty sure it was 17th. I can't find the tweet this quickly because I don't even know how to search for that shit, but wow. Quay Walker in front of him too. Yeah. Definitely less productive. So, oh. Faster though. You guys are smarter than me. Why is this happening? For one, not prototypical size. If you saw him like walk off the bus, like Trayvon Walker, you know, is one of those guys you want walking out the bus. N'Kobe Dean, you might see him walking out the bus and be like, oh, is that a, a fullback? Is that an H-back right there? You know, not well, necessarily how, how prototypical. I think he's like 5'11", right mm -hmm. around six feet, okay. which yeah. whatever. We've seen Hall yeah. of Fame linebackers at that size. Um, and then it sounds like a, a big part of this has been injury issues. Okay. And that's the least fun reason why a guy falls. Yeah. Like, no, it it's, sucks. It, there's just no way to know if a guy's going to be healthy, he's going to be hurt. But, you know, sometimes you draft Michael Porter Jr. and you just hope that he stays healthy because you got an opportunity that you shouldn't have had to get such a good player. Yeah. Um, and again, I, I actually disagree with the whole linebacker positional value take. I think linebacker is an insanely valuable position. But there's, it's like um, there's a different bar for it, right? And and I think running back applies to this as well, but the bar is even yeah. higher. Yep. Where it's like, okay, yes, you can just get Josie Jewell in the fifth round. So I think he was in the fifth, mm -hmm. maybe the fourth. Fourth. And he's going to be good. You know, he'll do a fine job. And so you're not going to, like, worry about the position. And that, that makes sense. It's understandable. 
But as soon as you get above that level, you start mm -hmm. to notice, like, I'm not comparing him to Roquan Smith, but Roquan Smith was absolutely transformative for the Bears' defense. Mm -hmm. Vic Fangio was never the same without Roquan Smith, uh, or at least never got up to that quite that mm -hmm. level without mm -hmm. Roquan Smith. So it's like, if you get a guy that's that guy, of course the value is there. And it's the same with running back with like a Derrick Henry. It's just there's only like four or five yep. of those in the yep. whole league. Well, I think it's really similar to tight end. In the it's yep. it's just about being well rounded. Like if you're if you're a fast guy, Albert O, yeah, congrats. You're a fourth, fifth round draft pick, something like that. Because mm -hmm. you're fast, you go catch a bunch of balls, but you're not the X factor that people want. Like you're always looking for somebody who can mm -hmm. block and run and keep the defense honest. It's similar with linebackers, where you, you want guys, obviously, first of all, you have to be able to make tackles in the running game, but if you can become an eraser in coverage too, then all of a sudden you're super right. Right. super valuable. And and for a guy like Nakobe Dean, like really good between the tackles, really good yeah. downhill. Nope. Coverage wise, he's good. He's good. But he's not somebody you just say, Oh yeah, go put on Travis Kelsey and things are gonna work it's not out Rope all right. on Smith. First. Yeah. What, but yeah. if you're just playing him in man on a running back out of the backfield isn't Christian McCaffrey, you're gonna be just fine. I love my guy Jose in the comments. If you could scroll up, it's being covered to me right now. Um, but he said, all pro inside linebackers in, uh, don't win Super Bowls. In the 21st century, outside of Ray Lewis and Bobby Wagner, if you're a Pro Bowl inside linebacker, you're not winning. There is no correlation there. Absolutely I none. I mean, totally. also, I don't know, like Levante David um, seemed like a pretty key piece to yeah. a and, team uh, that won the Super Bowl just two years ago. There's the other guy, Devin White. Yeah, they were pretty good. I'm telling yeah. you. It's just, it just hits different when you have one. Now, again, you, you almost don't even notice Josie Jewell out there when he's out there, and that's a good thing. You know, sometimes you're looking at him after he got torched on a pass play or whatever, but for the most part, you're just like, yeah, it seems like he's always in the right spot. He makes the play. He doesn't do anything spectacular, and you can get by with that. When you hit one, it's the, it's the best. It's one of my favorite things to watch is, like, a great inside mm -hmm. linebacker. The Broncos mm -hmm. haven't had one in years. I mean, Danny T... Maybe. Danny T was good. Brandon Marshall was, I mean, a key piece, but like an actual Those guys were beneficiaries star? of the people around them. It's, it's Al, Al Wilson. Wilson. It is absolutely Who? Al Wilson. I hate that. People our yeah. age will we'll go 45 minutes just like waxing poetic. Oh, Al yeah. It's, it's Zach's favorite player of all time. Uh, and that's, of what, that's kind of what I mean. Oh, like, that's the, and it's it's all so memorable when you see a great one. Mm -hmm. Like survey hat. 20 people on our staff, 15's favorite player all time is going to be a running back or linebacker. Right, right. Like, even those those are the less valuable Who's your favorite positions? player all time? Oh, TD. Oh, uh, yeah. I love it. Hank? Yeah. Probably Champ. TD's generational. TD player. was, yeah. If, if I was five years older, it would probably be TD. But Champ has got to be number one. I don't one. think I understood football to the no, level Champ's where I could, one, I could appreciate Champ huh. as much. as Because, like... The best thing about a shutdown corner is that the whole side is shut down, you know? And totally. Like, if you True. get the game, you're like, that's True. awesome. If you don't, you're like, I don't know. He just didn't have a lot of yeah. interceptions no, this year. Obviously, he had you know, the one year where he went crazy, which was amazing. Remember sure. remember when he picked off that pass, returned it like 108 yards or whatever, but yep. only got down to the one? Mm-hmm. I remember going to football practice the next day, and this is up in Montana. People wouldn't say this in Colorado, but but the coach went on this whole big spiel about, like, that's effort. Like, he just gave up on the play. Like, you don't want to be like Champ Bailey on that play. I was like, he picked it off and got tired after running 105 yards. Like, let's let's calm Give down a here. little break, yeah. yeah. Hate that guy. Yeah. Man, my favorite of Screw all time. Him. Honestly, I think it was Rod Smith. That's a good one. I, was, I just yeah. loved Rod That's Smith. That's a good one. Yeah, you seem like a guy whose favorite player would be a wide receiver. <laughs> well, it, no, it's just my whole thing about, like, not standing the, the main guy. Which yeah. Jokic has completely dissolved that for me. Like you have no, uh, you have no choice but to stand Jokic. No, uh, but no. I always want to be like, like I bought a, a Rantanen jersey before I got a McKinnon jersey. You know, that's just how I am. Uh, okay, so my guy, like my number one guy, is Nicobe Dean, and so I'm calling this a shot spec. It's not a prospect. It's a shot spec. Why? Because if the Broncos get him, we're doing shots. So I want everyone in here, and there's five people in the room oh, right yeah. now. Everyone gets to pick one. If it hits, we lose our minds, we take shots, we party all night. Can we party either way? 
We can party on. Oh, okay, Pedro. sounds good. We're partying. It's Friday night after Easy. all the yeah. VR bar. It's yeah. gonna be a blast. It is. Broncos are making draft picks, getting better. I mean, don't you always party at every acquisition? Yeah, I have to. I mean, come on, you guys remember? I love that. a good acquisition party. That Tomlinson blowout we did. I'm, oh, the Eric Tomlinson. My spine's party. still feeling that one. <laughs> um, what does that mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, Dre, who's your shot you spec? To find out, David Ojabo. Not a first round grade for me because he did unfortunately have, I mean, really a freakish accident at his pro day. Um, so, you know, maybe a bit of a red shirt season, gray shirt halfway through. They have the depth at edge right now. It's mm -hmm. yep. drafting edge for next year and beyond. Um, he would have been a top 10 pick for me had he stayed healthy. He should have been considered at ninth overall. Had the Broncos stayed there and he stayed healthy. He's the one guy you can really say um, when you put that Michigan tape on. Had more than a few moments where he was the best player on that defense and not Aiden Hutchinson. He's just bendy, really, really talented outside pass rusher whose upside is, uh, I mean, he's still just scratching the surface. Totally. So that's, that's a shot spec if I yeah, ever They heard call him... The Scottish shotsman. They should. Yeah, a lot really? Of people are saying that. That's yeah. what people are saying? Because of this. Probably yeah. not right the now. Scottish shotsman. Wow. They just call him the shotsman. The shotsman. Well, I just wanted to point out that he's Scottish because <laughs> I learned that. Five right, ago. right. You did have to line that up. Grew up in Scotland, came to the mm -hmm. States to play basketball at an academy. Failure. Not so great at <laughs> basketball. Lots of dunks, not much more. I believe that. Figured out football. Uh, you know who inspired him to make the switch? Me? Jason Owe. You remember uh -huh. him? Late first rounder. No way. Freak athlete <laughs> out of Penn State who goes to the Ravens. And uh, Owe made the switch. Ajabo said, why don't I make the switch? Next thing you know, high-end recruit. That nut Jim Harbaugh brings him to Michigan. What a nut. Took him a couple years to figure it out, but exploded last season. Great human interest story as well, Ryan. Love a good human interest story. He'd love Zach. I saw He'd Kale, Zach's Kale popping on the screen. Let's go to Kale's. Yeah, mine's got to be Trey McBride, guys. Uh, That's a good one. Kale took uh, mine. Mine's Trey McBride, too. Okay, we got two okay. Trey McBrides. That means we have to take <laughs> two shots. shots. I'm gonna hey, hey it no, three. no, that's not allowed. <laughs> two that's shots in allowed. one, double shot. Wow. Those uh, guys are proud to be. But, yeah, I mean, why would it not be Trey McBride? The guy, the hometown kid, um, we've got the prospect up here. I'll let Dre talk about him more as a prospect. But I think it should be an absolute party in here if Trey McBride's a Bronco. Well, it definitely it should be, be a party in here. And it there'll probably be, be like another party mm -hmm. in here. Trey McBride's already a DNVR athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be fun. In Missouri, they call those true sons. True sons. Okay. We got to come up with something that sounds less cultish. <laughs> That's yeah, true. right. Or wow, that does sound bad. It sounds like a white supremacy. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah, come up with something white, that sounds more supremacist. Yep. Yeah. Um, Jose, also Bobby Wagner, those Seahawks Super Bowl teams. I know you're getting on people because Keekley never won a ring. Don't forget about B Dub. Close. B Dub. Yeah. He did come close. Yeah. I feel like you can say that about any position. Like which great running backs won the Super Bowl? What about which great wide receivers? Like Randy Moss got one. Who's the versatile Collins who won a ring with the Patriots? The versatile Collins. Jamie Collins. Oh. oh. I also feel like He's we're good. we're yeah. massively, <laughs> massively underrating all those Patriots teams who have always had good inside linebackers. They do. My guy. <laughs> uh, Mike Vrabel, anyone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Was, well, Mike Vrabel. Vrabel's making his point because he's Back washed, bro. All right, Henry, your shot spec. Okay, and then back to Mike Vrabel because we need to ask Henry <laughs> about the Mike Vrabel. The castration Mike. dilemma. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. No. The classic castration. The Mike Vrabel familiar. complex. He's familiar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think uh, I got to go with Troy Anderson. Uh, I was kind of tempted. Uh, I'm so glad you took him because I wanted. I was going to make him like my backup. Like, yeah. I was going to be like, I get two just because I'm hosting and I make the But rules. an just, untrue son. Well, he's true to me. Aww. Also, screw that guy. My rival of my entire life. But um, he doesn't know who I am, by the way. I should clarify that. Um. We'll get him on a Zoom after this. The reason I chose him, though, was because I feel like they kind of have two shots Bruce at him. I, th I think he's one where 
if, if you were to say that the Broncos are going to trade up and get him, you'd be like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, he's RAS freak. And I don't know that the Broncos Let's are actually... Go. I don't know what the Broncos actually, like, look at RAS scores. <laughs> Where are my RAS like, oh, freaks they, do. they look at this... Well, well they have to if there was such a correlation between who they picked last year well, and RAS scores. Except RAS score is just how good an athlete you are. So they could just be saying, that's a freak we athlete like uh, without the actual score. But yeah, uh, like, the, the point is... If you like freak athletes, athlete. I feel like you would be interested in the scores. I mean, if you can quantify things, I'm all in. Um, but yeah, he. Uh, Let me tell you about dynamic player rating. It's greatest. The hell is that of all time? <laughs> That's my metric, Henry. Oh, whoops. you were still in college. Uh, then. It was, was a metric that aimed to right. contextualize every performance, and I loved it in all sports. In all for sports. every position. Oh, so you could compare across On sports. A scale of one to a hundred, but could not be broken and could go over a hundred. F- uh, fun fact <laughs> about <laughs> only Troy the greatest Anderson. work I've ever done. <laughs> Fun fact about Troy Anderson: I covered him at, in, when he played at Dillon High School in Montana. Yeah. So Dillon, I, I Montana, have a personal stand connection. Up. It's wild. Ninety minutes from the tell nearest us about Walmart. your time covering him. Ninety minutes. From he Walmart. was always like it didn't matter what sport it was. He was the dude the that was gonna get the points. It yeah. didn't basketball. He was winning. He was doing track. He was winning. And so, like, yes, that my, that adds to it. He's just – he's a beast. My junior year, we beat him in the state championship in basketball. No, I was in the student <laughs> section. Yeah. Hank was going one on one with him all I day. I so. In the post. Well. <laughs> in the I post, probably was. Henry was nasty. Yeah. They they play in 2A out there in Dillon, Montana? That's the that? highest level of Montana football. 2A is? Yeah. They're, oh, they're A. That Do is we? crazy. Columbia Falls, also Class A. Class A is the highest or lowest? Second highest. Oh, Do we okay. know how it goes down high to C. A goes in... <laughs> so it's 2A, A, B, C. And you can right. even get into C, yeah. six man, and C, eight man. Oh, yeah. geez. Oh. Oh, yeah. Six man. <laughs> That's <laughs> my vibe right there. I have a friend I who grew up... I have a friend who grew up playing eight-man football with oh, Leighton Van Der Esch in Idaho. I could put on some pads and play <laughs> some six-man tonight. Wow. You know? Okay, yeah. so Troy Anderson, I also am obsessed with. He's a freak. Um, and like you we just like, highlighted it, like. RG. I love these guys who are just amazing at everything mm-hmm. they do. Uh, and not only was he like oh. multi-sport, he was multi-position just in football. You guys have heard it all. Uh, all all freshman as a running back, all conference as a quarterback, all American as a linebacker. It's wild. What are we doing Legend. here? Yep. Put that guy on a football Legend. team. Put the four four forty. Those are what? and a perfect high escort. Let's yep. Go. What are those? What Charlies that can play all the positions? <laughs> oh, uh, concrete Charlies. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that's a Matt Mcchesneyism. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah, the look you I gave love that. me. The look you gave me was amazing. Can't there. get him off the field. Oh yeah, God. those what Charlies? Right. The what Charlies? After all, is a weird. There's way also to ask football that. playing Jesse's. Mm. Some people use that term. He certainly is a football playing Jesse. You can say that again. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. It is. Yes, it is. Also, thanks, Mitch. I caught your body language over there. Um, he was saying, "Good shirt." Oh, yeah, wow. that's sick. Good that's jersey. Sick. It's Jerry. I, but the cool thing about this shirt is that it's pretty dark. Like. There's a meteor shower of footballs coming over Denver. That is pretty right. intense. That's, I hope that's how we go Would out. Would we be happy <laughs> if a meteor? <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Paxton, the Paxton, uh, the Paxton apocalypse, the Pax apocalypse, as people spoke of it. And balls uh, are just flying out of then. the the. Uh, Paul Bolin Fieldhouse <laughs> blowing out windows in Denver. Would we be happy if there was a meteor shower of footballs or would it be just as terrifying as any other meteor shower? I think there would be some intrigue before <laughs> the doom. Like, yeah. Everybody oh, would stay outside. Crazy. And then you'd die. And yeah. the hands team yeah. might... Yeah. The hands team <laughs> might be able to save them all. You know, just like... Get out all those dads catching baseballs at stadiums with babies in their laps, you know. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's what you got to figure out. Um, could right, we the, pose the Vrabel dilemma to Hank? Oh, or yes. No, also, were, were we on to serious topics? Outside? Yeah, I was. Okay. In a 4 3. 3 4. In a 3 4. Okay. Jack. Wow, you could not. He would not be able to play uh, no, outside linebacker. In my know. head, I'm like, that guy just looking at him, got to be inside. Um, so it was Brewski is the yeah. awesome inside linebacker that wins for mm-hmm. them. Yeah, but again, that was a while ago. Okay. Um, the Bucks are on the clock. Let's, Boom. Let's quickly do the uh, the um, the Vrabel question. Oh, would yeah. you uh, give up your dick for a championship? Ryan, I would cut my penis off for far less. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man <laughs> thank you uh, we can move on now we found ourselves a real winner here what That's team what team would you give it to oh yeah. wow before you just not hand it off dick for the <laughs> before you're just want it. throwing it in crowds at no one who asked for it <laughs> um, so it's a montana natty we're speaking of you try to see they'll get them right like right. like they're they have plenty more in my lifetime the see that's the thing is like it could be the rockies because they have no shot of ever winning one except that how much will it i don't think i care life. enough yeah exactly <laughs> Like Rockies five years ago might have been the answer oh, for that reason, but now it's just like a, I, I think Nuggets, it's Nuggets is probably the one. Nuggets, Nuggets, just logically. What what hurts about the Nuggets though is it's like they're close, mm -hmm. so maybe you don't need to do that. But that is true. Right. They do. Have that is the true. Two time MVP after all. Would you would you for a CU football championship? Oh, 100 percent. Absolutely. Wow. That's better than sex. Yeah. The thing is, like, I don't have like Dre has a kid yet already, so it's that like is true. I mean, he has a huge advantage in this conversation. It's 2022. There's there's technology if that's you're true, worried about that's that. That's true. All right, all right. Unless it's a time back crunch. In. Yeah. Let's go buffs. Let's go. Yeah. Bring the uh, program back where it belongs. Yeah. All right. So let's jump into our top five guys each. We already know who the shot specs are, so I'm sure these guys will pop up on our boards here. But we mm. have a top five Broncos dream guys, or it's really not Broncos dream guys. It's my guys. Like the guys yeah. you're putting your name on. This guy's gonna be a baller. Mm. And if the Broncos get him, that's awesome. Um, let's go through the guys who aren't here first, Kale. We're standing uh, on the table. In the who do we want to start with, Mace? Yeah, let's go Mace yeah. first. Let's shred these uh, guys. Mace pulling a Sean McVay here. That's uh, incredible, Putting man. Cole Strange oh on the board God. because he thought Cole Strange <laughs> would be there. And Cole Strange, That's incredible. of course, goes in the first round. Um, that might actually be a good time for us to... Should we go to the Cole Strange video? Sure, Ooh, sure. Right. Right. We'll come Cole back Strange to Mace. Tape. Okay. Amazing. Um, Love so, this pick, man. Or I guess you can leave that up while you look for it. Uh, well, we it's got It's right it. here. All right. So last is. night, oh. everyone has seen the Sean McVay reaction to Cole <laughs> Strange. Maybe everyone has seen the Andre <laughs> Simone <laughs> reaction to Cole Strange going in the first round. My question to you, chat, is this. Who did it better? Who had the who had the better reaction? Was it Sean McVay and Les Snead? Is that his name? That's who, right. Who, by the way, they they were celebrating not having a first round pick the same way we were celebrating not having a first round pick, drinking. Mm -hmm. um, and Good so let's them. let's go let's go to the video here. Chat, tell me who did it better. Really, really. Just went. Oh my, U T Chattanooga to the first How round. Hey, where is? <laughs> How about that? Is it my guy, <laughs> Cole Strange? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Everyone's ears just He's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Cole Strange is a first rounder? <laughs> and we wasted our time watching him thinking he'd be at 104, hey. maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Cole Str <laughs> Just when I thought this was a disgusting, <laughs> nasty world we live in. <laughs> Something beautiful like this happens and completely flip. I'm going to come home and wake up my daughter and be like, sweetheart, all is well. Cole Strange is a first rounder. Tennessee Chattanooga, my senior bowl stand up. Oh, man. Oh, that was so good. That was so, so good. good. The that only thing that bums me out is you didn't have a crowd of people that want to laugh at your jokes to make you yeah. like them more. I know. Yeah. Um, but honestly, you guys were laughing, though. I'm not. There's oh, no. I was, I was oh, I got it. It was awesome. Oh. I just want to know, like, there's no way Sneed and McVeigh weren't a little bit lit, right? Oh, no, they were drunk. Yeah, yeah. They were having fun. Yeah. Which I respect the hell Sneed's out of. Sneed's oh, for sure, sure lit. When there are no says, rules for those people. You teach at the Nuga to the first round. I mean, yeah. we both, everyone loves to say you teach at Nuga. Yes, that you is true. Chat um, that does feel um, good. All right, so yeah, we can go back to great. Mace's graphic now. That was awesome. Thank you, Dre, for it that amazing, amazing moment. And Sean McVay as well. I got a good kick out of that last night when I went home. Uh, so Cole Scrange, scrap him off. Here's Mace's top four. Roger McCreary, Marcus Jones, Matt Areza, so on brand and kind of yeah. awesome. Yeah. Leo Chanel. No. Um, mm -hmm. So, tell me about these guys. Or is there any crossover to either of your two lists with these four? No, no. Okay, but perfect. Chanel kind of fits in the discussion of a lot of these inside linebackers. Um, it's going to be a very like pick your fighter type totally. deal. He likes Troy Anderson. Someone might like Chad Muma. I like Channing Tindale. Oh, shit. Oh, someone's traded up into to trade. 33. The Vikings have traded with the Packers to 34. And the 
That's not allowed. And the Bucks have selected. They're in the same division. Don't trade with you're your helping Man, the Vikings. Maybe you're, think, maybe you're helping them fall into what you believe is That's a trap. True. The Vikings true. are trading down nonstop. Really, really? Just went. Logan oh Hall. My, you Logan Hall to the, Bucks. Oh. to the first round. And he was rumored to be their pick um, in the first last night. They trade out uh, with Jacksonville, who traded up to get Devin Lloyd. They still get their guy in Logan Hall. He's a big dude. Yeah, he's big. How'd you describe him? Big dude. Big. Long. Oh, long, yeah. Could be better at football, I believe. Is uh, how that you. is how I explained him. Yep. So, yeah. But if he gets good at football, he has all the tools. There's, um, I then presented a great analogy. Actually, I can say it on the show. Sure, I told, yeah. I told Henry when I was single, that's actually how my Tinder bio read. That's so. right. Um, that's right. Big long could be better at football or yep, something nope, else. Yeah, no, football. exactly. Oh, okay, exactly. Yeah. Um, that's so good. That is good. Uh, yeah. why, the hell, why the hell is there a punter on there? That's oh, not okay. we're going to do this. Let's do it. Okay. Spit. Yeah. I mean, what? Has there ever been... What? What is the success rate of drafting a punter? Okay, so... Like, those, those guys just, bust every time. Let me just tell you this on Mace. This is... He was... He made it very clear. Not just guys at 64. Just guys oh, that yeah. he really likes. Okay. Yeah. So, we talked about it. He... I think he said maybe the third. Um, we said... Def, me and Zach said fourth is the absolute earliest you could go. Don't ever draft a punter. I said you could draft a generational punter. Then that created a conversation. Is there such thing as generally <laughs> generational Does it punter? Doesn't matter. I think so. Uh, but, but that's you already play altitude. Isn't like Ray guy. When does that help them? Well, yeah, but I, I mean, Todd Sauerbrunn was good. They've had some decent punters. But the thing is, like, Britain you don't quit. you don't need somebody who can kick the ball eighty yards because you're just out kicking your coverage because it's going even farther he here. Also, ha he's also laser focused. Like, just oh, that's tough to that's tough just to just hitting fucking spots left and right. If he's laser focused, he's awesome though. That Ariza's awesome. <laughs> I mean, man. like he's 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 got a laser. Like it's not just a shotgun. He's got a sniper. How fun! All right, whatever. Yeah, I'm um, not drafting a punter ever. I like Chanel, man. That guy's a classic Big Ten linebacker downhill. Mm -hmm. Then he kind of shocked us all by running a really fast 40. So I think... I like Chanel as well. I think there's many arguments Actually, to be made that he's right in that, like, him and Troy Anderson, you know. You guys he reminds me of Matt. Zach and I talked about him the other day. We looked in the Wisconsin pronunciation guide. It's actually Chanel. Just like the, oh. the designer brand. He yeah, did. it's up backwards. Ryan a did a lot e. of uh, Chanel jokes then after that. I was, sure. I was down there in the booth, so I was hearing it I all. I like a top. designer linebacker. Who um, wouldn't? Packers traded. Who are they? Wide receiver? I think it's Sky gotta Moore. Be. Sky Moore. Short Watson? Pickens. Pickett. Christian? I would take Pickens. I would take Pickens. Some rumors, maybe uh, some off field concerns. Mm. Though. Mechie's though Mechie would be amazing. Oh, someone he, already said it. They took a wide receiver. So. I'm blanking on. We should probably be ahead of the chat. Yeah, we should. Someone um, in the Madden chat, all cap, said, You take the generational punter. Notifications on for all the guys, <laughs> but I haven't seen anything come through yet. Okay, cool. Why don't I keep forgetting to bring my laptop on set? Yeah, I decided Ryan, not to today. On, I don't need a Google shit. It's Did all I my even brain. bring my bag up here? Oh, yeah, it's over there. All right, I'll get it in a second. The other oh, thing with Chanel, boy. though, Dre, what do you think of my Alexander Johnson comp? For Chanel? Yeah. Like, it's the downfield blitzing stuff, just really big dude, so strong. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think he likes it. I see it. I mean, Alexander Johnson bigger and not as athletic, right? Probably a little more instinctual, quite a bit more physical. Than Chanel? Or Ch Chanel? Chanel. Did you say he was a little yes, more extinctual I mean, because he's the T Rex? Oh, wow. All right. The Packers have drafted a wide receiver, Christian Watson. Ah. It's all Same pick. colors. Let's yep. go to our FCS expert. We love Midwest on Midwest, right? We do. When Midwestern prospects stay in the Midwest, we are massive mm -hmm. fans of that. Take it from here, Henry. Yeah, do I mean, they throw the ball a lot at North Dakota State? No, they do not. He oh, had uh, they don't. He had eight hundred and something receiving yards this year, mm, and I believe that whoa. was eighth most all time. That's whoa, six six most all time in a season. Yeah, they don't throw the ball up there. They just get big and they run, they and that's that why he's super raw. But he's there. also what six four two twenty five and runs a They've four three something six four two oh eight on ESPN. Oh wow, two oh eight six four two oh eight. But yeah, runs a Think runs a four three seven esque. Yeah, exactly, in terms of the way yeah. you use him. Well, in terms of like just the, the it, if he can catch the ball better and than no. the tools he yeah. brings to the table, there are also times where he's kind of just like running on empty. Where it's like, are you really trying to run around here, or you're just like 
running for the sake of running and yeah. just trying to create more space for your offense. Like there's some rawness, but you know, you, you can you can give them the ball in direct handoffs. I think they can get creative with them. But I mean, that receiving core, now it's Amari Rogers who's mm -hmm. completely opposite. Coach's mm -hmm. son, real technical, but barely did anything as a rookie. And then this guy who's got all the talent in the world, but super, super raw. It's like uh, uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling. Does it replacement. matter if you're yeah. raw if but you're chance playing better. with Aaron Rodgers? Really? We'll really? see. Often, oh my, you... those guys, those veteran quarterbacks do like having wide receivers who understand spacing and where to go, though, right? But I think, yeah. again, like, if you're using him as the MVS instead of the Devontae Adams, like, I think he can, at the very least, do all the things he did. Fair. All right, let's Fair. let's quickly go back to Mace's and just put a Adams. tie a bow on that. Let's get through suck. these before Real all these quick, guys start getting drafted. We've also got a trade to 36. Is it the Broncos? Uh, the Jets have traded God up. Damn. The Jets okay. have traded up that with the, the Giants. That was the Giants pick originally. Yep. The subway trade, as they call it. Yeah. Oh, I guess that you don't have to ride the subway because they're in the same building. Um, <laughs> okay, is Marcus Two Jones. Two corners. Uh, he's like a returner guy, right? Yep. Yep. Okay. And um, oh gosh, and then Roger McCreary, tense. super competitive, feisty, a guy I've compared to Darren Williams for older Broncos fans. I Ooh. would really love him. And of course, I he was kind of the story of the day, right? Up and then deleted about him going at Roger 35. McCreary has gone to the Titans. Okay, all right, all right. Wow. That's a good pick for them. Sorry, Woody. But wow. that was one of those guys you'd look at. It probably was one of the corners. Like, so the Woody tweet, if you guys haven't heard, basically he said if there, there's somebody that the Broncos have a first round grade on, and if he's still there, they're going to trade up tomorrow. And he tweeted that with like five picks left last night. Still there where? There. Um, but uh, <laughs> Here, so there, everywhere. McCreary could definitely be that guy. Ojabo could be that guy. N'Kobe Dean, please. N'Kobe Dean could be that guy. Kyler? Kyler Gordon. Oh, Kyler Gordon. Kyler that's the other Gordon. corner that it definitely could be. <clears throat> All like, right, let's that's move on gets tough. Uh, on the top five list because these guys are dropping like flies. Um, who else isn't here? Zach. Uh, let's hit, true. yeah, Zach's guys. Yeah, let's see who, who Zach went with. This he is more my speed. All right, McCreary's gone. Traylon Burks is gone. Uh, Bernard Raymond. So that's two euros on his top five. That's probably wow. show history right there. That's got to be show history. Has to be. Trey McBride is m opposite of a European as you could possibly be. He really is. <laughs> yeah. He really is. That's a great point. Right? Uh, and Ojabo, everyone loves Ojabo. Those are great. We've talked and a lot about those guys Trey already. Mm -hmm. who's off the board already. All right. Uh, we'll go to mine next. We'll yeah, let's with your do guys's. it. Um, Ojabo. Tariq Woolen, okay. who this is my ultimate, just like I've said it a million times on our show. If you can't make this guy good, that's just on you. Yeah. Like he's 6'4 and he runs a 4'2'6. So if you can't figure out how to make that guy effective, then you just failed. You that's wonder if he's twitchy enough underneath. His measurements and but testing yeah. numbers are stupid and don't mm -hmm. make sense. Yep. Uh, Jelani Woods, that says OSU, but he is from Virginia. Um, uh, he's twist. similar six, colors. Oh. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, one of them. Both, Both have orange, 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 and a orange is rare. Color, too. Be right? three or three oranges. Orange is rare. To Denver, um, six seven, perfect RAS score. I just if you have a perfect RAS yeah, score, I love right. you. I'm sorry. He's I, like maybe I'm just a slave Ryan's to it, gonna but. get razzed up if you. Uh, <laughs> I like a little razzle dazzle. <laughs> um, so uh, and then that. pop back to that real quick for me if you would. Nope. Real quick, we have Brees Hall to the Jets. Pick. Ooh, oh, that's, that's a good pickup. We got him Breesy up in here. It sucks because um, we have Kenneth Walker, Kenneth Walker really, really the first F's us. Back. Yep, yep. Um, yep. Then yep. Troy Anderson. We talked about him. I didn't even put Nakobe Dean on this because I didn't think he would ever mm -hmm. be there. Tell me about Tyquan Thornton, Big Rye. Okay, so Tyquan Thornton was originally clocked as a four-two-one. At the combine, ding 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 record. Then they were like, "Oh, it was a fast watch." This reminds me of when Andre Scalaraga hit the longest home run in Major League Baseball history, but they didn't want Andre Scalaraga to hit the longest home run in Major League Baseball history, so they were like, "Oh, sorry, we thought it was 575 feet. Turns out it was 495." And we're like, "What the f does that mean?" Right. Um, so they stole that from Big Cat. Love you, Big Cat. Um, and that's what happened here. I think they were like, "Oh, it's a fast watch. Our bad." Um, he actually ran a four two eight. I don't care. Four two one, four two eight. Very fast. How big and is the he? best long six two. The That'd best be nice. deep ball thrower in the NFL is Russell Wilson. So you tell him to run straight. You throw it up there. You let him catch it. And then of course you have a huge need at returner. He's so talking for the Broncos. 
Yes. I thought this was for like his Madden team. Um, <laughs> I would like him on my more Madden speedy team. wide receivers. You just got the need for speed, huh? I'm not talking about him at 64. Close I'm to Al Davis more over here. Late third or fourth. Um, but again, I don't trust KJ Hamler right, uh, to right. ever be healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, so Hammy for a guy who relies on speed, it's. Uh, I love KJ Hamler. I want mm-hmm. KJ Hamler to be awesome, but Devastated. he could be the best he's receiver. He's, literally, his legs move too fast for his own human body. Damn you, KJ's wow. body. Yeah, KJ's body. So, <sighs> anyways, Tyquan Thornton, run straight and catch it. That's all I need from you. Ryan kind of is Art Browse with much higher morals, huh? <laughs> well, higher morals. Oh, oh wow. okay, fair That's... enough. Fair enough. He is still a Bucks fan joke. after all. Oh. <laughs> I can usually take most of them, but that yeah. one, I think that crossed the line for me. Yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> went, we <laughs> went to a dark place, and we apologize for nothing. Uh, okay, and then was there one more guy on there? No, I think we got all mine, so let's no, go to Dre's. nailed them, bro. Yeah, let's Dre. uh, Dre's. The big D. Um, the big tuna, as he's known around Picks these Picks are coming parts. in so fast. Are you saying he is in you? Devin Lloyd. You know it, Henry. He was selected. Older prospect. He we gone. talked about linebackers. Third round value galore. Kenyon Green. He gone. Gonzo, mm-hmm. it was a hot take that I said he was the fourth best O-lineman in, in this draft. Not according to the NFL. Abraham Lucas. Dream scenario. One of the best O-linemen the past three years. Head to head with Kayvon Thibodeau. Zamir White wrote this before the uh, Mel V. Gordy signing, but Zamiri Whitey would uh, <laughs> make you run for your life the way he would punish you with his downhill running at the second level. Yes, so when he goes off, I'm going to call it a Zamir campaign. Oh, wow. <laughs> actually, I think we can wrap the show after that one. <laughs> and Jamari Salier. There are times where I would watch Jamari Salier left tackle for the national championship Georgia Bulldogs, and he he felt very Ikemi Aquanu to me. Ooh, Um, that's icky to those who know. Sixth overall pick. Peter to the Texans. Never heard of him. Oh, we're talking about... Okay, the P-I-T-R-E. I was thinking that guy. I was like, never heard of that I was like, Jalen Heater, I have not heard of that guy. Um, Jalen Peter. Strange. I don't know how to say it. Peter Petrie? or Petrie? Yeah. Petrie. Petrie We've feels been Petrie. more fun for me. It when in fun. doubt, my rule is... That's what he'll call it either Pretend way. their last name's French and sound like a true jackass. So, you know, <laughs> Petrie. Um, remember, <laughs> who was I doing that with for the longest time? Saying their name French? Oh, for like six months I did this. Does anybody remember what name oh, Dre was saying it. French for six months? It was last year's draft class. It'll come to us. It'll come uh, to us. Are we Chanel's caught up on one. everyone then? So We it's... are finally caught up on picks, yes. Okay, because okay. So there's only been there three so that far. many. Four. Only been, who's... Four. No, five. There's been five, five. already? Okay, yeah, can we go through them? I'm, Who was I'm just selected because I forgot? Petrie. Petrie. Jalen Petrie. So we started round two with Logan Hall to the Tampa Bay can I call him the fucking ears? You just did. Ah, oh, damn yep. it. Um, Christian Watson staying in the same color jersey to the Green Bay Packers. Mm-hmm. Roger McCreary, Smashville, Tennessee Titans. Yep. Brees Hall, Jets. The Jets already have made four picks, which is nuts. All cities, three teams have made zero, while the Jets have made four. Wow. We did um, add Marquise Brown, though. So that's and good. the Texans go... To where um, high moral Art Bryles would never go, and that is Baylor to draft Jalen. We're going with Petrie. Petrie. He's <laughs> a safety. We like his game. We like them at the senior bowl. And by the way, the Falcons are now on the clock after trading up from with, in the 40s. Okay. It's quarterback time. Has to yeah. be, right? Bleak, bleak, bleak. Yeah. Who's going to f- slang that thing to Kyle Pitts and Drake London? Please give me Malik. Yeah. I think this is... Sam Howell at plus 750 would make me a lot of... They are not taking geez. Malik. They are taking Arnold Ibikite. Ibikite! Another freak. I, I, he's just another Penn State guy. Like, I swear, every Penn State guy... Like, oh, he's a Penn State fast. safety. I'm already he's starting just to get like nervous for the Broncos pick. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah we're he, getting close. Um, he's talented. He he. We're happy to see him go, though, right? He was not the priority Big Ten edge rusher. No. Uh, that is Ajabo, or maybe even Boy and Mafe, though I do like Ebi Kitty more than my boy, boy, eh? Um, and yeah, Ebi Kitty to the Falcons, then, huh? Ebi Kitty? Are we sure with that one? Doesn't feel right. Yeah, I think so. It, yeah. The Falcons really. I kind of. Like, yeah, I don't hate these prospects. They're great prospects. But, like, what are they doing? What's moving the needle over there? I mean, uh, if if you don't like the quarterbacks, you wait till next year. We should have just taken Guess every so, team to draft Edge or DL, yeah. First, yeah. Well, it's advice I could have used two hours ago. It is. Um, all right, now we've got potentially our first All City pick coming up next. Real quick, the Chicago Bears. Bears. Are we starting Bear to get down. into the range where the Broncos could consider a trade up with what great, they do have? Great question, Kale. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, Zach has talked about this a lot via the trade value chart. The Broncos could package their next two picks. 64, 75. 64 and 75 to get to 40 or 41. Which just happen to be the Seahawks picks. Just yeah, swapping so picks back and forth, back and forth, back I, and forth. I kind of doubt that that deal will happen. Maybe not. Maybe they just have a great relationship now, and that'll actually help this happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll keep an eye on that. But, yes, we are in Broncos trade-up zone, and Nicobe Dean and David Ojabo are still on the board. Now, I don't know if the Broncos love Nicobe Dean. I just do. Um, but I think I have a really good feeling that they love Ojabo. Yeah. Um, so that is the one to watch for me. I think if I saw them trade up, that would 100% send off alarms Ojabo in my mind, and I would be corner. crossing my fingers for Yep. There's the, a lot of good players still. There are. We say this every year. They're going to be a lot of good players till about 55. Then we're going to start feeling like, eh. Yeah. Because for the next 10 picks or, go, or so, we're going to say, like, hey, he, he could have gone round one, you know, yep. like, very right, good right. player, blah, blah, right. blah. Is that how you feel about then it's gonna drop off everyone about. that's gone so far? I mean, maybe not to quite that extent. Petrie, good safety, not. A first round talent. Ebikidi was mocked in the first, first quite a bit, though. Mm -hmm. Brees yeah, Hall. Ebikidi, yep. definitely. And McCreary. I think McCreary has first round tape with mm -hmm. like fifth round measurables. Yeah. So, you know, it's more of a second round grade. Not a big RS guy. So. No, no. Mm -hmm. Average Raz. Mm -hmm. He's not razzed up. <laughs> um, uh, okay. Yes. Do we get we Ajabo gotten through yours again. or no? Did Not we get mine. Through, we get through Dre's? Your guys? Did we? Okay. We all right, let's go to Hank's guys. Oh, Nick tell Benito. Us, tell us all about him. Yeah, about Nick Benito is dope. I think that he could be a target at 64. I think there's a chance he's available in the third round too. Uh, wow. Edge rusher from Oklahoma, but super versatile. Yes. Super fast. Um, yeah, yes. very fast. You can drop him back in coverage. Speed Just seems like rusher. a fit for what the Broncos mm -hmm. do. Um. DeMarvin Leal, there's been hype of him being in the top 10, and that's died off in the last couple months, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, big interior guy. What, nine and a half sacks? Eight and a half sacks this season, I think, as an interior pass rusher? You saw him live. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a freak. The, the buffs could not handle him, as you might guess. Uh, Nick pettit Frere, the offensive tackle. He, uh, I mean, I, I, I think he was anything but petite. So he true. Really is. So true. So. But he's only 21. He was a five-star recruit. Um, has like every single measurable. One, I think. He, I don't think he won. He got multiple game balls at Ohio State. Wow. He was like the player of the game as a tackle. Second team All-American. Yeah. The no, he's first a, All City pick is in, and it is not a wide receiver, despite the fact that there's still some really good ones out there. We really thought the Bears would go <laughs> wide receiver. It's Kyler Gordon. The Bears. It's a good pick. Are picking the guy who should have been picked last night and won us two bets. <laughs> um, Kyler Gordon. Kyler Gordon mixed with Jalen Johnson. Yeah, no, that's I, I like it's it. Dope. Pac-12. Totally. Stand up. Um, yeah, long guys, talented guys, high upside. There's a lot of talent on that Bears defense. Wait. Is there enough on that Bears offense? Does though? it make a lot of sense for the Seahawks to draft Malik Willis here? It does. Or Sam Howell. Plus seven fifty would make me lots of money. Yeah, I mean um, that was my take when the Broncos had Drew Locke. Take take your favorite quarterback in the second round, and then next year go address it. I, they're in the exact same boat, right? And it would have made a lot of sense the way the board has fallen so totally. far. 
Um, now, you would have never known it, but if the Broncos had taken Malik Willis at nine, with us knowing what we know now, that would have been a bad move. Totally. Um, yeah. Because they could have you know, gotten him here. Um, Kyler Gordon to the Bears is interesting. I don't think their fans are going to love that. No, we'll it's see. not going to be the most exciting. It just isn't. People don't get and excited they really about need more on. nice. They really need more targets for for Justin Fields. They really do. I don't. Darnell love, Mooney cannot I guess be your wide receiver one. I guess they have yeah. Allen Robinson too. Sort of. Do they still have Allen Robinson? I don't think they do. Uh, I think I, don't, I, don't I think I'm wrong about I that. I think he went somewhere. Um, that's the problem. Should we finish off my uh, my five? Yeah, yeah. Finish us off. Number four, Trey Anderson. We basically covered all that, yeah, but yeah. he'd be a perfect fit. Yeah. Especially when you have Josie Jewell, who's a really good linebacker. But Troy Anderson would just cover up all of his deficiencies. It would, that Those two together would be really, really good. Does it bother you like it bothers me? It doesn't actually say it on this graphic, but it's actually S-E-N, yeah. not S-O-N. That yeah. bothers me. Not I'm the graphic, just the fact that that's the way his yeah. name is spelled. I mean, I've been reading it for 10 it years. It does? So really? Yeah. It S- is S-E-N, yeah. S-E-N. Huh. Anderson. Hmm. Anderson. Okay. <sighs> but yeah, Jaquan Brisker is my last one. A safety. Uh, I think he could, the Broncos could absolutely draft a safety. Yeah. And you have Kareem for one year. You like Caden Stearns. Like, I guess you have Johnson back there too, so maybe it does get a little crowded. But I mean, he can do just about everything. You can ask him to play single high. You can ask him to play in the box. Just, I mean, a Penn State athlete. Like, I'm not sure what his RAS score is, but I'm sure it's right up there just like all those guys. Right. Um, and just a hitter. It's a physical presence. So you can also drop back deep. He ra- he's razzed up for sure. Um, so this would have been a Broncos pick forty. Yep. Who'd you take? I don't know, Ojabo. If you didn't have Russell Wilson, uh, I guess there's that part. Yeah. I would Let's just Malik. say, th- yeah. If Let's say you do have Russell Wilson. Like this pick just isn't involved in the trade. I would take Nicobe Dean. Okay. What would you do? I'd probably take Ojabo. Yeah. Ojabo. D- Honestly, there's so many guys I might trade down. Yeah. Trey D-O-Jabo. McBride is a good conversation. Like yep. Al, yep. I, I think you could I just, make a case for. I does think suck those so corners much going early. thinking that goes on in this stuff. And the best player from the best unit on the best team. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Why is he still available? <laughs> I know. <laughs> That makes yep. me so mad. I mean, those medicals better have been, like, devastating. And what what do you know? Do you guys know what injuries he had? I don't. A- in his career at Georgia? Mm, no. I mean, I feel like this is every linebacker they have I think these it's injuries. more degenerative stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's true. We have You yeah. do see it a lot with the top guys, like Ruben Foster. Totally. Completely plummeting a couple years ago um, with some stuff. Yeah. Andrew Booth would be a good pick here, too. Andrew Booth would be great, and the top corners are kind of going quick. So that is, yeah. you know, if there's urgency to move up, it might be more for that kind of prospect than it is for the edge rusher, where you do still have Boyamafe, yep. you do still have uh, Ojabo, and even guys like the Marvin Leal. I mean, the the top hand in the ground mm-hmm. pass rushers, you know, down lineman type guys are still available and will probably go quick. <laughs> I love this. Uh, Marissa tweeted out, the four, the graphics of our guys, but there's only room for four, so she chose everyone but Zach's. And Zach uh. already responded and said, "Where are mine?" <laughs> no, I mean, you could tell him. Uh, I just leave him off now. It's it's a bit. Yeah. I like it better. Just respond with hashtag Zach rides. Um, yes. Real quick, <coughs> intense debate going on in the uh, or chat right Or you could right say now. Kareem Jackson told us not to post them. Uh, what was that? There's an, uh, no Sean Moreno. Elite or good? Terrible? Where on the spectrum do you guys rank? He solid. was solid, but for a first-round draft pick, he, you Under, call him a bust. Underperformed. Yep. Yeah. yeah. He was average. I wouldn't, bust might be strong. Yeah. He was productive. He helped you. He was a contributor on the best offense of all time. Yeah. Yeah. He was solid. If you draft him in the fourth round, you'd, you'd love him. Oh, exactly. And in, in an independent argument, I think he did not have a first-round career, you know. Yeah. So both things are true. And yeah. Especially for a running back. Again, yeah. you expect if you're going to draft a running back in the first round, you expect them to be transformational. He's not Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. No, not even close. Mm-hmm. 
He was kind of disappointed Clyde Edwards at Georgia, Hilaire, though, probably. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Yeah. Better than Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah. Don't that. draft a running back in the first round. Just I mean, look, it's like you look at who could go who should go in the first round and it's like Derrick Henry and he's like a once in a mm -hmm. lifetime, maybe once in a world history. Prospect. And he was a second round pick. Right. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I'm saying like if you could redraft, you would definitely take him in the top ten. Or? Going back to Troy oh, Anderson though. Percent. Him and Derrick Henry are basically the same measurable wise. I think I, I, Von Miller used to have that. Yeah, Von yeah. Miller, right. Totally. But I think Troy Anderson's like 6'4", 240, and he's 6'3", 240. Troy Anderson ran like a 4'4", 4, 4, 4, and Henry ran a 4'5", 4, 4. I think, yeah, if you take Troy Anderson and you don't try him at running back, you're screwing up. A little Miles Jack action? A little Miles Jackson? Yeah. You'll appreciate this, Ryan. I was saying how bad must Trayvon Walker's hands be that his size with long ass arms, massive hands, he's not playing tight end. More money where he's playing. Yeah, but I mean, he must have the worst hands of all time. <laughs> or smart advisors. I think mean, it's pretty, a pretty bad defensive end, you know. <laughs> he's getting number one money. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so someone advisors. told him somewhere along the way, you should be an edge rusher. There's way more money there. He said, okay. And then he became the number one overall pick. I remember when I used to get <laughs> advice like that. Like, they'll pay yeah. you more selling insurance, you know, and stuff like that. And yeah. now look you at you. should have taken that advice. I know. I know. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're Only here. Only if you're good at it. <laughs> yeah, stuck with us. True. I know. If you sucked at it, you would make a lot less money. Oh, and I would suck. I, I hate agree. Being, I feel terrible. like a lot of people make a lot of money that suck at their jobs. Totally. Yeah, Most yeah. people are bad at what they do. <laughs> yeah. I believe that deeply. I was at a convenience store today. Uh -huh. This lady working behind the desk, there's a line of six of us. Oh, and yeah. I'm at the back of the line. This guy walks in and is like, can I use the bathroom? And she was like, no, of course not. You have to buy something. But then the rest of the time, after she had to talk to him, she's like slamming the cash register shut and... She's like, come on. Like, it's not. I'm going to give her a break. Oh, okay. I feel like she deals with a lot of shit. I thought she was the worst. I hope she's <laughs> streaming this right now so she can hear our support from afar. Yeah. Um, I got my Powerade, though. Yeah. There you go. I wonder who's, like, the worst Powered person up. at their job that makes the most, like, best ratio of bad at your job to making money. Brock Osweiler was up there. That's nice. <laughs> Yeah, the answer to that question is actually Roger Goodell, guys. Roger oh, Goodell yeah. is a doesn't good one. Roger Goodell yeah. make like twenty five million? Oh yeah, a year? he makes ridiculous exact money. He doesn't even really have to do anything. No, he just has to no. take the beating. But there's yeah. a lot of people who have put themselves in a position where they don't have to do anything every and rake in cash. Oh totally. I mean that's right. the that's the right. dream. But that means you're like good because you made your job you to did not something. do anything, so you're really good at it. You're you actually really good. Yeah. Okay, where are we now? Oh, Seattle's boy, on the clock. Boy, oh, it has n this pick, pick has yet 40. to leak as far they're as I They're trying to get out of here. So I think they're trying to get out. Could could the Broncos be trying to jump right now? It's if, possible. If they're t if you're taking up all this time on the clock, it means so, you're on the phone. Especially if you want a pass rusher, you're trying to get ahead of the Browns at 44. Seahawks could be another threat, and basically everyone needs corner. So if you need a corner, you need to move up right now. If you can stomach it and you're waiting for an edge, you've got like two, three more spots. Okay. But I mean, the time to make a move if you want to get these kind of guys is now. I think there's at least 10 more players that I would be really excited about mm -hmm. drafting. Mm -hmm. There you go. Boye mm -hmm. Mafe. Boye Mafe. He was one of them. But behind Ojabo. He fits. He fits. Um... He fits well, well there, too. Yeah, Obviously, that's why they drafted he him. Does. But just playing defensive end in that 4-3. While you guys talk about this, Kale, can you uh, ISO them? I'll be right back. Okay, have fun. Yeah, do your thing, bro. Um, I, this isn't, this really isn't an does ISO. Fit. This is a, a do-so. It's a do-so. It's a do-so. Speaking of which, where are you going, Ryan? I'm going to do-so. And now back-to-back -back picks, Big Hank. Yeah. So they get Charles Cross yesterday. Yep. They get Boyamafe now mm -hmm. from the U, as they call it out in Minnesota. They do? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. Do that's, they call, not, that's not the U. Do they call Montana the U out in Montana? Yeah, there's some of that. Yeah, there is I mean, some of that. You don't have to lie to me. It's yeah. okay. They, okay. Now that you think of it, it's like, yeah, U. Uh, that comes up. That was like 2006, 2007. There was more of that. We don't do that in Colorado. The U. No. No. Everyone here six, knows the U yeah. is... The great Miami teams of the early 2000s. Yes, um, do. Who do the Seahawks go with 
here, Tyreek Woolen would make too much sense. He would. Um, in I that think, scheme. I mean, Malik Willis is still a conversation. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go quarterback. Right, and this would be the ultimate Drew Locke move, right? You have two back-to-back mm-hmm. second-round picks. You don't take the quarterback with the first of the second-round picks. You yep. humble them even more. Can you imagine poor Drew Locke going through another quarterback competition? I mean, losing another quarterback competition. I mean, it's happening no matter what. Right? Like, even even if they don't draft someone, it's going to be between him and Gino. A pick wild. is in, Kale? Yeah. Or that uh, was for From Kyle the Gordon. chat, we we're getting... I don't know how to say this. Oh, Boye Mafe. Boye Mafe. Yep. Boye Mafe. Okay. And then... Gotta see, gotta see what this next one is. We I sure do. Henry, I don't um, know. This board looks so good, though. Seattle, back to back. So, Kobe here, Dean, yeah. okay. So, Booth. who are you zeroed in? Nicobe Dean. I think David Jojabo. Yeah, Abraham those are the Lucas, two at the top. Bernhard Raymond. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a good value here and, as well. I mean Drake Jackson's another one. And, Demarvin right, Leal. Drake Jackson. Nick Andrew Booth. I love him. Yeah. The I mean, there's a. God, he's so raw. Benito, Jaquan Brisker. Yeah, Benito, right. Trey right. McBride. Are we out on running back completely? Did the Broncos yeah. turn up yet? No, they haven't. Bummer. They haven't. Literally nothing's happened since you I left. think last year the Broncos traded up while I was in the bathroom. I was, oh, trying, really? to, I was trying to recreate that oh. energy. I wonder where I was. Probably right here. <clears throat> you were probably here, yeah. I'll stay here then. I can't remember that at all. You'd think I would. This is weird. There's like a wait and see thing going on for us right now. Mm-hmm. It's like a calm before the storm. Yeah, there is some anticipation right now. Like we're all sure. like pretty dialed. We don't like last night was really easy. We just got to bullshit the whole time. Yep. Now we're like trying to keep up with things. Seahawks going Kenneth Walker. Oh wow, that's a good pickup. Oh wow, I like that. So they go Kenneth Walker and Mafe. Mafe with Charles Cross as their first overall pick. That's that must solid. be kind of fun to pick back to back. I would. How do you it. decide who goes? Yeah, first? remember Reisner, Drew Locke. Yeah, is that fun? Yeah. So, Reisner. does this mean the Seahawks are fully in on Drew Locke? No, but they didn't go. They with might the, be fully in on, on a quarterback with three year. picks. Exactly. And when, when I say in, I just mean they're just long term. No, deciding that that's the route they want to go. So Drew Locke very well could start this year for them. Yeah, it'll be between him and Geno. But Boy, remember, Malik hate Willis that is Ross. still on the board. So is Sam Howell. I mean, they, these guys might fall to the third. Desmond Ritter, Matt Corral. Everyone. Everyone except one. Yeah. Crazy. Isn't that wild? Yeah, and I mean, the Steelers must be feeling like, boy, we probably could have waited on Kenny Pickett. We do have a super chat right here. Every I think we have time to hit, passes. so let's actually hit that. I oh, think wow. We do. Right meow. Well, we have uh, time. Dollar ninety nine. Do you really see starter value at 64 for us? Of course. You yeah. should get starters. Top 100? Top, you should. I always say you should get instant contributors top 100. I yeah. would say starters uh, generally top 50. But you should be able to, you know, you could be able to find a top 50 prospect at 64. And in this draft class. Like, this is, we're getting right. into the meat of it. This but is where everything gets backed up with talent. Wouldn't you agree that philosophically in the top 100, you're hoping that immediate contributor by what? year three of that rookie contract can be a starter? Yes. yes, but like, look at Quinn Miners and Baron Browning. Exactly, those are instant contributors without being instant starters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of the way I look. No, at I it. agree, and that's how I see it. First rounders, immediate starters. Second rounders, immediate contributors with upside to start within the first two years. Third round, immediate contributors, maybe more of a special team emphasis, rotational kind of guys, and you've got a plan for by year three of that rookie contract, they've got a path to become a starter. Right, and they better do it or else they're not going to be back. Right, mm-hmm. right. And even early fourth, you know, just out of the top 100, you're still able to get guys within that range. And then after that, it's the back-end contributors of your roster, more your high-end backups, your special teamers, those kind of guys. Um, Let's hit this other Super Chat here while we're at it. In fact, right now is probably a great time to send in Super Chats if you guys want to send in some questions. Um, so... We've got. Uh, we think we have time. Hopefully, maybe we can jinx us we'll out of having time. Yeah. Uh, Northern Broncos fan says so stoked for our f- that our first round pick is already working with our receivers. Hashtag Russell freaking Wilson. Great comment. Um, the the our first round pick bit got worn 
down to the studs by the Broncos last night. Yes, it did. Um, so, yeah, but it's a good point. Totally. I mean, you can even go back to those first workout videos when he's working with receivers and Jerry's not there. My favorite part of that is that, what, a week later, Jerry's out there working one-on-one with him. Yep. That's the sort of stuff that I get fired up about. Yeah, Jerry had a thing to attend to. Everyone mm-hmm. freaked out about it. Uh, and then they made up for it. and With we, one-on-one time. Right. And we talked about this last night. I really think Russ knows I got to unlock Jerry Judy. Yes, mm-hmm. Dre? No, no. Oh, you're just, raising just, your hand. Just like bringing the mic closer uh, to myself. Sorry. Oh, okay. um, I'm just locked in on this board waiting for these next picks to come in. Sorry about none that, of buddy. our favorites have gone yet. I know. We're in good shape. Yeah, no. We were just listing off like 12 guys we really, really like. There's so many. I know. Oh, I know. I know oh? things really sped up. Do we have oh, an O? Oh? What's the O? The pick is in. Trey McBride? I think, yeah, it's it's looking like it's Trey. To the Colts? Yeah. That's a good oh, pick. Oh, no. So no, the under no, hits. Okay, the tweet I'm seeing is not confirmed. Wait, the Vikings just traded Trade up. Trade to the Vikings. Ooh, Ooh, need a tight end. Okay. So sorry Reunited about the false with report BC there. Johnson. Um, Lakewood's own. Oh, that would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, wow. I would have really liked that Colts fit. I think that's a team. Yeah, where the he Colts been great. fit would have been good. Also, Hearing Colts and then Vikings, I feel kind of bad for the guy. Lots of people after yesterday's trade, actually just one person I saw on Twitter, saying that now the Colts have to be big favorites to win the South with how... Uh, the Titans kind of poop in the old bed. Your guys' thoughts. And I'm going to get you that, odds I mean, on that. That right defense now. should be able to shut down Derrick Henry, and that's when it's going to come down to. Like, like I, I think that they're just set up cleanly, and they're going to be a solid team. I, it's just so. You think I'm, so, huh? Y- they're yeah. plus 105 to win the South, by the way. Yeah. The I, mean, I think that that's probably a good bet. I like it too. Mace thinks they're going to get the two seed uh, in, the, in the playoffs. The Colts. Yes. That's bold. I mean, yeah. the easy schedule, though. Oh, they're so unattractive to me. But I guess with Matt Ryan, Jonathan Taylor. Matt Ryan's going to be good. Jonathan Matt Taylor's going to be good. Matt Ryan will make Quentin it look Nelson. really easy with Jonathan Taylor, I think. Yep. Yeah. Not that he's going to be Pitting incredible or anything, but he's just going to do all the easy stuff and make it look easy. And that's all he's going to have to do. Yep. Because the defense is so good. Yeah. And Jonathan Taylor is so good. Yeah. That'll be interesting. I'll, 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 eh. I definitely am not giving them the two seed, but they should be an absolute lock yeah. to win the South. They should be. Man, we're just ready to pass on the on the Titans like that, though. I mean, I guess you could just Derek Henry your way into the division win. And that D, I mean, has been pretty good. Solid. You know, Ryan Tannehill, threes and dunks. He doesn't have anyone to throw threes to anymore. I know it's not. Really there's got to be more moves coming for them. a ton either. They have more. I mean, they did get a decent. I mean, one to one replacement. Haul, yeah. Just with the bus potential, will he pan out? Okay, know, so the Vikings I mean, just traded not. up, not for Trey McBride. Oh, Tell they us. traded up for Andrew Booth, which makes sense. I was that saying earlier is, today, Dre, that, yeah, that I, I thought that corner was their top need. Well, I'm bit, I mean, George Payton comes from there, so he's a full blown addict. He can't help himself but drafting corners, and yeah. Minnesota, I mean, I think every draft I've ever watched, they draft a corner every year, but like twice. Yep. It's insane. Yep. All right. We got another super chat here. Yeah. Uh, I Mount have to Mike. apologize for this one. I saw a <laughs> wrong tweet. Uh, y'all scared the hell out of me. Still praying for trade to Denver. Foolish as it may be. It's not that foolish. It's not yeah, that foolish. Let's wait till we see it from a, uh, a true, a true, a source. true son. Um, <laughs> a true son. That's us. The two sons. <laughs> Ugh. If there's any reporters out there who grew up in Missouri, went to Missouri's journalism school. There's probably plenty of them. And then are now covering the team. We're actually part there. of the 1% of people that work in this field that didn't go to Missouri, Northwestern, or Syracuse. Or Syracuse, right. Yep. But when I played ball, we played a lot of 2 3 zones. So basically, I'm a Syracuse grad, essentially. Wow. wow. You guys can send me that honorary doctorate in the mail, okay? I'll. Uh, my DMs are open. I'll send you my address anytime. Someone said, where's RK getting these draft leaks? I hope I'm not being blamed for the Trey McBride thing. I think he should be. I'm, Where is RK getting fun. his draft leaks? I'm getting so. them from 
Twitter.com. Uh, wow. Wow. Exclusive. So inside yes. sources, essentially. Yes. Um, uh, that's crazy. Oh, wait. Zach was texting me. Maybe he has inside information. Oh, it's, No, I can't just send it and read it okay. on live, bro. Okay. Why don't you tell us if it's... Oh, it's just technicalities about the pick track. Henry post. made a face. I did. I want to get people excited. Mm, yeah, it damn. worked on me. Oh, okay, now we're just playing with people's heartstrings out here. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. So the Giants are having issues with Kadarius Tony, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, they got their Kadarius Tony replacement already. Wandale Robinson. No wow. way. That's, also, I, I like that pick. After yesterday, Kadarius Tony must be worth a top 20 pick. Why would the Bears not trade for Kadarius Tony? I want the Bears to trade for any of these guys. <laughs> the Bears don't have the draft assets to get these guys. The Bears are too poor to afford high end wide receivers. That's true. Kadarius Tony, where did he go last year? What what round? Oh, was first. Yeah, was he like 15? And then wasn't he electric? Yeah, like 18, something like that. And the Jags would have taken him had he slipped to them. He's he Was had he like electric? The... He had some good moments. He had some good moments, yeah. All right, yeah. all right. Um, Wandale Robinson. That's like a, who's his comp? Who is Wandale's comp? That's a reach, man. Uh, ooh. I, I mean, don't know if it is. This is the time where you go after types of guys like that. I, it's a lot. I guess even Demetric Felton wasn't that early. But he's one of those little hybrid running back, wide receiver types. And, and this is early for him, but I, I like the Didn't confidence. Didn't we just it. do this when, with Lynn Bowden out of Kentucky, though? Yeah. I praised the pick. Lynn Bowden's so great and blah, blah, blah. And then Lynn Bowden got cut, like, before his first year even. I don't know. Um, I almost feel like we could get lit and watch some Wandale highlights on the broadcast and break it down. This is a, a Mar Ed Marinaro? Apparently, is that he won't stop talking up there? I was wondering. It seems like he's been up there forever. Oh, oh yeah, she is. Oh, man. She's like, hey, uh, could you tell us what the pick is? This guy's riffing up there? You thought this was an acceptance I speech? I can swear he's oh, been up there forever. Oh, my God. Forever. No one wants to hear you riff, bro. No one. Wait. How dare what this What is happening? Like, I, this is so funny when we watch it from Muted. And I can just see people were, um, like freaking out on Twitter. Like someone said, oh, my God, it's our first NFL draft filibuster. They cut wow. away from him. They're trying to get him off wow. the stage. That's incredible. Are they going to give him the actual hook? Do you think that, <laughs> Do you think he announced the pick or they just said, screw it. We're putting this on the board and sending it. They're like, McShay, just say it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, Andrew Booth, that's a great pick. And the G-Men we said picked Juan Dale Robinson. Man, that's crazy. Leave it to the G-Men, who I thought had a great first round mm -hmm. to then go and screw it all also, up. Also, what are they doing at quarterback? DJ, man. This they is the pick up his fifth year option. This is the draft where all the crappiest quarterbacks in the NFL suddenly don't look so bad. It's really like the revival of all... Re I could use a draft like this, you know? Yeah? Yeah, a draft that could really show the people around me like, man, Andre sucks, but he's not as bad as the Kenny Pickett <laughs> of this 2022 class, you know? <laughs> It'd really do wonders for me if, if I had that equivalent with my wife, you know? Just expose her to another quarterback mm -hmm. class to be like, yeah... He, look, he might not be a franchise quarterback, but you can make a couple wild cards with this guy. It's all right. We'll be fine. Um, I Wondell. like Wondell Robinson. Yeah. I mean, he's your kind of guy. Yes, he is. You want to speak to just your football philosophy and how you like to get lit with lit football players and why you like Wondell Robinson? I mean, I really like athleticism. <laughs> I really like speed. What a guy. Uh, and I really Fast like football players. Uh, versatility. Wow. Well, there you go. This is a guy who should make your life easy as a as an offensive mind. Um, you just say, how do we get him the ball? And you come up with like 12 different ways to do that. Uh-huh. And then you do it. And then he gets you yards. Those are the kind of guys I like. I like guys that you don't even necessarily have to like scheme open. Mm. You just get them the rock. Mm-hmm. So it's, how, it's how LaVisca Chenault should be used. Oh, it's how, God, you know, so like, Debo. 
Debo is used. You just put the ball in these guys' hands, and they make plays for you. Watch these highlights. I mean, he's not doing anything special. Uh, he's 5'8", 178. That was a terrible throw. So he's small. He's, yeah, he is small, but he's twitchy, and you're, you oh, should so have. so twitched up. Look at him go, He's dude. a classic, like, non-football athlete on a football field, and those dudes just, like, look different. Yep. They just disappear and do different shit. Yeah, so it's, to me, the size is a little bit concerning um, because there's a lot of guys like this who have gotten swallowed up in the NFL because all of a sudden their twitchiness right. Right. doesn't feel as twitchy when everyone around them is fast as hell. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, I don't necessarily trust the Giants to use him correctly, but if you find a way to use yeah. him correctly, just get on the ball and go. And that's like one thing that Debo has that he doesn't it's like size you know you're not worried about oh, can he that dude's you know, a fire right hydrant. yeah can he break a tackle in the hole or anything yeah like yeah, that? yeah right whereas with with a guy like wandale you do which speaking of guys who you don't have to worry about that lavisca chanel yep the bear should trade for lavisca <laughs> chanel boy should they ever man <laughs> that ain't won't ain't cost that you a truth first. bro no ain't that the truth wandale's rich for you henry yeah and i mean this is you know a dable coach team yep and I would imagine he's saying, I was able to get some good touches out of Isaiah McKenzie the last two years. Right. I can get That's even more point. valuable touches out of a guy like this. Totally. But, boy. Oh, and the Browns are trading out of their first pick to the Texans. How did we the miss that Houston one? Houston Texans, who've already taken Jalen Petrie, Kenyon Green. Where, and Derek Stinger. Where are the Texans coming up from? Because now we're like starting to get in the position where like if teams are jumping from the mid to late fifties, then we should really be on high alert. But I think I had a can't believe one. the pass rushers haven't gone yet. Pass rushers two days in a row dropping a little further than we thought. Mm -hmm. Good news for the Broncos. It Incredible is. news. And I mean, we are rooting hard for quarterbacks and wide receivers to be snatched up. Right, right. The more, and running backs, right? Big yep. run on. So, Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker. Yeah, players. keep it yep. coming, baby. Yep. Keep it coming. Absolutely. What do you think the Texans are doing? Oh, I'll tell you what they're doing. Lay it on me. Wait, why don't we guess? No. You just said, you just had a. It, it falls into what you want. A wide receiver. Yes, correct. And it's George Pickett. Oh, close. Sky close Moore. In. Close in terms of the conference. John Mechie. Mechie. John Mechie. That's a great oh. pick. Speed receiver run. Uh, that's yeah. a great pick. Gave out the under on him in at 56 and a half. So we murdered that one. Wow. Great pick. Didn't get on. Didn't get in on that one. No. I only got in on your losers. Unfortunately, I didn't either. I know lots of losers in the old slip. <laughs> <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Um, John Mechie, um, what I can tell you is he's on my Madden team, 94 speed. Um, he's my third wide receiver. He had one catch in the Super Bowl. Um, no, but in all, in all reality, Outstanding I think you are going to see a little run on speed here um, because a lot of teams sitting back saying, okay, well, we, we need a speed receiver. Now back-to-back -back guys who are, you know, essentially deep threats. Yeah. Um, Wandale's a little different, but Sky Moore, who else? Sky Moore's yeah, one Sky Pickens Moore, isn't speed, but I mean, he's yeah. probably the next one to go. Alec I guess. Pierce out of Cincinnati would mm -hmm. be my next best wide receiver. He is fast. Denver Broncos are on the clock. No way. No way. At, 45. Yes, wait. at forty-five. Wait, 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 wait. Ryan, what the Did hell? He get faked? It's not my fault. Oh my god, that's a terrible. A so it, Denver based reporter tweeted it out. I won't throw him under the bus, but should be trusted and then said read a text wrong my bad so sorry what the hell hey, not hey, my hey. fault not his uh, fault not my fault second oh, why are you guys God. freaking not out over there are you not prepared they have graphics to make in russia ryan okay <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> um uh it's gonna ha lot. don't oh god damn it Boo. Someone just Boo broke a glass. That, it's so yeah, bad. Yeah, people wow. are breaking glasses. And unnamed reporter. I feel I bad know. for him. One of the best because he's a nice guy. It's sad. That is not my fault. You cannot boo me. Boo. You can't boo him. Did you say it to Calvin Anderson's the really people? fast dude that's So fast. what I think <laughs> happened is this Denver-based reporter 
Browns. <laughs> Got a text that said the Texans are trading with the Browns. And just saw B-R-O and just, and just sent, sent it, it. bro. Oh. Sent it. And then oh, we're, that's great. Okay, at least this is being well documented on Twitter because I I just feel like I can't be uh, I can't be blamed for this. I'm blaming you. Yeah, I mean, he can't be blamed, yeah. guys. So. All right, guys. I will can't not with that. say anything can't anymore with that. until the pick is in. No, how dare you? You can't do that. Um, Texan sent 68, 108, and 104. Sorry, yeah. 124. Wait, what would we, what Yeah, because they moved. 68, 108, and 124. So they went up from 68. So we are in Broncos trade up easily territory. Yeah, we are. But the edge rushers just won't go. So old cool mm-hmm. hand George, he's probably yeah. waiting for a shoe to drop. Take a Drake Jackson, he's going to move up so he can get Ojabo. Take Ojabo, he's going to move up for a Drake Jackson. Or Benito. Or Benito. Right now, you're Who not knows? putting any urgency on or Georgie boy. Or he's not looking for an edge in the first place. Curious George just swinging from trees, having a good time. Uh, I could go for banana. Just waiting around for you guys. I'm just, um, I'm just upset now. I'm, get, I'm taking heat for something that wasn't even my fault. I will say, <laughs> when you said that, my initial reaction was, I don't like this. Oh. Which is not what I expected. But Walk my, me through that. Yeah, like you said it, and I was like, oh no. And and, <laughs> and and I kept that on the inside, obviously, because you didn't hear it. But I I think I would have come around and like been cool with it. It did make me think, though, like there's a lot of good players. We really trading up to to go after like one of them. Right. So I'm I'm cool with it. All right. See I that everyone. Excited. Way to talk everyone off the ledge, Henry. That's good. Good job. Yeah. Hey. Uh, also, this you know we're having a. A very all city day around here. Oh yeah, we didn't really talk about any of the other teams at all yesterday. Uh, I'm happy for the Bears. Nicholas Mariano, one of our hosts of the CHGO Bears, he said Kyler Gordon was his favorite remaining prospect going into the day. His shot spec? Yeah, that was his shot spec. That was his shot spec. Someone get them some malort. Did you say Nick? <laughs> Someone tell Nick. Yeah, CHGO, Nick, come on. Get it's time to do it. a shot. If your shot spec gets picked. If your shot spec gets picked. He said, uh, what a day. Who's everyone's favorite prospect left? I like Kyler Gordon. Boom. That makes me happy. Good for him. Mm-hmm. Good for you, Got to take a shot, Nick. Someone tell Bear him. Bear down, Chicago Bears. All right, sounds good. The Ravens pick is in. These could be the bastards that steal one of those picks we like. But they need yeah. a ride receiver to replace isn't, Hollywood Brown. Wait, isn't Lamar in need of a contract, or did he get it? He hasn't gotten it yet. What if they drafted Malik Willis? They I already have Tyler Huntley. That is true. Uh, that's true. Tyler I don't Huntley's like Tyler Huntley at how? all. How? Oh, Utah. Oh. I mean, is that why I don't like him? That was my guess. Oh, I don't know. I just didn't. He's he was amazing very good. at football. Oh, okay. He's just really good at football, is all. Gosh, mm-hmm. now every time I see on the clock, my heart skips. Oh, out. man. Yeah. Yeah, I got the same thing. DeMarvin Leal would love DeMarvin. At least people. Is that who they took? People in the comments no. are starting no. to s- discover. Ah, who, who damn. It up. <laughs> Baltimore, David oh, Ojabo. That's a perfect fit. How do they always do this? Ojabe, uh, they Ojabe know how to do it right. on the edges. And Kyle Hamilton last yeah, night. Yeah. yeah. That's well, they did get Lindenbaum, which I thought was kind of a crappy I hate pick. the Ravens. I respect them deeply. Exactly. You have to respect it. Like this, how, they do this great. every single time. I guess the they one a that, ton they, of that they fourth round picks too. Everyone thought they did, which they didn't, was Patrick Queen. He hasn't really mm-hmm. done anything yet. That's true. Um, but it felt even then it felt like they did it again at that mm-hmm. point. It was like, oh, here's he was kind of like the Nakobe Dean of that draft. It's like, oh, there's this really good linebacker who's slipping, and then of course he ends up with the Ravens. But that hasn't happened. All right, you know, they're taking care of business. It is crazy. Dean's still on the board, man. So yeah. Ojabo goes away. That was your guys's dream. Now are you part of the Dean dream? I mean, Dean would technically be the highest. Henry, would rated you take guy Dean over Anderson? Board. Um, yeah. I mean, you'd have to. Okay. You'd have to. But I would say, like, if, if the question is Dean at sixty four or Anderson at seventy six, then it's a really close conversation. But okay. I, I think Dean just has to. That's Here, such has a to great pick. pick for those guys. It is. Man. Here is uh, best available. Massive rankings. bummer. All right. So Nicobe Dean. Abraham Lucas would be phenomenal. Bernhard Ryman, frankly surprised he's dropped this far. 
George Pickens. I mean, the two Georgia guys, let's face it. Mm -hmm. uh, when there's smoke, there's fire. There has to be some real injury stuff with Dean, and there has to be some real uh, off-field or injury stuff mm -hmm. with Pickens. I've heard more off-field, but you never know. Definitely Trey, Tyreek Woolen would still be phenomenal picks. Yep. DeMarvin Leal, Drake Jackson. I mean, yep. we would sign up for that in a heartbeat. Isaiah Spiller loved the prospect. Don't know if that's a great need. Jaquan Brisker, one of your guys, yep. Hank. Sky Moore, kind of surprised he's still around. Channing Tyndale, one of my guys at off-ball linebacker. Certainly all those off-ball linebackers are still around. There's been zero movement on that pick ride. You know, I almost, know what's crazy about Like 75, you can get those off-ball linebackers. My Jay Sanders might be the one they're looking at. You know what's crazy about Nicole he long. Dean? He long. I like him. Huh. He's 21. Yeah. So a lot of times with these linebackers, you're like, oh, well, four-year starter, you know, banged up from just smashing their head mm -hmm. in there a million times. He's 21. Mm -hmm. He's 25 at the end of his rookie contract. Real That's quick, insane. real is. quick on a Kobe Dean. There's a bunch of reports out there that a peck issue is why he is falling. A peck, like bad medicals, mm. like a eh. chicken, uh, like bad medicals on his pectoral muscle. Yeah, his pectoral. He has a something like that. That's not degenerative. No, like s stretch it out. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> Have these guys not gone to medical school? What are we doing? What are these doctors doing? Sure. I figured he's so short, it was like a neck something, you know? Like he should be six four. His neck's just compressed. Lions are going Josh Pascal. Pascal, love that. When in doubt, French pronounced. By the way, Josh Pas <laughs> Josh Pascal uh, of the University of Kentucky. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, very good. By the way, that one was broken, and a lot so of these picks are coming in uh, from Jordan Schultz. Oh. He was early on the Russell Wilson to Denver train. Good job, also, Jordan. Good job. Friend of the program. Wow. Sent us a DM saying he likes the show. Wow. Jordan shouts to you. So Jordan shouts. We hope you're watching with us uh, tonight as you're breaking. Logan O'Connor is fighting, but he has his jersey pulled over his head. Oh, he's God. Oh, he's no. in big trouble. You don't like to see that. Oh, boy. We're getting reports that Loco's uh, bleeding. Bleeding all over the place, they're telling us. so. His, uh, his cousin lives in Montana. Yeah. <laughs> we heard. Yeah. yeah. Works at the course. Yeah, he does. He does work at the <laughs> course, in fact. <laughs> Lots of off-ball linebackers dropping. Still some edges dropping, but the market drying up a little. We're getting a little concerned about the corners. And Big Rye, do you like down defensive linemen? All right. Kinda. It's taking too long. But we still have a lot of down defensive linemen. Could they find an upgrade to McTelvin Ajim in this draft? Easily. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're I mean, throwing Leal. Kind of yeah. like McTelvin Ajim. Who doesn't? Yeah. The Marvin Leal is just better, though. Oh, let's go. Let's yeah, go. The shot spec. Yeah, I still don't know. Like, like I think I hate that who Pascal you should pick. take is obvious. Like, Nicobe Dean, like, you should take him. There's a there's a few of those guys where just obvious that's what you should do. Uh -huh. but like, what would get me excited? I'm struggling to figure it out. <sighs> okay. Okay. Let's, uh, let me pitch you some exciting picks okay. and see how excited Ooh, I can get you. We're doing you. elevator pitches? Oh, poor Hogue. He what a shouldn't. softy. Yeah, he shouldn't. I'll it drink sounds Malort like that stuff's poison. If someone can get me a shot of Malort from the bar down here, I will drink Malort for Hogue because he's a softy. So, Henry, mm -hmm. the Broncos come on the clock, and they select the toolsy, the dreamy. You saw him live at Folsom. He looked like a man among boys. Drake Jackson. How hyped are you now? Mm. It would give me it no, would give me kinda no, hype. It would give me kinda hype. Like forget you know it. he's good, but then you also think like what's he gonna do? Like so, he's basically Randy Gregory is in terms of his build, but 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 you wind up having him no, behind Gregory, no. behind Chubb. No. Like what all are right. we got an happen? all name team pick going here again from friend of the program, uh Jordan Schultz. You're killing it, Jordan. Fedarian Mathis. Ooh That's a good one, though. That's good for Broncos. <laughs> Fedarian Mathis. Okay. 
not Tell me more. not Winfrey, not who it. was auto corrected on our board to Person instead of Preston. Perry, so be careful. Perry, 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 on. Okay, yeah. we're gonna fix yes. all this right now. Um, right, so no one knows about Fedarian. No, he's an Alabama Perian. kid. He came on strong at the end of the year. Big body, all the tools. A little sloppy, a little sloppy. When you come on at the end of the year, what we're really saying is beginning of the year, not right to much, not much to write home about, as my grandpa would say. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it's toolsy. A, we're gambling, but mm, I've never really mm, thought about mm, that reference. Mm, mm. That that reference before. That's an army thing, like a military thing. Sorry, not army. I know. Or uh, like, like a yeah, U- must be. Or like a U away from home. You could be at summer camp if you That's wanted true. to. You know. I just uh, I, I'm gonna guess this started as a military thing. Huh. It I wasn't 11 year olds at summer camp. No, no I think they came up with like a no. very common phrase. Anytime yeah. you're writing home, really. Um, Have you ever written home? Well, no. As, you send letters to Italy. As most people know, I don't know how to write. I forgot I many years it? ago. They do have mail in oh. Italy. <laughs> It'll take forever to get there. So why would we bother? <laughs> um, when, letters you know, to Italy sounds like it could be like a uh, James Bond title. Oh. Yeah, it does. Or a bit of a romantic novel. Probably one of those slower um, starting ones, though. Yeah, yes. absolutely. I don't, I don't know that. There's I could get so through there's it. like a really long romantic interest that they oh, try to build up. Hate those. Yeah, for sure. But to finish that point, why write letters to my family when I can simply pick up the phone and hear them insult me? You know? Oh, you can Long even distance. FaceTime them and see their face. Oh, look, they're signing Sandos again. By the way, had some Subway for lunch. Not going to really lie. Craving it. Would never rock that jacket. <laughs> wow. No one would, Ryan. But they got paid by Subway. I bet, like, and not I on bet Sandos. Ryan Green would wear it. Yeah, Ryan Green would. I mean, it's Christian, CSU colors. Christian Watson, who's going from North Dakota yeah. State to the Packers. Aaron I mean, Rodgers. Basically, no. Hmm. I don't think he would. I don't think he would. The Commanders are on the board. Wait, something happened to where I was checking things. Things are not going well for the Avalanche, who have so literally you, no interest in winning. You game. wouldn't get excited about Drake Jackson. I, I'd be excited, but again, I'm not like, oh, pitch me. Hell somewhere. yeah, we got Drake Jackson. Yeah, okay. You know? Like, I just don't know who gets me to that level. Troy Anderson would. The Broncos that's probably not a smart pick, given are on the there. board, Ryan. Uh, no, that's not, He's giving a hypothetical. Uh-huh. Don't fall for that again. <laughs> they draft Tyreek Woolen, and now you get to talk on the pod for months on end about, look, they've already got Pat Sertain on one side. Fan. Now you've got Woolen on the other. You've got the best safety in the league. How are you going to complete passes against these guys? You know, you and Zach do that for five months straight. Does that yeah. sound exciting? It does sound exciting. What do we know about uh, Ibero's style of corner that he likes? Because when Vic came in, it was like very clear. It's like, okay, he wants much more zone-focused mm-hmm. corners. Um, now, if you put Woolen into a zone... His coverage of it should be incredible. Like when you we have him deep, like like a cover three, he'd be yes. great. Yeah, yeah. especially like a bump that and run. Right, that press cover mm-hmm. three, he can just trail, use that length once the ball's in the air to just you know to ball hockey underneath. Trust Simmons to come over the top, use that length to press you at the line. Even yeah, if it's you're gonna be great. doing that cover two stuff where you're you know there's that whole shot right in between the safety mm-hmm. and right. the corner. He's he long. should be able to take that away because yeah. he's so long, and his it, recovery speed is so good. In that cover, too, though, when he's playing that more shallow little bubble on the sideline, the burst. is he reactive? Is mm-hmm. he quick enough? Is he twitched up enough to close on that? Right. A la Josh Norman, you know. And right. he's not super polished in man coverage either. No. But, but it just, you just hope that he's that comes a around. That like you said the same come. thing about Sertan, though. Where it's like, yeah, you know, he's not super polished in man. You like tools him better in zone and, right tools now. Tools and man coverage go together pretty well. Because Typically. it's yeah. just as yeah. simple yeah. as go Can make sure out. that guy doesn't get the ball. You mm-hmm. don't have to do much else other than, you know, start understanding, you know, what kind of keys you should look at. Where's the guy lined up? What's mm-hmm. the situation? What kind of routes are, is he running? And that's all just tape. Yep. Like, you know, Aqib Talib comes into the league and becomes one of the best tape watchers out there. And that's what makes him, uh, you know, a future Hall of Famer is that type of grind. This is what Tariq Woolen should do. 
you know, they should call up Akeem Tlaib and have him talk to him about how important it is to become that. But also, like, there's no mismatches for him. Unless you're talking about little quick, yep. but you're not going to match him up there. So it's like, there's no one too big for him. And yep. on the outside, there's no one too fast for him. You just need him to play good football. Right. So, yes, I would be excited. But I think they could get him later at 75. You do. Yeah. I thought he I, – I'm surprised he's still around now. Oh, wow. We very, we're very we very different. I thought a dude with those he's just such tools a prospect. would be – He's such a project. I know, but this is where the high-end projects start to fly off the board. Bears, Bears go again. DB again. No. Yes. Jaquan Brisker would Your have boy. been – Your boy. Jaquan Brisker. He would have been fun as a Bronco. <laughs> Tell us. I mean, yeah, he, very versatile, can do basically anything. You play the deep middle. I I probably like him best in the box. Like he's he's twitched up. He's fast. He can hit. I think that he's just like a, a really good clean DB prospect. Honestly, I'm not sure why I, I wouldn't have him higher. Why why do you think he's not first rounder, Dre? You know, I think there guy? was a little bit yeah. of a. All those guys, Petrie, Brisker, Seen, mm-hmm. um, who am I forgetting? Dax Hill. Yep. All were kind of on that first round bubble. Yeah. All with slightly different profiles and slightly different intriguing tools. I mean, is he more of that slot sub guy for you or is he that deep middle dude? Or yeah. he's better in the slot. box. Yeah. And the box terrifies me, but... If you can give us some coverage versatility, then that actually matters a lot. Exactly. But and you're that's, right. That's my I thing. Mean, coming so downhill well closer to the line of scrimmage, but then he's got some real coverage chops. Does it, does it translate? Yeah. Also, you know, you if you wear number point. one in college, you're pretty much automatically dope. At you, Penn State, too. You yep. do make, uh, in general, Ebikitty, him, that Penn State team, they were ranked in the top 10 going into mm-hmm. October. And that defense was, like, dominant. Yeah. It is surprising some of those guys didn't get a little more I think hype. so, yeah. I really uh, yeah, I really like him. Hell and yeah. Brisker with Gordon, that's – I mean, obviously, you know what they're doing there, but I really like both those pickups. All right. Still some really good guys available. And now we're kind of into the painless trade-up area where it's like you don't even necessarily have to mm-hmm. give up your next pick. Yep. You can trade out of Extra 64 – and then give up a fourth or a fifth. Yeah. Right. So, right. Real this, qu- we're going to find out very soon if the Broncos love anyone on the board. Trade yes, down is still in play, too. Somehow looks like a savage. We've got a video from our pals at CHGO to show. All right, let's do it. We've got time. Ah, they're going shot specs. They're going shot specs. I see Hogue just put it down instantly. Uh, he got tequila. All right. All right, let's. There we go. Did he? Got my guy Lawrence in there too. Is Will? <laughs> oh, <laughs> they call that Malort face. Uh, in the city. Oh, Olin had to leave. He's back now. The left row. The brisker After pick? the brisker pick? Yes. Oh. Wow. I guess you could say he wasn't brisked up yeah. <laughs> over that one. I, I assume Olin wanted O-line, yeah? Yes. That's why they call O-line, him O-line Crutes. Right, O-line Crutes. That, they don't. And I would, I would I not do. suggest <laughs> saying that to his face. Uh, then I won't. He's actually pretty chill. Obviously. But also... He works with you, Jesus Intimidating Christ. in just... In size and stature, uh, and right. also credentials, like right. should be a Hall of Famer or close yeah. to it. Right. All right. Shout out Will Dewitt, who I forgot. Moriano's at the facility. He's at Hallis Hall, which is like the most pretentious name for. Oh. <laughs> the like for us, it's Dove got Valley. Got Hallis Hall. Um. Right, win something this millennia. Oh, actually, they want us to call it the UC Health here. Training Center. No one's ever done it. Um, that was a first. <laughs> that was a first, yeah. But uh, so Nick couldn't take his shot spec. Maybe they'll have to get him on it later. How many shot specs are still left for us? Which one of you said Ojaba? Moi. 
Okay, so yours is off. So it's just down to me and Hank. Yep. Uh, Trey's oh, still Trey on the McBride board too. is still on the board. Okay, so we're only one down. Wow, Trey McBride. People are going to start getting antsy about Trey McBride here. If they pass on him when they have the pick, I just, people would not be happy. Explain to me where, where you see the no. fit. Because as I said on our bet show today, I said I'm not going to complain if they pick him because they clearly mm -hmm. see the, that it's going to fit. As I sit here right now, I say he's a middle-of-the-field monster, and Russell Wilson doesn't look there. So explain to me what, how you think it works. I mean, you have to keep him honest. Like, uh, I don't think you just punt the tight end position, I guess. And like, basically, any tight end is going to be mostly working in the middle of the field. Like, he can still he stretch like, the seam a little bit. Yeah. Like, you could have him break out if you want to. Like, I, I think passing-wise, you'd be fine. It's, it's the blocking where you really like him. And obviously, that versatility that comes with, you know, do they put a linebacker on, do they put a safety on him, do they put a corner on him. And, and when you look at what the Broncos have at tight end right now, it's not good. It's really not good. I mean, like, Albert O, he's, he's exciting. Like, he could yeah, break out. Exciting. But, I mean, yeah, he's exciting. So, but in terms good. of playing good football, there just hasn't been a lot of that. And the other guy is, like, a big blocker, which is needed. But I think just finding somebody who can play that position well and not banking on a scheme fit or a breakout year would be, would be a good idea. We're now 12 picks away. No, 14 picks away from the Broncos. Uh, we, uh, do we have some more Super Chats, kill that we should hit? One more. All right, let's hit it. Uh, from Steve, you did your Malort shots like a champ when you were in town. You're damn right I did. No, he apparently is a one of one as far as newbies being able to take Malort easy breezy. I would legitimately opt into just taking a Malort shot for enjoyment right now. He's a top one percentile. Do we, we actually do? <laughs> do we? Yes, we can't. But we do. But we can't. Um, we don't at the bar. Is what you're saying? The, it's in the offices as a as a treat. Yes, of course. The upstairs offices. <laughs> private yeah, offices. Of course, the private offices. Yes. Um, Saints on the board at Forty Niner. Um, this has to have been leaked already. They who the heck did they pick? They traded up for Chris Olavis and got Trevor Penning. All right, it is Alante Taylor. Okay, I like it. Yeah, he is a good prospect. Yeah, um, a lot like Treek Wollen. Yeah, well, and maybe a little more positional versatility, right? Maybe some of that Jaquan Brisker stuff we were talking mm -hmm. about. He can play inside, outside, a little safety, a little corner. Uh, and kind of like the classic Tennessee prospect, right? Like yeah. tools, talent, probably over-recruited, oh. underperformed in college, and you're kind of gambling on being able to develop him a la Malik Jackson. Think think Malik Jackson. There you go. Matt Miller just said that he had him as a fourth-round pick. Six foot. Yeah, Olante I mean, Taylor? Yeah. It's not he's crazy. A I mean, he's just like a so super, did I, super speedy. You know? Again, this is the run on. Don't see me tweeting about low, it. Low uh, positional value players. High positional value players. Low positional value. Potential nightmare scenario here. Uh, Chiefs oh. are on the board with Trey McBride on the board. Why would they need Trey McBride though? They do have as Kelsey. the heir to the Kelsey throne. Yeah. At the same time, like, are the Chiefs really going to run two tight end sets? That's just not what they do. Yeah, I'd imagine they'd go wide receiver with Sky Moore before they'd go Trey McBride. Yeah. Well, that would. I mean, I could see a scenario where they go. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? They just kind of change up their philosophy and say, like, we can put two tight ends on the field who are great receiving threats. That'll help us run the ball. We know that's a problem. A little counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah zig while everyone zags. Well, that would seem Andy Reedy. Andy Reedy, yeah, I could see it. I could see it for sure. Um, all right, man, we're really. This is a big one here with the Saints on the clock. Um, all those tackles, Trey McRide, um, Tyreek Woolen, Drake Jackson, DeMarvin Leal, those are really our priorities right now. Gosh, man. And then, I mean, like all the options at interior D line, interior linebacker. Remain. I'm. Mm, mm. 
I'm, I'm getting antsy. Yeah, it's drying up a little bit. I want the I'd Broncos start to, move to up. jump and go get Nicobe uh, Dean. Uh, right trade, it, trade, trade, trade. The Patriots are now on the clock. That might be McBride. I, no, there's no They've way. They've already traded. They've drafted uh, like 100 tight exactly, ends yeah. and signed 100 tight ends. They aren't that good, though. Huh. They've already traded I'm a bunch of I'm seeing Patriots on the clock after a trade. Chiefs trade to Patriots. Yeah. So that's the reverse of what they did last night, yep. where the Chiefs traded out or traded out to the Patriots pick. I mean, they... It, it would almost be too obvious for them to take Trey McBride, but that doesn't mean they wouldn't do it. No, absolutely. I mean, they just took Cole Strange, so I wouldn't exclude any surprises from these guys at this point. I'll bet you they, this is N'Kobe Dean. They also need wide receiver help, so Sky Moore would make a ton of sense to them. Um, I just, Yeah. Pickens. Could be a Razor. I think Pickens could be, be Pickens. a better fit for oh, them than Moore. I oh could totally God. see that. They already reached on Cole Strange. Why not reach on Matt Arazo? Right. Why not? Why not? Yeah. So they gave up point. 54 and 158 to go up to 50. It's not bad. No. It's not bad. I, th I feel like it's got to be Pickens. He's he's so good. So if you're giving up 150 to move up four spots, to move up 14 spots, you're giving up... What about Nakobe Dean? Borderline top 100 pick. That'd be a good pick, too. I just think they need weapons. Yeah, they really need weapons. I mean, you could see James Cook, right? It sounds like that's what Kuyper is yelling about oh. right now is N'Kobe Dean anyways. Um, I'd go Channing Tyndale, too. The other Georgia linebacker. Yeah. Please don't kill my dream. Isaiah Spiller? Is it killing your dream? It hasn't happened yet. Isaiah Spiller, yeah. I, don't they feel more James Cooky though? Yeah, I mean, if they still have James White though, and they, you kind of ask him to do the same thing, I got it. I don't think they invest like that in a running back though. Tyquan Thornton. Oh, your guy. That is early. Yeah, it's that early. That is early. That is <laughs> very early. Why would they? I'd huh. heard murmurs the Packers might be interested in this range, but they this already seems like drafted, a Raiders right? pick more than it seems yeah. like a Patriots pick. Yeah, it does. Uh, trading up for a one-trick pony speed receiver. I mm. legitimately thought he could fall to the Broncos in the fourth round. Oh, sure. Must think there's some special teams return value. I mean, the thing that surprises me, like, of all these specialist speed guys, I would have thought, like, Memphis's Calvin Austin I will say Max was going to go highest of them all. Mac Jones throws a great deep ball. A pretty deep ball. Deep ball accuracy. We talked about That's it, why it happened. last year. Yeah. And, and it's exactly the reason why I was saying the Broncos should take Tyquan Thornton because they have the better deep ball accuracy yeah. guy. Um, huh. But I did not mean in, trade up into the 50s for him. Over Pickens. That's just crazy to me. I wonder, I wonder what and we're missing Sky there. Moore and Alec Pierce, who yeah. we thought was very patriot-y. Yeah. Um, Jalen Tolbert. Calvin Austin, again, like a real speedster, much like Khalil Shakir. David Bell, much more accomplished college career at Purdue. Uh, you know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Tyquan Thorpe. I mean, um, but again, it's a Patriot, so I, I'm not going to say it's a bad pick. I bet I mean, I, I bet would, they're but. right. I'll, I'll guess that Belichick is right about him and Strange. He's wrong more often than not, but um, yeah. Eagles on the clock. Go Birds. Probably the the team that made itself best yesterday. I do think they they did have the best first round. When we yeah. looked at the picks last night, I think AJ we AJ Brown's a haul. I forget who we said. Who did we say? Lions? I loved what the Lions Oh, did. Lions, I love what they but, did. And yeah. when you look at that trade they got to move up, they actually kind of made a great trade because they got a second rounder back. Right. Yep. I thought the I thought the Eagles did a great great yep. job yesterday. Jordan, Jordan Davis, Davis was one of my favorites, and then AJ Brown is a freaking beast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they already have Devonte Smith, so I don't know why they would want to go wide receiver again here. Well, you're really you're really giving Hurts a chance to show what he's got. Yep. And you're honoring the strength of the team and best player on the team, which is Fletcher Cox. They are Von Miller essentially. Right. You're giving him a bodyguard and Jordan Davis to kind of ride out in the sunset and have his best 
final year, or final couple years. Allie know? wants to know what corners are out there. I mean, it's starting to dry up. Woolen. Tyreek Woolen certainly out there. And then, you know, you get into more of these hybrid safety types. Um, Kobe Bryant, Eagles really good. Eagles pick Cam Jurgens. Oh, man. They really got jerged around <laughs> on that one. <laughs> the center. Get out the lotion. <laughs> they pick Jurgens. They, the center out of Nebraska tough yeah i mean it's <laughs> that line sucks yeah no I, hell athletic really athletic um and i mean you know they just said goodbye to kelsey who was just a freak athlete at center they're kind of keeping that keeping that going good times rolling i don't mind it but boy do they need a corner i mean if i was a an eagles fan I would end it all if I had to live another Sunday watching Avante Maddox having to start for my team, you know. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I think I mean, you've had a, a just stalwart center in there for so long. Got to replace him. Um, yeah. I was talking to a Denver Broncos practice squad player mm. who came from Philadelphia, and I was asking him what are the biggest differences from there to mm. here. And one of the things he said is, when you line up on that offensive line, uh, Jason Kelsey just tells you everything that you have to do. Um, and yeah. he's like, this isn't a knock on Lloyd Cushenberry by any means. He's just, he's not Jason Kelsey at right. this point mm -hmm. in his career. Right. And so there's just a lot more responsibility on everyone around him to know exactly what's going on. Out there, Jason Kelsey just tells everyone what to do all the time. And, it, and then they don't screw it up. Um, and so... If you've had that for so long, I can see why you would want to jump up and replace him. Yeah, yeah. Solid pick. Solid pick. We are starting to see, you know, it felt like first 10, 12 picks, the value was tremendous. Now it's feeling like, oh, yeah, I had a fourth round grade. I had a third round grade. Like, can we go? Do we have an updated the, best available or close to it? All right. Yeah, and I mean, I hadn't thought of Thornton to the Pats. Yeah, they basically came away with the first and second rounder that are more like a third and fourth round. By ball. the way, let's not give the Patriots some sort of benefit of the no, doubt No, no, they shouldn't. They, they shouldn't. suck at drafting wide they're receivers. They're horrible at that drafting all positions, actually. They're, they're not good at drafting, but they're especially bad at drafting wide receivers. That is true. Um, so, or is it developing? Bad. It could something. be developing. Yeah. I mean, aside from slot receivers. Pickens to the Steelers. We've got best available. Wow. Right. Uh, Pickens to the Steelers. Can that How locker room here? handle that? Yeah. That, I mean, so you've got Pickens to, over there, and then you have, what's the Notre Dame guy? Um, Claypool. Claypool. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of body out there. Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson zigzagging yeah. through the middle. And all with Kenny Pickett, which, no, that is not – a made-up name where we're putting a Y at the end of anything, everything. Kenny Picky, That's Kenny Picky actually has names. Wait, so. you get Pickett to Pickens. Yeah, That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Um, what For were we just doing? Oh, best available thing. Let's go back to that. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly current. Um, Nicobe Dean, Abe Lucas, Bernard Raymond. I love that you're calling him Abe. We should do that. Yeah, we could call him Abe Luke. It Abe is Luke. It is interesting to know. Uh, Dre sent me 13 guy. We have 13 guys that Dre uh, said were possible targets at 64. We're less than picks away. So someone that Dre said would target will be there at 64. Nice. I would not be shocked to see the Broncos trade back just the way that the board yeah. is falling. I know that's not what anyone wants right now. Um, but... Especially interior D line, off ball linebackers, they're all left, man. I know. Trey Anderson, Chad Muma, Channing Tyndale, Benito. We're big Benito guys. Mm -hmm. I'm not done. I'm not done with that graphic yet. I Travis still, I Jones, still big Rye. Um, Perry and Winfrey. So Pickens is gone. You still got Trey McBride. You still got Tariq Woolen. Cam uh, Thomas. Drake Jackson. Where is Looking Benito? Did I forget to put Benito? I, I, Benito is an, <laughs> What is he on your ranked? You just forgot to put him on there. That's fair. Yeah, it happens sometimes. Travis Jones stuff. is nice. Yeah, I um, blew it on Benito. 
Bless you. What about uh, Tyndall? What can you tell me about him? Tyndall? Tyndall, another interior linebacker out of Georgia. So kind of in a three-man rotation with Dean and Quay Walker. Really quick. There was the leak that Trey McBride was going to the Colts, right? Mm -hmm. And then they traded out of it. Mm -hmm. They're up again here in a second. Oh, wow. I wonder if they... The leak was like, hey, we're trading back. We're going to target Trey McBride. And the person just saw, like, we're going to target Trey McBride and yep. leak that. So it could, could be coming up here. Benito was actually supposed to be just after Trey. I had him ahead of Boye Mafe in my edge ranking. So apologies for that. Um, right. Still some good edge guys. Some good edge guys, especially if you go a little later on the developmental side, like the MJ Sanders crowd. Um yeah, I mean, and you know, like D'Angelo Malone's guys like that. Okay. Alec Pierce. Real quick, can we get a, uh, a numbers watch on Zach's tweet that just said 10 picks away from the Broncos? I emoji, I emoji. Oh, my God. Let's keep track of how, how much that blows up. Yeah. Um, no, let's do that. So lots of wait, value. Indy picked? Alec Pierce. Wide receiver out of Cincy. You remember him at the senior bowl. Yes, and I just remember him on that Cincy team, of course. Of course. Um, of course. I think Go Bearcats. he did a lot of heavy lifting to make Desmond Ritter look better. Yeah, because Desmond Ritter, ball placement's an issue. Ball placement's an issue. Desmi Riddy. Um, What's the chat saying, Kale? Is it, are people starting to get... Uh, Antsy about Trey McBride. People are very antsy about Trey McBride. We had a we <laughs> had one guy. Thing ever. We had one guy say, "Getting antsy." I've been antsy. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we had a super chat just come in about that. Let's hit it. Uh, Dolchich is better than McBride to me. Could not disagree more. <laughs> you see Damn it, him. like just a uh, maybe faster, probably faster, a little sharper route runner, bigger, bigger, yeah. But, yeah, Bigger. I'd take McBride. Probably a better red zone threat. Let's just um, look at, like, impact. I think slight mm -hmm. slight more upside as a, a blocker. But, yeah, McBride's much more polished. And, I mean, the thing about Trey. I'd put Trey, third for me, honestly, behind huh. Jelani. Jelani would be one. Really? Trey, two. And then Dolchich. Jelani's just a gamble. Yeah, Jelani is. I'm a, a gambler. Tough yeah. for me to Do buy. Do a show about into. it every day. <laughs> so he's true. He's either going to be really good or a bust. Like, there's a chance you're just getting Gronk, but more likely, probably, like, he just can't separate. He's he a doesn't solid need blocker. to separate. He can separate vertically. I feel like Gronk would have been a risky dominant game. in college had he just been healthy. Jelani Woods doesn't have that excuse. Who was dominant in college is Trey McBride, despite having a literal yeah. triple option quarterback throwing him the ball, um, which cannot be discounted. Talk about guys doing heavy lifting to make their quarterback look better. Oh, man. We saw Santeo two years ago, and I was, like, offended watching him throw the football. Yeah. yeah. Then last year, rough. he actually looked, like, halfway passable, and it was all just because he was throwing to Trey McBride, mm -hmm. who has an insane catch radius. Oh. And then just goes wild with the ball afterwards. Oh. Oh. Although somehow, some way, that staff still couldn't figure out how to target him in the red zone. I know. Insane. Um, <laughs> you know, Christian Harris, Alabama still around too. Yeah. All the off-ball linebackers except for Lloyd and Quay Walker are all very much available. It's crazy. It's pretty crazy, yeah. Much like the tight ends that we've talked about. Mm. Um, Ooh, I really Chiefs take Sky Moore. You hate that. That adds up, though. Does that scare you? Not yet. Okay. Like it just seems like with those little speed guys, most of the time What's they don't the speed pan out on, on him. Now everyone's numbers four were two juiced. eight or something. Okay, it's really hard to know four three one right around there. But yeah, I mean, it is hard to know, Ryan. With any of those speed guys, I, I gotta to trust. see it translate before I actually get concerned obviously Mahomes is going to make you better just by totally. being Mahomes but they also let's not forget like they have Mecole Hardman and he sucks yeah yeah so it's not just like draft a speed receiver put him in this offense and he's amazing and by the way Mecole Hardman had to do no heavy lifting mm -hmm. he was the third or fourth option depending on the year still wasn't able to make any sort of real impact now there's a few times where he gets the ball mm -hmm. in his hands and does something special because he's a freak 
but it's not that simple of just like, oh, Sky Moore's going to be great because he's a chief. Yeah. But he's aw- he, he, he was awesome in college. I'm glad it's him instead of Pickens. I'll say that. I like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, but in that offense, he could be scary. Feels, I mean, he is fast, but does feel one of, one of those classic guys who you'd say quicker than fast, right? So he's going to have the speed to go over the top, but he feels more like a guy who's working underneath and on crossers and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good value pick for them with where they're picking at wide receiver. If you remember, Ryan, I thought he'd go much higher today with mm-hmm. how the wide receivers flew off the board yesterday. Yep. Mm-hmm. But um, A lot of people talking about a big wide receiver desperate. run here. So We're not desperate. That'd be nice. It's already, I mean, it's it already you is want. one, right? It's what you want. Win. Pickens is in there. Pierce is in there. Pierce, yeah. Pickens. The Baylor kid. Thornton. Ma- it's been four in a row. I think it has no, been. Not quite, but I mean, it's been Jorgens a lot. Jorgens was in there. Oh, right. Okay. It's been a lot, right? Um, oh, here's an interesting one. All City. Trey McBride to the Cardinals. Oh, no. Let's go. Interesting. Hey, there you go. That's actually kind of dope. It's a good fit for him. I mean, it's they obviously traded for, uh, for. It is a good fit. Blanking on his name, Max Zach Ertz. Williams. Zach, Ertz Zach Ertz. last year. They were able to make use of him. Mm-hmm. Trey McBride. Uh, uh, Trey, Trey McBride. Got distracted. Uh, yeah. Is in the similar mold, especially with like that away from the body catching mm-hmm. that Zach Ertz really good at. Yeah. Um, yeah. You love to see him go to a place where they throw the rock a bunch. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's going to be wide open, so he'll really be able to feast underneath, as we've talked about, right? Totally. So they, they've got four sets, and he's just going to be underneath, taking advantage of all that space and really being able to dominate. Um, that is a nice fit for him. A bit disappointing for us. Yeah, a bit disappointing for point. us. Still yeah. never saw it. I just never saw it working out. Nine we are picks getting left. dangerously close to the Broncos here. Yeah, we're really getting there. And multiple shot specs still on the board. Mine well, and Henry's. Uh, Nicobe Dean. Yep. Nicobe Dean. Troy, Troy Anderson. Anderson. Mm-hmm. I just, it sucks that we're both you guys on go linebackers because I don't trust the Broncos to ever value the position. I mean, there's a good chance Anderson's there in the third round, too. That would be sweet. Yep. Nothing wrong with a shot in the third round. Nope. Yeah, we'll. We'll see how, how far of out. a trade down, like out of 75, like something lower than 75 to where now 75 is the highest pick they'd take. No, I don't think they would go that low. I think they would go like 64 to 69. Nice. Or like 64 to 66, 64 to 71. Okay. okay. Probably. Yeah. But, but what do you even get back? Like a own- fifth next year? Maybe you do go. I don't know. I, I'm telling you, the. I love the value of these tackles at this point, and Marvin Leal, Drake Jackson. Would you give up the pick entirely just for a second next year? So then you're just out of that. You're out of the second round, Ugh. and you're into 75 as your top pick. No Only if it's like for me. the Lions or something. Like you have to think uh, it's like one of the 10 first picks of the second round next year. Okay. All right. Interesting. Yeah. I'm. I'm. Mm. I wouldn't just push it back. How's the How's the chat feeling about McBride? We're sad. Big sad times over here. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, Dean yeah, the yeah. Dream. Dean Still the Dream. For sure. Dean the Dream. No. I feel for my guy Max. What Williams. a terrible drop. I know. It's Max not Williams, ideal for him. Old double X. Yep. Double Although, X crazy Max. Yeah, he's pretty much out of the rotation now. Yeah. He was having a comeback year, and then he got injured at the best yep. best so, point of it. Sad. So, con- first of all, congrats to DNVR athlete Trey McBride, Trey McBride. for getting picked. Mm-hmm. Second round, great, like, right in the slot where it looked like he was going to go. Uh, no slide for him. Yep. Um, a really stand-up guy. He's come to the bar a couple times. Always gracious. Great family. Um, so, first ever happy. DNVR athlete to be drafted. First, yeah, ever DNVR athlete to be drafted. Congratulations, Trey. Um, and I'm I'm really happy he went to uh, 
He's going to stay in the All City family, and yeah, he's going to cool. a team that is going to get him the rock. And it's kind of a scenario where, like, you keep him behind Trey er or Zach Ertz for one year, you know, where he's like that second. Is he option. behind him though, or or at least for a couple, you know, a, a period, have mm -hmm. him learn from him, and then it's an easy, you know, one for one yeah. swap. The, and something clicked in the Cardinals over the last year where they said, oh. Tight end's actually important to what we want to do in this offense. Yeah. Uh, yep. So that's a You're cool right. one. All right. You're right. Chiefs go Sky Moore. A lot of people praising this. I'm, I think it's a good pick. Um, I, but, I mean, going from. Going from Tyreek Hill. Even two years ago, going from a trio of wide receivers, that's Sammy Watkins, Tyreek Hill, Nicole Hardman. To now Juju, Sky Moore, Nicole Hardman, that's a massive drop off. It's a huge downgrade. Yeah. And you need to really put some work in as a staff, you know. Exactly. Like and you the, have some you're major have developments to hit to on make. Sky Moore. Because if you miss on another speed receiver, then you're just it, you just have a massive hole there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean it's it's solid. It makes sense. It's a good value there. It's a good value. That is the thing. I think it's a good value. At From the end a of money the day, standpoint, they're saving a lot of money on the position. Huge. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, had they reached at the end of the first on a wide receiver, he's probably the top wide receiver, you know? Mm -hmm. So they're able to wait 30 more spots and still get him, basically. So that's where I think the, the pick deserves to be praised. Why um, can't we have uh, Frank Sanders out here announcing this pick? Frank Sanders, as you know, is working. Right he now. is. He's busy. No, he no. turned it down. I like that. No. Um, super chat coming in right here. If we don't get Nakobe Dean, who should we still be stoked about, or should we just want a trade back? Oh, I like this. Drake Jackson, Nick Benito. Benito has been one that's like, he's been there all along. Mm -hmm. We've talked about him at that position. It's like right in his wheelhouse. And we've talked about edge all along, and we talk about how the Broncos love that position. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like that makes too much sense, uh, and it could just be like, oh, yep, it's exactly what it should have been all along. Um, so that's one to keep an eye on. Um, that would be exciting. What was his? He ran a crazy forty time too. I don't know what it was. It was good though. It was insane. Yeah. Um, so the Marvin Leal you throw in there. That would be interesting. Does Benito move the Benito for you? Yeah, no. <laughs> that was reach, reach. Reach. That was Okay, weak. never mind. Uh, never mind. Say, that was wow. Would that be? Would uh, that, that be was weak from Henry, you, mm. which is pretty <laughs> in Spanish. Um, yeah, I would say yes. That excites me at a um, a solid level. Nick with a K too. And, Just like and K. Max with two X's. He's he's Nick with a K. Yeah. So it's kind of lit. It's kind of fun. Yeah, Let's but I do it. think it that's kind of the short list. Nicobe Dean. Troy Drake, Anderson. Drake Jackson. Yeah, Troy Anderson you could throw in there. Uh, DeMarvin Leal. Maybe Christian Harris. Oh, Nick Pettit Frere. Either one of those tackles really could be Interesting good. Interesting pick here. Very Cowboys <laughs> taking a guy with character concerns, uh, but very talented, Sam Williams. Oh. That's a bold one. He was kind. Of, he's kind of similar to Nick Benito. Old number seven. Mm -hmm. um, that's very Jack speedy. Daniels. Yeah. No. And I mean, had a good career at Ole Miss. Chad Muma, would that excite you at sixty-four? No. Would not. Too high. Yeah. And of all those off-ball guys, I they're all so athletic. I'm kind of more for the dudes who have that. You know, the a little more downhill physicality on top of that athleticism. Chad Muma's a little too finesse for me, while Chanel, Troy Anderson, Tyndale, Dean all can really lay down the hammer on top of mm -hmm. sideline to sideline in it. So that's where Muma, you know, late third, early fourth. Okay, cool. Guys, that's the guy we end up with. I'm fine. We are 56 picks in. I know. 24% of those picks have been wide receivers. That's crazy. And only one quarterback. That's wild. That's, that's one quarterback. Yeah. That's wild. They're not good? It's insane. And you're seeing kind of a shift in approach 
I guess, from NFL teams because all, every great wide receiver now needs over $20 million a year. Yeah. Teams are just saying, okay, let's just draft these guys because they're going to be really good, mm-hmm. a lot of them. Um, and then you get them for cheap for four years, and then you can figure out if you want to pay them then, or you just do it all over again. Yep. And what's the hit rate on wide receivers compared to other positions? It's got to be higher. So easy. Yeah. So I was thinking about this. Are we, have we now gotten to the point where we're treating wide receivers? And I was thinking at first like running backs where you, to avoid paying running backs, you're just going to keep drafting them and you just want like wide receivers on rookie contracts. Yep. Or has it essentially become like quarterback where you can only win with guys on rookie contract windows and you can't really do it. Um, You know, like it really sucks to pay wide receivers right now. It does. And I wouldn't do it. It just doesn't seem worth it. They're so replaceable. There's so many out there. Are they replaceable though? Or do you have to spend a top 18 pick to replace them? There is that part, I guess. The second round pick, you get pickings. That's that is true. I can't think. Yeah, no, we've Can got Merchell, Carroll, blasting on the mic, straight blasting. If you're in the comments and you too can't hear yourself think, <laughs> what? Wait, Let I us wanna know. know. I want to know because a lot of times the Nuggets guys will talk about what music is playing at the bar and the, the people in the chat will be like, we can't hear that. Uh, um, so I, I'm curious because this is like 10x louder than the I music. I can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear me either. Yeah. Do you guys, uh, can you guys hear that? Is, there, is that Broncos? intrusive to you? Yeah, the Bucks traded with the Bills for this pick. Okay, and the Buccaneers. No B teams are allowed to trade except the Broncos. Got Logan yes. Hall earlier. Someone um, said all caps. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Can someone um, go tell Merchel to shut up? Yeah. <laughs> we really. Why is he saying so much? We I don't know. Need, it seems like he's been talking for an hour. Yeah, we don't. We didn't need. Is he doing a podcast? We didn't need be. Ryan's extended <laughs> opening speech for day one of the draft. <laughs> on, Just uh, reciting my toast? On the giveaway, the toast. The toast to Spence and Kylie's weddings being redone today. We are Um, so close to this Broncos pick. What team needs was I looking up? Tampa Bay. Wow. It is refreshing being able to hear myself think again. That's fun. Please Um, don't get canceled when I tell you this information. Joel Embiid is out indefinitely. (laughs) Don't do it. (laughs) (laughs) That's what he does. That's what he does. And broke a broken face bone. Yeah. He put the That's what he does. Ass and concast. Um <laughs> there's that's not a word. <laughs> None so. of that made what? sense. Yeah. Um He's always so hurt. O lineman for the Raymond. Okay. There he is. So, awesome. uh, wait, I'm not saying that to anyone. That took. would make a lot of sense. I'm just um, saying for the Broncos, that's a possibility. Oh yeah. I mean that'd be a good value. That'd be a great value for them. You could have seen him going in the first. The Peter King. Had him mocked yeah. in the first to the Patriots. Would have been a much better pick than Cole Strange. And, and now, now, I mean, the way the Broncos work at tackle, you have Billy Turner for a year. You can afford to, to get a developmental guy. Yep. Yeah, mm. Raymond's only concern is those shorter arms. Speaking of injuries. But he is a tall boy. Chris Bryant's on the injured list. Those things are going great for the Rockies. Oh. Damn. That took me a weirdly long amount of time Let's to figure click out who Chris, Chris Bryant. Bryant. Yeah. Whenever or I hear Kobe Bean, I, I think Kobe of Kobe Bryant. I think of Kobe Bean. Kobe Bean. The Kobe Dean. Kobe Bean. Who's that? Bean is Kobe's middle name. Oh. Kobe wow. Bean Bryant. Every time That's you stuff. think of that. Every time we've I been hear talking him. about him a lot. I know. I've just been thinking. I, like Kobe highlights are just playing in my head. Anytime oh, wow. I think of our colleague. Dwayne Brown, I think. Downtown Dwayne Brown. How Uh, is Dwayne Brown the offensive lineman? Yeah. Yeah. Also. How does that happen? Two Dwayne Browns spelled the same way. I know. I mean, it's a very common first name and a very common last name. So do we not know who the Bucks select here? We're guessing Ray Dog? I did not guess anything. I'm just saying that's a player that is available for the Broncos. Indeed he is. Would you be excited about Raymond? It's one of Zach's favorite players in the draft. I would. 
I mean, when you're not going to see him for a year, it feels kind of lame. But from an injury or just because no, it's, it's a just just raw. Billy T. Um, yeah. I mean, his story is really intriguing with only having played the Luke sport Sadiki? a couple of years. Yeah. God. God key? God key. God key. Another Chippewa? Yeah. So, wait. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. That's the higher yeah. Chippewa. Yeah. That's the higher Chippewa. Higher Chippewa tackle. Was this a chip steak? Did they right watch the Chippewa tape and confuse uh, their Chippewa tackles? Up. Wow. Is, was Bruce Arians maybe, pranking the organization before leaving? Maybe they flipped a coin and said, let the chips fall where they may. I think maybe that's, that's what, what happened. Was. I think that's what happened. <laughs> I doubt it. Producer Yaya in the background nodding his head yes vehemently that that, in fact, is what happened. So um, we've got mm. that going for oh, us. Oh, okay. wow. Wow. Before N'Kobe Dean, Troy Anderson to the Falcons. That's a good pickup. That's disappointing. Man, the Falcons are sucking. I I mean, I think... I love that they pick. Got, yeah, it's a great pick. But you thought he might be there in the third. Uh, there's a chance. It's just so unpredictable for all FCS guys. Troy Anderson, the god. It's S-E-N, by the way, not S-O-N. Um, yes. If you, not everyone knows that. I'm right? sad. The dream died, yep. He would have been perfect. Then the it's Kobe fine. Dean dream is still alive. That, that is that true. Mean you know what the biggest problem with the Kobe Dean is? The injuries? No sure? RS score. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we, I can't contextualize his athleticism. I guess, yeah. He Maybe said, that's why he hasn't been drafted. Shove it up your raz. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's not bad. That's not bad. It's better than the last one you did. What a, and the one prior to that. The Nick Benito pun? That didn't work? Oh, five picks yeah. of the Broncos, and I think we're just going to have our hearts broken a lot. All right. Let's go through the best five. Everyone uh, this ready? Is a, this is a run on, like, now that... Troy Anderson's gone. Someone's probably going to pounce on Dean. No, no probably not. Nagobi Dean. Uh, De Dean clearly has something extremely something wrong. Yeah, there's something up. Homeboy might not be drafted. I mean, um, Jeremiah Wusu Kormoa last year just right, randomly right. falls. J -O -K. And, and then he did, played well. Oh, yeah. But he had the heart oh, thing, yeah. and it turned out to be fine. Or fine so far. Stop overthinking football. Draft good players. Yes. But, yeah, I mean, if we're... Five picks of the Broncos. We need a top six. One of those guys is available. Number one, if he's there, you take Dean. If he's not there, do you go Bernard Ryman? Right. Or Abe Lucas. Yep. Tyreek Woolen. I like do that you're like on, the eight, on his Abe train. I'd rather get like Benito or Drake Jackson. Right. Right. Let's keep the wool off our eyes on the Woolen pick. Mm. Um, but Leal, Drake Jackson. Leal, yep. Leal might be ahead Come of Drake on, Jackson. Leal? I think I could get behind Leal. Yeah, he's probably number three on my list. There's I can't. Troy I won't be Anderson. able to think about anything else until Nakobe Dean is either off the board or not picked. That's a legendary pick, Troy Anderson. Yeah, he's gonna be so <sighs> good. I just don't. I just don't know. I just don't know on about the what? Troy Anderson just physicality front. on the Falcons front. I just don't know. Also, Troy Anderson in a helmet. Doesn't look like what you would expect him to look like His pads are with a small. helmet off. Oh, he looks like Luke Keekley. They're showing him running the ball. Now they're showing him throwing a Cash. touchdown. Oh, so if, you you don't, getting a stop. if you don't at least for one practice throw him at running back just to see what happens, you're you're making a mistake. Oh, He's I love literally him. better than Taysom Hill at everything he yes. does, people are saying. Um <laughs> And oh my significantly God, so younger. I, don't, I can't watch these Troy Anderson highlights. Yeah. He would have been perfect. Don't Troy they already Anderson have a dope young linebacker, us. too? The Falcons? Not no. that I can think of. Not that we can think of, Ryan, but do. we'll look it up right now. The pick is in for the Vikings. We are just nearly five picks away now. Four now, right, if the pick is in for the Vikings. Ed Ingram. Ed Ingram, LSU. Yeah. Good thing you knew that. That's something. <laughs> what? That one stumped me. Defensive tackle. <laughs> yeah. Was it think? No. Nah. Can you guess why I knew who he is and where Madden. he's from? Neil Farrell. Drafted though. him a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. Of Neil Farrell is the more talented of the interior LSU guys. I'm really surprised. I mean, again, another mistake where the lower teammate being drafted yep. here. 
by a, a drunk front office, essentially. That's you're thinking maybe Rashawn Evans, big guy, Dion Jones, who is far Deion from Jones. young. Yeah, he's like he's like my age. He's a he grandfather is now. Oh, maybe um, then I'm not thinking of Deion Jones. Maybe I just think they had a dope linebacker, not a young one. He was dope for a minute. Mm -hmm. Very brief. Brief Very minute. Briefly. Brief minute. Brief minute. Brief minute. He's dope and mad. <laughs> He's fast. Um, okay. We're getting close here. So yeah. close. I'm glad Ed, Ed Ingram's off the board, though. Now we have Buffalo. Buffalo yesterday picked a corner. Kair Elam. I yep. broke it down for Zach Bai. Here at 60, they could go running back. Oh, they never yeah, signed Melvin Gordon like I told them to for months. Spiller would be great a guard, for them. by the way. Oh, really? Spiller would be great for them. He would fit perfectly. Isaiah Spiller. Yeah. I was thinking James Cook. Yeah. I mean, that's our... <laughs> that's your guys' little... Yeah. No, I love Spiller. <laughs> I love Spiller. But modern NFL receiving back, I think there's a little more value. Um, I mean... The Vikings come away with Lewis Seen, Andrew Booth Jr., Ed Ingram. Do we like? You know what I want here? Yeah, tell me. I tell just me, want the Broncos me. to make a pick where everyone goes, oh, George Payton did it again. Uh, give him one of these. George Payton's cooking. He's cooking. Or eating. George Payton's eating. Like, George Payton has so much respect already league-wide. I just want them to, like, if they were to take N'Kobe Dean, everyone loved that. Yeah. Right, for Sean McVay to do in, be doing the opposite of the Cole Strange reaction. Right. To be like, less, less. George drafted Drake Jackson, bro. He just got Russ and Drake Jackson in the same offseason. Insane, bro. Insane. How do you guys like my Sean McVay imitation? Rank it 1 to 10 for me, okay? And also, tell me how your weeks went. We'd love to hear how your weeks went. How's your week, Ben? Everyone's week no. is riding on this. It really is riding on this. It really is, Ryan. And the of Buffalo all the traded out to the Bengals. Of all the things that you could ride, what would be your white stallion that you're riding into the sunset with a let's rid three carved on the back you know on the ass on about the, the ass the player on the ass right right nicobe dean oh okay i'm we're recycling content at this well, point Bengals wouldn't trade up for dean right? i'm the only guy who my guy is still there no the Beng yeah. remember when the Bengals drafted like seven linebackers a year ago exactly loki will see yep and you know those other the others guys. yeah yeah the others yep you guys you guys were this is a along. tweet from matt miller Oh, boy. Who says, from a source, oh quote, boy. either Nakobe Dean has terrible medicals or is a serial killer. <laughs> I just don't get it. That's hilarious. All that to say he has terrible medicals. The <laughs> NFL actually, if the psychological test churns out serial killer, they're going to bump you up on the That's draft. That's true. Board, oh, jeez. So. Um, because they want that mentality, that Mamba mentality, you know. Um, well, he has Kobe in his name. Exactly. 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 So, um, yeah, AJ's dream was also Anderson. Yeah. Love that you guys are on the RAS train. He says the world is bad. <laughs> the world is bad. He must not have heard of Cole Strange being a first-round pick, though. So <laughs> It's actually a beautiful, lovely place full Someone of surprises. Someone in the comments said, check, check Nicobe Dean's crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> That's good stuff. Um... I'm anti. Well, they're not going to take N'Kobe Dean. N'Kobe nice. Dean ha will never play a snap of football <laughs> anymore, it sounds like. Uh, so. Don't do this. Cam Taylor Britt. This happens to me That's every who year. the Bengals are taking. I've taken months out of Mace's time. That was prediction for who the Broncos would take yesterday. Taylor That's Britt? Right. Cam Taylor Britt to the Bengals. Oh. Oh, okay. My daughter loves the Bengals helmet. Loves them. <laughs> yeah. Um, so here's what Albert Breer says about Nakobe Dean's injury history. Ankle. This was just different things that he dealt with in college. Uh, Ankle, foot, shoulder, wrist, 
pec groin hurts before pro day may need pec surgery post rookie year plus knee has wear and tear which like yeah he plays football um yeah, my but knee has wear and tear too. you're starting to see like that's a leak that's a leak from an nfl team saying he's too too many injuries too much tread off the tires so when you rolled the dice on that injury history now i'm not a doctor of course but I am angling for an honorary doctor. Also, I wouldn't have been surprised if the li- if the Broncos liked Cam Taylor Britt and will now trade out. Why was he taken? He was taken by the Bengals. Is what I just said three times. The Bengals at sixty took Cam Taylor, Cam Britt. Taylor Britt. Yes, which Mace predicted. Mace nope. predicted that the Broncos would take Cam Taylor Britt at sixty four. Okay. Okay. I, I didn't catch that that was the pick. I merely caught the May story. Which I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's that's interesting. Um, okay. Niners. 61. Niners at 61. They don't they didn't have a first round pick. So Big Henry time they Denver Broncos no trade partner, San Francisco 49. True. That's right, because John and John. Johnny one John called John. Johnny John John, and the other goes Johnny John John, and just back and forth, you know? <laughs> I can't see a reason why they would need to trade with each other here, but they could if they wanted just to. Just a couple of Stanford Valley girls. Um, look, Mel's best available is about to be just quarterbacks because he's got oh, all these yeah. agents and scouts giving him info for how to stack his board, and now look at him. That's a shame. Petit Friere high on his board, though, Henry. He should be. Yeah. I'm five star recruit. Was supposed to be a first round pick before this year. I know. If you like some sloppy Joes, you'll like Nick Petit Friere's sloppy tape, huh? Exactly. Actually, geez, when's the last time you had sloppy Joes? Wow. Uh, years and years. I would kill for a sloppy Joe right now. I'm pretty hungry myself. Got slopped up Once on Once again, stage. did not time my meals correctly today. Yep, oh, yep, no. yep, yep, yep. Screwed it up big time. A late lunch, Sando's in the car for your guy. So I feel great, though I would say... Late lunch? 20 ounces. Yeah. And then Sando's in the car to stay. Oh. I will say 20 ounces of mostly Stop milk that. Spilling. is a horrible idea. <laughs> That's not, not mostly milk. That's not good, good for color. your digestion. That's a splash. Not good for your digestion. Ryan, how do we feel about two Nebraska guys getting drafted in round two? Uh, Don't care. And a Rams guy. Oh, huh? there's another Broncos guy we mentioned How off many the board. Utah guys. 49ers go Drake Jackson. No. Oh, you wow. you were gonna get hyped about Jackson. No, I wanted Jackson. That would have been a good one. If the Broncos wanted Jackman? Jackson, they could have gotten him. Yeah, yeah they could have. We're just any Nick player Benito. that has gone off the board. The Broncos could have had. We're just Nick Benito guys now. In the last, you know, ten picks. Barring yep. So, <laughs> barring any changes, um, huh. now the Broncos are on the Twitter clock. Okay. Good. Are they? Good. Because Kansas City at 62 selected oh, already? Oh, okay. No, never mind. Never mind. Okay. Buffalo at 63, they're off the board. No. Okay. Oh, we're, okay. We're not quite on the Twitter board. False yet. alarm. We're almost on the Twitter clock. We're in the Twitter from being on the Twitter on clock. Broncos could have had Troy Anderson known. if they wanted him. They, I wanted him. Wow. Okay. Well, now you're making me feel sad. I don't know if they want anybody. This is what I'm saying. They might just go back. They trade might down. just trade down. Might, what if the Broncos trying to get just up? don't make any picks in this draft? <laughs> just trade back all the way into next season. It would Third, make for a that I kind of love that. Bit. I kind of love that. Right. It, had we known instead of going live on DMVR Broncos, we would have just gone live on DMVR Bits daily. Um, but yeah, it'd be disappointing. It'd be sad. It would ruin at least a month of content Henry and I have planned <laughs> for the draft That's podcast. Um, My J. It's possible. I wouldn't love it. On like, the, after Drake Jackson, it would feel like you came up a little short. Yeah, but yeah. On the topic of trade down, it might make sense. Dre has 13 possible 64 targets that are still on the board. So who are those? Uh, let's, we've got, let's go through them. <laughs> we've got Rashad something. Uh, I don't remember. Rashad, Rashad White? Rashad no. White. Okay, oh, Rashad White. Wait, are Rashad you sure? White. Okay. Oh, the running back. Running back? Yeah, I'm not 64. a candidate at 64. These were created before the Melvin signing. 
We don't. I don't know if we have time to go through this. Isaiah, Isaiah Spiller. Spiller. Okay, yeah. okay. You're just talking about oh, Tariq, Tariq Wollin. Tariq Wollin. All right, all right. Abraham Abe Lucas. Lucas. Honest, Honest Abe. Abe. Come oh, on. I misspoke. He's Roger off the board. McCurry's off. Oh, uh, okay. Travis Jones. Travis. We love that. We do. Northeastern uh, prospect. Did Greg Dolchich go already? No, no, he did not. No. Greg Dolchich. So Dolchich and Gabbana. That'd be fun. <laughs> Bernard Raymond. He's still available. He is still available. The Austrian. Nick Benito. Nick with a K. We love so that. Good. Chad Muma. Yep. You Colorado kid like Ryan. Leo Chanel. You do like Chanel. Chanel. Yep. Yep. We a little Coco baby. Chanel. The designer. Martin Emerson. Marty Amercy, you love to see that. <laughs> Kingsley and Agbare. Actually, oh, Kingsley's I, a stud. I man. like Kingsley. Kingsley's a stud. Channing Tyndall. Love me some Tyndall. I haven't seen Rashad these White. Yet. All okay. of these guys are still on the board. That's solid. So it basically, um, you heard it here first from super producer Kale. George Payton will be trading out of the second round. It's I basically official. I feel that. Yeah, I think he's seen the Ravens with all these fourth round picks, and George Payton is ready to have a have a fourth round shootout with the Ravens. <laughs> An old scouting duo that uh, I don't think the AFC is ready for, frankly. So, they, yeah. are, are they on the Twitter clock yet? No, they're not. Um, I haven't seen another pick not. since. If the Chiefs the make this pick, we oh. will be on the Twitter clock. No, 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 he won't. No, misspoke these because then the Buffalo Bills will be on the clock. Ever heard of them? No. Nope. Um, so, wait, who did the Bills select already? They didn't. Uh, they, uh, aside Kyrie from Kyrie Elam. Elam, didn't they select someone else? No. No, but we already had that James Cook Isaiah Spiller discussion. Yep. It was a good one. If you missed it, just rewind this very same video. Wait, let's get another. Sh uh, Spence, who's your shot spec? Your favorite prospect that if they take them, we're taking shots. Jeez, you really don't pick Nicobe Dean. Heightening his odds, sixty-two picks into the <laughs> I know, draft. I want to My take a God. shot. <laughs> Say someone. Yeah, uh, Henry, fill the void while he thinks. All right, he's okay. He's, he's all right. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm with you. But everyone's now shitting on his medicals. The dean of defense. Yeah. All right. Well, that that doesn't help us uh, or spread our. our it's either to pick. the point where the Broncos have to draft Nakobe Dean, or to the point where Nakobe Dean will never play football again. Merchel, do you have a shot spec? Other than Nakobe uh, Dean, for God's sake. <laughs> yes, Jelani Woods. Jelani go. got a new shot spec on the board. No. All right, okay, Ravens Ravens a shot spec. Could Let's we call go. Jelani Woods Jalele? No. <laughs> That's not trash, and it's giving fun nicknames to your friends. Jello sounds great. Um, mm, we'll I'm call him Jello. Jello. We'll call him Jello. That sounds like one of the ball boys, frankly. Um, Make picks. Okay, never mind. Oh, boy. We're so close. Kansas City picking safety Brian Cook. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we need that on camera. <laughs> Just when you said it, I imagine like some accountant, Brian Cook, just like at a desk getting a call, like you're the chief safety now. No, he's actually really, he tested well, Maryland safety, uh, maybe a little boomer busty, but they're going all in. They love drafting what? toolsy safeties. Yeah, you can only have so many. Yeah, uh, facts, man, facts. Uh, very. So we're about to go. Yeah. Two rounds, one quarterback. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan. And 25 receivers. So I figure that math out, My bro, mind bro. is absolutely blown. Yep. Yeah. How has yeah. no one rolled the dice on Malik Willis? It's a historically bad or quarterback. Or Sam guy. Howell. It's who wild was like to look through it, though. A top yeah. five pick to start the year is still just 21. But like, like Malik Willis is like a historically good athlete. Two picks away. Here's who's still on the board. I know, man. It's uh, it's feeling good. This All feels right, this like a updated. good board to move down. Nicobe Dean, I don't give a shit about the medicals. Let's move down a couple sports spots. Get my, my J. Sanders now. Mind you, where's Boyamafe? Found Boyamafe for me, Henry? He's he's off. He's gone. 
Well, I know, but on this list, oh. what number is he? Oh, uh, what, what number was he? 14. So, um... You should have. We should have had right, Nick Broncos Benito ahead of Trey McBride there. Broncos Wait, who the Bills are take? On Tell on us. The Bills take. Tell us. I don't know who the Bills take, but Twitter has told me that the Broncos are on the clock. Well, it's not the Twitter clock if we don't know every <laughs> player available to us, is it? I can't it's find not. the Bills pick. God damn it! Before we draft Brian Cooks or whatever. Uh, are they showing Kobe Bryant highlights? Yeah. Oh, no. Brian Cooks. Did I say Maryland and it's Cincy? Oh, boy. I've really gone name blind I don't with know. all these drafts. No one has said the Bills pick, but the Broncos are on the clock. Forget shout about the, the Bills. Uh, shout out the 500 people that are watching, hanging with us right now. Let's go. Yeah. Tell Shouts your friends to, all to come you. so you, they can see We're us. We're ready for the pick. Broncos pick. We Who's are. your shot spec? The, the prospect you would take a shot if the Broncos draft Every single person is going to say Nicobe Dean. From how silly... You will, Sally. Um, no, not everyone. All right, James say Cook, Nicobe. your boy to the Bills. Oh, you uh, right. called it. You were right. Called it. Called it. Wrong Georgia guy. <laughs> True. <laughs> Samir White should have been the All right. pick. No, he's saying Nicobe. So let's go to the best available. We'll forget about James Cook. Okay. It might be Dean, A. Lucas, Raymond. Now Tariq remember, Woolen, I would get excited about ahead all of, of those. Woolen. You should uh, Nick Benito should have been there. That's a my bad. Yeah. Series. Okay, Nick Nick Benito. There you go. The Marvin Leal. Remember, I've said for a few minutes here that feels like the most easy, obvious pick for the Broncos is Benito. Yep. It's a little Browning guess, and we'd win a bet. Those tackles too. Yeah, assuming he's listed at edge. Other they than could what? F us and list him at linebacker. Right? I would have a fit. Well, so is life, my friend. He's an so edge player. Life. All right. We're all sitting here, hearts racing, waiting to find out who will be the next Denver Bronco. And all we can do is wait. All we can do <sighs> is wait. The longer this goes, the more likely it is that they're trying to trade back. Yeah, uh, which, which at this hate. point makes sense. It does make sense. As we know, Broncos have four picks next year. Uh, yeah. They need more. Correct. They won't oh, get any comp. I've got one thing. They're going to wait. Going to wait. Just tell us. But not a trade. It's not just, reliable enough. Just tell us. Yeah, what, what are you what saying? What am I saying? Uh, Cliss tweeted it. There it is. Nick Bonito. As we've been saying for a little while, the Denver Broncos. No way. That's pretty dope. Mike Kliss listed him as an LB, and that pisses me off. But regardless of that, tell us about Nick Benito. <laughs> He's versatile. He yeah. does everything. He's super fast, bendy off the edge, but he can drop back in coverage too. Um, super productive on top of that. I and mean, I, I'm excited. Shout out to our friends over at Broncos Country Tonight who have been calling him Nick Casa Benito. Oh, which wow. Which is pretty good. Pretty good. What? Yeah. I've been wow. doing Nick Benito related puns this whole show. <laughs> yeah. You only throw that in now? I didn't want to use it unless he was a Bronco. It's, it was too good to use on non-Broncos. How so dare true. he? What an asshat, sir. Um, great so first we're step. We're that. Thanks, Ryan. And yeah, ben. thanks. <laughs> great first step. One of the mm -hmm. premier speed rushers in this draft class. Mm -hmm. And he's got a high motor. He's constantly coming. You like that versatility. It's not just, you know, the first step. And the bendiness, there's some sideline to sideline mobility and everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, what you don't like, it's he's a bit of a tweener almost yep. as far as edge g edge goes, and you know, really setting the the edge against the run. Uh, but he was pretty good at as it. a power defender. Like it, it's kind of just like, can he do it at the next level more so than like, did he do it? You know? Right, right, yeah. Four no. five four forty, yeah. That is fast for that position. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, your point's a good one, Hank, especially because Malik Reed's been really good <clears throat> rushing the passer, mm -hmm. but he's a pretty massive liability when it comes to defending the run. Mm -hmm. Benito can really do that. And him and Browning, I think, are kind of interchangeable. Yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. which is cool. It's I would expect Browning to continue, especially with this move now, to stay inside yep. where 
you know, the Broncos, we talked so much about Troy Anderson, Nicobe Dean, all these guys. Well, the Broncos can just have Baron Browning be that guy. What right. scared me so much is when they started talking about moving Baron Browning to the outside. This was like the worst thing I've heard all offseason. And now this, to me, protects that move. They're not going to screw around with that idiocy anymore. Mm -hmm. They're going to keep Baron Browning where he looked really good, allow him to develop there, allow him to get better in there. That's our, that's our N'Kobe Dean. That's our Troy Anderson, right. the freak right. athlete who can fly around from that off-ball linebacker position. You bring in Nick Benito, who is 6'3", 248, and runs a 4'5", 4 4. I mean, think, uh, think Noah Fant, you know, like that kind of athleticism and size combination. Mm -hmm. um, and really, really quick, and we talked about this on the draft or on the, the Broncos pod about, hey, do you have to get an edge rusher who can defend the run? And the answer is yes and no, based on the division you play in. Because the Chiefs don't want to run the ball. The, the Chargers don't even know that's available to them. And the Raiders only want to pretend they want to run the ball, but they really want to pass the ball. So while his weakness, I would say, comes against the run, it doesn't matter all that much in the AFC West where you're going to need to get the hell after the passer. I'm curious how much they'll use him just like as a straight edge rusher. Because obviously he's really good, incredibly productive. But I thought he was solid whenever they dropped him back in coverage too. And so mobile, I'm, I'm really curious how they use him. Because um, right. it could just be third downs he comes in as a pass rusher. It, it could be that you, you could even play him off ball a little bit, I feel like. Yeah, no, I do too. I do too. I think he could kind of be that... That off-ball guy from time to time and really be a factor as a blitzer from the yep. inside gives you a much different element from Jewel and a slightly different element from Browning, who's more like size and athleticism. This guy's like slippery. This yep. man has made a career of slipping blocks and finding ways to be slippery and get into opposing backfields yep. and be disruptive. Um Definitely some first round buzz for him. So to get him at the end of the second, I think is really, really good value. Watch yep. these highlights right here, Big Rye. Um, Let's watch some Nick Benito. He, Woo, yeah, slippery. there he is against the run. He's just slippery. He's he's agile. He's fast. And yeah, you're kind of creating a nice little, you know. There's the coverage that you were talking Browning, about. Browning, like, almost uh, a little spiral. They Jonathan Cooper, there. right. Right, I mean, his role wasn't that different from how they were using, like, Kenneth Murray of the Chargers a couple years ago at Oklahoma, oh, you know? Oh, I like that um, Who's much more of a classic off-ball guy. so mad. Why? Because I had Edge oh, or DL to go first pick for the Broncos plus oh. 350. That's we, tough. We, someone, Bro, anyone? That's amazing. Anyone watching the NFL Network broadcast, please tell me they listed him as Edge. I'm sure that's... He was not anyone's shot spec, I don't believe. Yeah. And now I'm down to take a shot anyway. 75, <laughs> you're going to have a quick turnaround. Um, so, you know, we got to stay dialed. It's just 10 picks. If okay. Yeah. I might take a quick. Anyone who watches the DNVR uh, Broncos podcast knows that this is the most important update of all. 931 RAS score. Let's go. He's a freak. He's kind of a tweener, though. I mean, top, top 100 athlete at the position. Which what? they're talking about defensive end here. Ryan, Talk to me, DraftKings. Ryan, NFL Network, which is what DK's based off of, listed him as an edge. Let's go! Yeah! Let's go! Burr, baby. Burr, burr, burr. That's a dub. Boop, 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 boop. NFL Network coming through. Understand. Let's go! NFL Network, you know ball. Yeah, you know ball. Yeah, that's, Congratulations. that's their motto. Um, but in, at RAS, uh, they're saying. 98th out of 1,400 defensive ends since 1987. That's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. That's crazy. You just, I mean, um, it's, it's just about the size. Like, if he was a little bit bigger, it'd be really easy to see him being really successful. You know? All right. Dre has to use the restroom. Who wants to jump in? Let's get Spence. Spence, hop oh, in oh, here. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. Oh, oh. I, I, I'm calling a lot. Wow. RG got his, uh, his FaceTime yesterday. Woo. I wow. want I want an instant reaction here. Maybe I'll just leave and then RG can take my place. What's going? Oh, look at that shirt. Fire. Oh wow! Shout out to RK for the shirt. Yeah, I was gonna say I got it for him. Um, <laughs> Spence, your instant reaction to the pick. I love it. Um, let's be real here. 
Randy Gregory's not playing 17 games. Uh, as sad as that Ooh. is to say, I don't think he's going to be able to do it. He's done it maybe once, twice in his career. Love, I love having Randy Gregory, but I think uh, Benito fills a, fills a, he fills a Benito for us. A Benito. <laughs> Oh, wow. that's nice. And, that's nice. And he was one of the best players at that position, still available. So, honestly, I I uh, I love the pick. I do love it. Yep. I I it's still crazy to me that the best player on the Georgia defense is still out there and nobody's picking him. But I'll t- I I like this guy. Yeah, it's clear. I mean, it's not as it. It's not like um, let's say like Justin Fields last year. I was like, why are the Broncos passing on this guy? Like, everyone is passing on Nicobe yeah, Dean. Yeah. I still want him, maybe 75. Again, I think the Broncos just told you that Baron Browning is their Nicobe Dean. Um, so maybe there's not a need there anymore. Benito, though, I really like, I mean, just watching what I've seen leading up to the draft and then just the, the highlights they showed here, he's also like Baron Browning. And you kind of mentioned that, Henry, like yeah. versatility all over the place. Maybe that's one of the things that uh, Ijiro Ivaro wants to do, which is like put a bunch of guys out there who could do a bunch of different things. You never know who's going to drop. You never know who's going to blitz. Yep. You never know who's going to, you know, be in man or whatever. Like there's a lot of different things you can do with this group of players. And it's just all week to week. Like who's available? Who are you playing? Where do you want each one of these different guys? Like they've just loaded up on chess pieces with all of those linebackers. Like uh, Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory, maybe a little bit stuck in a box yeah they kind of do what they do but outside of that like even jonathan cooper can drop back like i i, oh, I wouldn't I mean, want him to to do that but he can not much he can yeah but yeah I'll, I'll be curious to see just what this looks like and, and who's even in the rotation like is are we gonna see alex singleton i i don't know like i wouldn't be surprised if he's a starter i wouldn't be surprised if he's not even on the field yeah what's intri- interesting is like we talk so much about 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, and that's really like almost ancient thinking yeah. at this point. You can imagine a world in which the Broncos have Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory, Baron Browning, Nick Benito all on the field at the same yeah. time. And like, tell me, what is that? Is that a 4-3? Is that a 3-4? Is it a 5-1? I have no idea. And that's kind of, mm-hmm. I think, the goal here. Well, you could go a package where those guys are all standing up to on third down. Yep. And you have maybe like maybe DJ Jones on the on the field in at, at the, in the middle with his hand in the dirt, and then the rest of the guys are standing up, and you have no clue, like you said, with the versatility, what's yep. coming. Who's dropping back because they all have the ability to do that? Who's rushing the passer because they also all have the ability to do that? I think it's it's just like you said, versatility. Go the old New York Giants NASCAR package. You can have four DNs all rushing at once with the ability. One of those guys is getting one on one. Most multiple guys are getting one on one, so I, I love I love more edge rushers the better on this team. Yeah, Kale, we can't put this on the screen for the fans um, because of copyright concerns and all that. But would you mind pulling up some Nick Benito highlights for just us to watch and react to? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, well, no, we don't need to do it that way. We're not gonna like break it down play by play, but we can just kind of talk about what we're seeing here and what he does. He's just crazy productive. Like that, I, Can I you think tell that's us any of the stats. You want me to pull those up? 16 sacks in his last 21 games. All right, we've that's got really highlights yeah. for you guys. All right, we're watching a little Nick Benito here. Um, first of all, 11, is that available? It is. Oh, count me 11 in. 11 is going to be a dope number. That is, first of all, my favorite number. Bradley so there he is lining up stand-up, just smoking Texas on the offensive line. This is... This is exciting, and again, it was kind of what I told you guys, what, 20 picks ago? I'm like, it might all just be lining up for the Broncos to take Nick Benito. Yeah. Um, Another thing I love about this guy is he's played in big games. Like, yeah, OU plays in a fairly weak overall conference in the Big 12, but dude's played in college football playoff games. Like, it, this is not – like, the NFL is not going to – I mean – the NFL scares everyone at yeah. some point, whether they like to admit it or not. But the like this guy's ready to take the next step to the NFL. There's not not like you can't draft a good player from a small school. But when we look at highlights of linebackers tackling guys from Montana State yep. and things like that, like okay, cool. But this guy's here. He is against uh, Oklahoma State. You know, set, uh, seven ten matchup in the country, making plays in the backfield. And on third and goal, like it's it's bigger games against better teams. Kansas is not one of those, but <laughs> I I agree. Um, comes from a winning program. This is uh, I'm trying. Who's this comp? That's a good question. 
Um, I love comps. I will say I'm a sucker for comps. I love like, comps. I think too. those are my favorite thing. Like I don't care. You can tell me how fast this forty is and this and that. You give me a comp and I'm hooked to it. Well, I'm gonna see if I can find who NFL Network comped him to. Yeah, that's a tough question. Nick Benito. Yeah, I'm not gonna love this one. Yeah. NFL Network comped him to Vic Beasley. Yeah. More like Vic Bustley. <laughs> yep. Yep. But yeah, right, and he yeah. went at what? Yeah, I was gonna say top five or top ten. Um, so over the last two years, fifteen and a half sacks for Nick Benito, um, which is really when he just started playing. Um, very productive in that regard. Not too much on the tackles. Uh, he also had three fumble recoveries last season. Nose for the ball. Mm -hmm. This is exciting. I could watch these highlights all day. I, the 11 is doing a lot for me. It's moving it. It's yeah. moving it for me. <laughs> Just so fast. So fast. All right, Spence, what should they do next? Well, I think... Or what do you want them to do I, next? What do I, I, I think you got to go back to the offensive side of the ball, and I think this has been talked about before, but offensive line is a sem not a need right now, but this, this team doesn't as, a, you know... Zach was saying yesterday on the show, he said, when you look at this team, like where is it, where are there, where do they have a deep need? And they don't, and they really don't. There's not a glaring position in the starting 22 of if everyone's healthy, starting week one, where they're like, okay, you have a hole here. Like we've had a hole at quarterback for the last four, six, seven, whatever years. Uh, I, I'd like them to go offensive line because I love Billy Turner. I wish they would have never let Billy Turner go. I made that very clear for the last couple of years. He could be our starting right tackle this year. There's competition there um, with Calvin Anderson, but a guy that you can allow to grow and allow to because let's be let's be real here as well. The last two years, how many times has the have the Broncos suited up the same five at offensive line? Not yeah. once. <laughs> Moody's got time. Reisner's got time. You know, all these guys are playing. So if you get a guy like Bernard Raymond and he sneaks in at right tackle because Billy Turner can't play or Billy Turner has to go over to left tackle if Garrett Bowles gets hurt, something of that nature, I think is where I would go next because I feel like other than, I mean, you can, other if there's not a player, let's put it this way, if there's not a player that's just wildly dropping again and you can just snag a best available where you don't necessarily need him, I feel like offensive line is the, is the next spot to go and just add, add a guy that can be a swing tackle, add a guy that can start at right tackle day one for you if he ends up being a standout at camp, you know, on a rookie deal, like, if we had Bernard Raymond and he ends up starting at right tackle for us, that doesn't hurt us because you have Billy, T Billy Turner as a swing tackle. You have Calvin Anderson who can play swing tackle too. Just creates a lot of competition. We know competition makes the best out of players. Yeah, I'd, I'd throw corner and def <laughs> defensive line in too. I think uh, what Treek Woolen's still out there. Like if he's still there, I think that that'd be an awesome pickup. Somebody who would rotate in this year, long term, maybe take over that job from Darby. Um, and then defensive line, like they're just short on bodies. Like they just need more guys who can get out there. And like DeMarvin Leal sitting right there, that would be another impact player. Wasn't Leal considered a first round prospect at one point? Oh, we've we talked about him at nine to the Broncos. Yeah. And it, it's just been this off season. He's getting he was super productive last year. Eight and a half sacks as an interior defensive lineman. Wow. Yeah. That's the that I mean, we talked about this yesterday with um Jordan Davis. But it's like if you get pressure from the interior you're going to wreck everyone's game plan. Mm -hmm. So, I like Leal. I really like uh, Woolen, obviously. Yep. A lot of options here. We, should we, all right, we're, sw we're swapping you out. All right. Spence, you're getting a long run here. I'm getting a run. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Going around the track a couple times. Trey, did you have any, um, any more bathroom thoughts on Nick Benito? Or is no. that why you went to the bathroom? No, I like I, – I was talking to Kale in the bathroom and actually was able to – to gain some clarity. Um, Wait, we were at. We were just asleep at the wheel there. I uh, okay. I don't know who was behind the production desk while that was going on, but um. Yeah, he's a speed rusher. You know, he's not gonna have maybe the upside of some of the guys who are gonna be a little rawer, or have more of the measurements, but he's that kind of prospect that gives you. The trait you're investing in, his ability to get after the passer and disrupt the opposing backfield, that he already has. That's the known commodity he brings to the table. It's like having a 
a wide receiver with good hands. You know, it's like you can rely on that one trait to be ready and help you right away. And um, that's kind of where you're going to have to rely on. And, you know, you got to like that young rotation of Browning, Cooper, and Benito, regardless of what they figure out with Chubb. And, you know, hopefully Randy Gregory can be healthy and give them what do you most of how do you see Ivaro using the pack of kind of weapons that he has a lot of versatility we were just kind of talking about it as like there's no such thing as three four four three anymore especially yeah. when you have guys yeah. like baron browning and benito that you could put out yeah. there it's like where what do you even classify them as when they're out there right and that rams defense the last couple of years has had a, a good amount of guys like that whether it's vaughn Dante Fowler prior to that, right? They loved or, uh, they took Leonard Floyd. They took the Broncos guy uh, who they wanted to make a hybrid Justin Hollins. Oh, uh, the kid from yeah, Oregon. Right. Yeah, they Justin made him Hollins. look good. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so that actually seems like one of the front offices that most Likes was kind of trying to mold that hybrid. I think when and you say tweener, they hear hybrid. Yeah, oh, 100%. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. Like In the NBA and NFL drafts, Tweener and hybrid is it's all a matter of perspective. It can really be a, a a quality that you praise because it gives you more versatility, or it can be a mess because you don't have an exact role to fit them in. But as you were saying, run defense isn't going to be as much of a problem for the Broncos because their best run defense is going to be Russell Wilson and the offense yep. nursing a lead in the second half. That's what allows you to go after the passer, and that's what all these AFC West teams have really embraced and gone full-blown into. Everyone's adding pass rushers. Everyone's adding corners. Everyone's adding wide receivers, and everyone's adding quarterbacks, the one team that did it. I mean, you're going all in on the modern game, and Nick Benito just feeds that even more. Well, and the other great thing is he doesn't he doesn't come in. He fills a, need, a semi-need for the Broncos, yeah. but he doesn't come in and need to rush the passer as yes. edge number one from yes. day one. Yes. He's behind at least two guys, right. and then depending upon how well he plays in camp and how well he shows out in the preseason, mm-hmm. he's probably still behind Jonathan Cooper right. as a just straight-up edge rusher. Right. So he comes in, he learns from Greg, Gregory, he learns from Chubb, and let's, be, let's face it, those guys haven't been healthy a ton, right. so right. maybe it doesn't hurt them to go through the first eight to ten weeks of the season getting 60 to 70% of the edge rushing snaps. Yeah, there's so much you can do here, and I think the Broncos are only going to continue to pick defenders. Now, you could go offensive line, but I think they're going to stack or up. Or tight end. Huh? Or tight end. That's like the one spot on offense where you you need another body, right? I mean, I think George Payton is like me, and we'll see that 10.0 RAS score for Jelani Woods and could be tempted. Um, I just think and he's that dropping, so. I think with especially with uh, you know them changing things up on the defensive side of the ball, let me ask you this, Dre. If they wanted to upgrade Josie Jewell, who would they go with? Yeah, I mean – I don't you're not think hearing a lot. Like when you all, talk about all of these exciting linebackers, most of them are, are off still board. off the board. Yeah, there's still off some the on the board that we feel good. Like uh, since the Benito pick, only Azamoa Benito's teammate has gone off the board as far as off-ball linebackers, I believe. So you still have Chad Muma, Channing Tindale. I think Chad Muma. Chad just Muma went. just went to the okay. Jags. to the Jags. Nicobe Dean still available? Yes. But wouldn't you? I know. I would you put Nicobe Dean in that role? You give him the green dot. Is that the guy that he like? You you replace Josie Jewell with him? Oh, a hundred percent. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want him to be the quarterback of your defense? I kind of expected if they were to pick him, he was going to be the second guy. Mm-hmm. Could be, but Move you're him around a little. You're bit. grooming him into that role. Like, that's why you're buying into N'Kobe Dean is for him to be the quarterback of your defense. Okay. What he might lack in, like, raw RAS, he's going to make up for instincts and smarts, you know. Interesting. Okay. And I would love that. Tyndale is teammate. I'm really high. And that's the same thing? I think his tape is better than Quay Walker, Tyndale. He just played fewer snaps, but he's very Troy Anderson-y or Chanel-esque where he's big. He's a thumper downhill, but then he tested off the charts, and you see the athleticism sideline to sideline and stuff. All right. We are five picks awake. Is there, is there any chance we can get an updated uh, board? 
as we go through here. Enough They're coming in quickly. So available. Muma goes at 70. Um, so actually we're four picks away from the Broncos being back on the clock. All right. I said it before. I'll say it again. I wouldn't be surprised to see them trade back here. Here it would make a ton of sense. I mean, all these points. They have to get picks for next year at some point. So if they yeah. don't do it now, I'm going to say it on their next pick. Eventually, <laughs> they are yeah. trading back today. Um, I, I'm very, very confident in that. Unless they plan on trading picks for players during the season or pay players for picks during the season, which would kind of shock me. Um, it's not likely, at least. So, you know who's also available at inside linebackers? Christian Harris out of Alabama. Now, he's definitely... Uh, your like true middle linebacker, right? Right, more of that classic thumper. Yeah, yeah. You have to. Uh, do you? I wonder what the the track record is it, on teams taking the the N'Kobe Dean of the draft. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always one mm. guy who everyone likes mm -hmm. who falls, and some BS pops out of him like middle of the middle of the round. I wonder how those guys pan out. For the most part, it doesn't work out. One guy who I do remember it really working out for is Carl Lawson, pass rusher out of Auburn. Yep. Uh, medical was just disgusting since he drafts him, and he turned into a big-time pass rusher and got paid uh, a couple off-seasons ago. Well, a little, a little bit of a comparison. This guy had legit bad, you know, medical. What well, medical wasn't only bad, but he was hurt. But when the Broncos took Jake Butt. I mean, that was a yep. consensus first ra late first round tight yep. end pick. Yep. They That's get him in the one. fourth. We're all thrilled. Th you know, two or three picks before George Kittle, and that turned out. You know, this is a different regime, different guys making the picks now, but I there's there's got to be, and I was going to ask you guys this. I was thinking about this. Where is the point, like how many rounds or how many picks behind where – fully healthy a player's graded let's say he's the 30th overall prospect overall and and he gets to 60 70 80 where's mm -hmm. the point where you kind of not forget the medicals but you mm -hmm. you kind of say all right mm -hmm. at this point this player is just so good when healthy that you have to take him or is there not a point for some is it team to team yeah i think it's team to team and i think it's how hard is that medical red flag um from your medical staff Right, and there are the certain problem. players yeah. who the medical staff will say, do not draft this guy. Right. Straight up. So you don't even, like, when they're looking at their board like we are right now, if we could go back to it, like, if N'Kobe Dean got that bad of a grade from the med, he's not even on the board. They just took, yeah, he's gone entirely. So when their pick comes up, they're not even thinking about him, uh, unless they're, like, watching Twitter, seeing everyone freak out about it. Um, but quickly here, Bears go Velas Jones. Okay, speedster out of Tennessee. We saw him at the Senior Bowl. Big or small? Medium. Okay, because I was going to say they already have... More like the Baylor kid. More like his size. You know, like a speedster oh. in the 6'2 range. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Um, all right, we were, gonna, we were about to go to Zach, but now mm. this turnaround was so quick that he's going to wait until he hears from both of these next because they just got off the phone with Nick Benito. But they're about to have another yeah, pick here. Yeah, they're about to pick here. Uh, yep. So he'll be back on the phone there. Okay, here's. Does feel like the real value is at interior defensive line right now. Guys Travis like Jones. Travis Jones. Cameron Thomas out of San Diego State would be really nice. Perry and Winfrey, one of the real stars of the Senior Bowl at Oklahoma. You know, double up on Sooners. Could be a really... Um, Strong pick there. It's kind of crazy. Honest Abe to me. is off the board to the Seahawks. Ooh. Abe Lucas. Charles Cross and Honest Abe. That's that's fine. You work have right to there. protect Drew Locke, right? <laughs> plus, plus Kenneth Walker. Yeah. Protect Drew Locke at all costs. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Or Geno Look, Smith. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> wild that now we're in the early third and we're still. Malik, Sam Howell. I was just going to say, is there... My is Sam there, Howell bet could still hit. Is there a run on that at some point? Like, once one... Like, you think all these teams are just sitting around. They have a quarterback on their board. They're, they're not worried about somebody taking him. But all of a sudden, a Malik goes. And then it's like five of, five of the next ten guys are all quarterbacks. No, Here, I'm not sure a run really happens at this point. Here's um, another uh, N'Kobe Dean leak 
Per I source, think there's Kobe urgency. Dean declined surgery on his shoulder, and it's now a major concern slash medical red flag. So I think if that were to be true, that means like he didn't want to get the surgery because that would make, you know, a big stink. And then it was uncovered and that came out and now it's a bad look. It is crazy to me just watching the national championship and watching that guy fly around that a team that doesn't have a need for him right away still hasn't taken him like a, a team. Well, it's that not has, like he's hurt right now and can't play. Yeah, it's it's. I, I, but essentially. Huh? Essentially. Yes, yes. I mean, if he has to get the surgery yeah. and that's going to hold him out a year, that's changing things a little bit. But, like, the Broncos, they have a guy there. But we, Like we talked about earlier, he's a passable. Yeah, but that's fine. Again, that's not degenerative. No. We know the problem. We know the consequences. We know the timeline of a surgery and a recovery. And then it does become a a cost value equation like what Spence is describing of, okay, we wouldn't have drafted him in the top 50 because he won't be able to contribute in the first year. But by pick 75, it starts to become worth it. I mean, didn't the Bron the Broncos have some pec issues already, right? Like Josie Jewell last year, torn pec out for the mm -hmm. season. Alexander Johnson, same thing. So maybe they're looking at this Nicobe Dean thing and they're like, we don't, we don't mess with pecs. We're not chess guys anymore. <laughs> the, the NFL... <laughs> The NFL um, agreeing with me. Jelani Woods over Greg Dolchich. Uh, 73 to the Colts. Oh, wow. <coughs> wow, the Colts. The place Trey McBride was supposed to go. I kind of would have preferred those two flip. Trey McBride to the Colts. Jelani Woods to the, to the uh, cards. Mm, interesting. Cards got a lot of weapons. That is... That is an offensively minded football team. Yeah, yeah. If only uh, Cliff could figure out how to call plays situationally. And also not just completely shit the bed after week eight. <laughs> that would be good. It's an early, he's, a, he's a warm weather kind of guy. Yeah, he needs Roman swipes. <laughs> yeah, peaks too early. He he peaks peak way too, too early. early. It's so um, true. All right. Anything else you want to chime in, Spence, before we bring. Uh, Henry back on here. No, I, I, uh, I'm excited for this next pick. Add another player to this team without a lot of needs right now. Just like add, add like they're the Broncos should be more of best player available Absolutely. in my opinion. So Absolutely. All right. We'll see if that best player available is Nicobe Dean. How about that? Because that was my dream pick for 64. Kind of crazy if you get him at 75. Well, we'd take shots. We would take shots. I, I still feel that. like we should just take shots. We should take shots because Trey McBride went to an all-city school. Or an all-city school. All city. <laughs> not, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. Yeah, I mean, if we just want to take shots, we can do that. Um, no rules, yeah. Yeah, no rules. Lawlessness. Oh. Henry, any, uh, any fresh thought? You got a chance to clear your mind there? Yeah, I ate a little piece of a muffin. Um, I, think, I think they'll go tackle. I think it's a tackle here. I think there's with Pettit Ferrer off the board. You still have Raymond there. Raymond would be tremendous. He would though. be like it. It almost just seems too simple at this point. Yeah. Unless we're missing something with him. Draft Twitter, me included, would love this draft if it was Nick Benito, Bernard Raymond. Yes. That's first round value right there. Absolutely. Hank, did you see Jelani Woods to the Colts? Oh, really? Seventy-three. Yep. That's a good fit for them. So we're I'm almost on the Twitter like clock. Broncos are, as you said that. How, the Broncos Hotlanta? went on the Hotlanta take? Oh. oh. <clears throat> I didn't realize Abraham Lucas just went. Okay. Yep. Yep. Honest so Abe. Lucas and then Jelani Woods are the next two okay. picks. Yeah, we're so finding Lucas out about the Broncos going on the Twitter clock before we're finding out on Twitter what the, the Falcons did or what Come on, guys. the previous teams are doing. It's kind of important to know who's unavailable. Oh, Desmond Ritter to the Falcons. Makes sense. Dang. Malik, that's a perfect fit with uh, is better with Mar Mariota though. Yeah, yeah, he seems like a good one to learn behind Mariota. Yeah, man, that's a uh, that's a bummer for my Sam Halibut. Um, mm. but he Ritter could have been value had on, that value. I think it was plus one fifty. I huh. think for plus four hundred. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Wow. All right, we are. 
seconds away from finding out who the Denver Broncos are going to select. After that, do I have time for a bathroom break? What's our I next break? Yeah. I think you do. I think you do. 20 yeah. picks. That's right. a big one. That's yeah, a big one. We'll, yeah. We'll swap gonna step Orion in. for Orion. So Ooh. Seahawks now have Charles Cross, Abraham Lucas, Kenneth Walker, and I'm missing one of their picks. Boye Mafe? Boye Mafe. Yeah. Any buyer's remorse there? Nick Benito ranked ahead of Boye Mafe. It is always Andre. weird to put names to the picks. But no, no buyer's remorse. There is no, we're just comparing, literally uh, no buyer's remorse. We're just comparing classes, Ryan. You know, I get just that. a comparative study. You have study. to use a different term other than buyer's remorse. We got Russell fucking Wilson. He's solid. Buyer's remorse isn't Yes, it is. It's buying something term. and then thinking, did I make the wrong, right decision here? Yeah, exactly. You got Russell fucking Wilson. It's having a thought, you know? <laughs> um... But if you go beyond the having Russell Wilson, look at what they have, you know. Yeah, they got some decent players who will never win a championship there. Yeah, no, I mean, I think Cross, Lucas, good players. Kenneth Walker, nice running back. Um, mm -hmm. Shit, I keep, oh, Boye Mafe. But, yeah, that's just not, it's a very ho-hum team. It's similar to that Broncos trade. It's. Which was a very ho hum return for them. This is uh, this is James Palmer speaking to an NFL source said, despite the medicals on Nakobe Dean, teams are now expecting that this is the range where you don't care yeah. about it anymore. I mean, just in time for the Broncos. Yeah, I mean, two linebackers on the Twitter would be clock. A wild start. Okay, here we go. So Here's more. Already. More on Nakobe Dean. As dealing with a torn pec and a meniscus issue. And then where does he need the surgery? So it's probably a red shirt year. I yeah. think torn pec is the quote unquote shoulder thing we heard about. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I red shirt years suck. Yeah. A tremendous you're trying just to win now. entering the beginning of your Super Bowl win window. You can do a red shirt year you with can. a great player. And I guess it's also true that, you know, Raymond, if you draft him, he's not gonna see this the field this year probably anyway. If you're trying to win the draft, though... I was finally right. Man. The Broncos are trading back. Okay. Makes sense. That does not help my I was going to say, N'Kobe Dean <laughs> and Bernard Raymond could have really, like, set this thing off. Yeah. Um, do we know where they've traded down to, Big we Rye? We don't know where they've traded down. We will update as... We know. Trading okay. down, I will guess that they trade down to 80 and pick up a fifth next year. Yeah. Okay. I, I feel like if you're going to trade down, you got to shoot for like a third next year. But I guess you'd have to go down to like the fifth this year to do that. Yeah. So maybe that's not worth it. Straight swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it basically would be. Hmm. Huh. I wonder what this says about how the Broncos feel about just where things are right now. Or is this just purely what I've been talking about for weeks, which is you have four picks next year. There's no one you could actually love that much here. If you if you loved them that much, you would have picked them at 64. Yep. They got their guy at 64. You just say, hey, we have to get up. It's the Texans coming up. Uh, do we know where the Texans are coming from? Hmm. Let's go see where the Texans' original pick was. We'll probably find out in just a second. Five so they picks go to, back 80. to eighty. Yep. Like I said. Jeez, yep. man. And let's see what they pick up in the trade. Drum roll, please. Next fifth. <laughs> Texans are taking Christian Harris here, which is interesting. Wow. Okay. That's a good. Okay, that's okay. a good value. Yeah. Good value. From eighty, moving down five spots. Not bad with the guys remaining. At the interior, D.A. line, Raymond, Nakobe Dean, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. The Broncos get, I love it, um, a fifth this year. So that's Almost had it. That's Almost three had it. fifth rounders now? Yeah. And two fourth rounders. And, again, that's the meat and potatoes of this draft. I told you, Ryan, yep. George wants to be like the Ravens right there, wheeling and dealing at the top of day three. So While they go, we're all waking up gingerly. So they go 75 for 80 and 162. I mean, okay. it's a really good trade. 
Yeah. Doesn't doesn't that yeah. get them to ten picks in this draft too? That does get them to the magic number of ten for yeah. George Payton. Everyone always says he's never said that's a magic number for him, but it it has proven to be a magic number for him every single time. And remember, that doesn't necessarily mean ten selections. He just likes yeah. to have ten picks to do whatever the hell he wants with. Yeah, I, they they've got to add more draft capital for next year at some point. I would think so too. Yeah, and that might just be end up being an extra fourth, an extra fifth. You know, yep, I mean, it's totally. kind of what you can do. Um, yeah, like you pick them. up the fifth this year, so you can trade it if you don't have anybody you like there. I already warned everyone that I'm going to say this every single time the Broncos are about to pick. I wouldn't be surprised if they trade back again right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. I agree. Do we know who the Texans selected here? It's Christian Harris. Oh, uh, that's right. All right. Okay. Let's talk. Let's have a real buyer's remorse Their conversation. Draft's been here. Okay. Buyer's remorse. You gave up seventy-five. They got Christian Harris. You no, already got no. a linebacker, though. Yeah. Like you just. I like the off-ball linebackers that remain better than Christian Harris. You know the uh, Tyndales of the world. Um, there's someone I'm blanking on. Kobe Dean. Sure. No, Kobe Dean, of course. <laughs> and Chanel. And Chanel. Yeah. I think those are all right out there. I think interior O line could be addressed. Dylan Farum, um, out of Memphis, Jamari Salier, who's my guy, Justin Schaefer, Darren Kennard, those kind of guys could be added. There's some returnability that you could add. Mm -hmm. um, and still, all the tight, tight ends that aren't Jelani Woods or Trey McBride remain. Still lots of talent on the interior D-line. Travis Jones, DeMarvin Leal, Cameron Thomas. Yeah. DeMarvin Leal would, would be, be a great pick. a slam dunk. Yep. And Tyreek Woolen really stands out. And I could mm – -hmm. you wouldn't have to twist my arm to double up on edge either with a guy like me, Jay Sanders, still on the board. Could never have enough edge. That's what John Elway used to always say. And now George Payton says it every time he gets the opportunity to as well. Yep. Yeah. Well, they're not wrong. Honestly, yeah. I don't know what you do here. All right, tackle we're basically stands out. in for, like... Tackle stands out. Bernard Raymond's still available. Layout, Think about yeah. this tomorrow. And Lael. Travis Jones off the board of the Ravens. Okay. Um, those motherfuckers. I know. That's Every such a time. good pick. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, Are they going all defense? E no, Linderbaum. Oh, that's right. No. Yep. So, just look at the spacing here. It's pretty nice. The Broncos here on out, 64, 80, 96, 115, 116, 152, 162, 206, 232, 234. Essentially just like yeah. one at like just a perfect space. And now there's yep. that 115, 116 there. I bet you they trade out of one of those to get stuff next year for uh -huh. sure this time. And I don't I don't think there's room on the roster to use all those picks anyway. Yeah, like George Payton doesn't care about cutting draft picks. That's true. Just get all. The, he likes to take a bunch, Figure find the good out. ones, cut the rest, huh. wow. or trade them like he did with whatever his Carrie case Vincent. is. <clears throat> Carrie yeah. Vincent somehow That's drafted right. him with yep. a seventh, traded him for a sixth before he did anything. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah, incredible. Sorry, Eagles. Um. I don't know. All right. Where are we on the Twitter draft clock? At a corner. So Travis at, Jones gone at 76. So we're to 77 on the, Colts on the at 77. Did the Colts? Uh, yeah. The Colts went 73, 77. Okay. The Colts. I like layout better than Jones anyway. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, he has the premium trait that you want. Yep. It is very disappointing that we can't do the Jones, Jones, and Jones uh, defensive line. Mm, yeah. That is, is sad. That is sad. It would have been sick. Alec Pierce and Jelani Woods, the picks for the Colts so far. I worry this might be Bernard Raymond. Mm. Could that see does that. feel right. Mm -hmm. Feels Coltsy. Feels Coltsy. Though they do like length. That's the one thing he lacks is the arm length. So maybe he does drop a little bit. Um, in Cleveland, at 78. They took Martin Emerson already. Yep. They could use a little more receiver help, right? Yep. Oh, did they trade out of round two? Oh, so the Browns have only selected in round three yep. yet. So, okay. And then Chargers, then Broncos. So if Raymond, let's say Raymond mm -hmm. goes to the Colts, receiver, uh, 
David Bell, maybe, maybe to the Browns. Or like a speedster like Calvin Austin, something yep. like that. Okay. Uh, so what, at, what's, what else 79? is 79? What was what, that? What teams have picked 79? Uh, is that Chargers next? Or is there one in between? I think that's Chargers. And then Chargers. Yep, and, and what then do the Chargers want to do? We've gone Zion Johnson, and I can't remember if they selected someone earlier. They didn't. That's their only selection mm. so far. Leal would be a sneaky good fit there. Uh, that's another Raymond spot, too. Yep. Yeah, and I mean, could they be the team that rolls the dice on a Kobe Dean? Yeah. Could they take a Tyreek Woolen, you know? The thing about the Chargers is uh, Staley, right? Their head coach. Mm -hmm. There it is. Was Wait, Wilson? we're somehow ahead. Oh, Evero. All right. Jordan Schultz said the Vikings are selecting Raymond with the 77th pick. Maybe he meant the Colts or maybe they traded. They could have traded. They could have traded. Okay. The Vikings select Raymond. And you said Dulcich? Dulcich to the Chargers? At 79. Okay. Potentially. He's saying potentially? Potentially, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that'd be a good pick. Yeah, it would. That'd be a good pick. We're starting to get in the range. Tyreek Woolen? I can't believe yeah. that dude's still here. Yeah. He could be a Bronco for sure. Uh-huh. Ooh. That would be exciting. I think Woolen, I guess with Ryman gone, you look at Woolen and you look at Liao as the two that really stand out to me. What if you went with uh, Nicobe Dean? Nick, ben <laughs> Nick Benito's <laughs> college teammate, Perry and Winfrey. I would He's love good. Yeah. that. Yeah. I would love that at this point in the draft. Nicobe Dean would also be an option. Nicobe Dean, yeah. <laughs> I'd like Dulcich. Um, I would enjoy Dulcich. I don't at this like point. Dulcich. Why not? No? I don't. I, I shouldn't say I don't like him. He was just my third favorite tight end, so that makes it hard. Mm. Dulcis has the best mustache in the draft, though, so it's important. Huh. He does also have a sweet mullet, or like not even like a mullet. It's like a Fabio hair. I'd someone describe it as a Polamalu cut. I could see that. It's a more like pulled back. That's a hell of a comp. I'm also realizing as this happens, the the draft itself, day two, not too far from being over. Yeah, no, we're, we're getting close. How we're many, getting close, Big Rye. How many picks? Um, the Broncos 20? still have two more selections. They have two make. more selections, so Big Rye's anticipating it all. Oh, 96 um, would be the last pick in the third round before compensatories, if there are. 105 picks. Wait, did I do that wrong? 105. No, yes. no, you're right. You're right. 96, sir. That's 32 okay, times yeah. three. Yep. All right, all right. I psyched myself out there. I don't know. Don't you psych anyone. Um, 77 Vikings? Come on. We need more accurate info. Give it to us. Hmm. What's funny is if someone's draft board right now, let's say it was the Steelers, was Malik Willis and N'Kobe Dean, I would be like, man, they're killing this. Yeah. Both yep. of those guys are still available, so yep. maybe I'm just an idiot. <laughs> well, that's I'm, what's funny about this draft stuff, you know. Yeah. It's uh, like I have to give my takes ahead of time to give unbiased opinions. But then once you analyze the draft, I've really had to teach myself that my opinion's the least important thing mm -hmm. of this. What's interesting and important is why did the teams – think this way to make this a leap right what are they seeing that's leading them to these conclusions that's what i find interesting um so are we certain that he was listed at edge on that pick and we're gonna get our money is it not has it hit the account yet i haven't checked I'll so check. i'm oh man there's raymond taken yeah by the colts by the colts not the Vikings. We were right. Some are saying a cult hero, Henry. Wow. Um, is it? Wow. So they got Jelani Woods and, I mean, and Raymond. That's a good draft. That is. That's a good draft. With Matt Ryan. It has not hit my account yet or not. So we don't know yet. 
Oh, boy. Uh, I did catch myself looking at these receivers. It's too soon, but you're starting to get to the range. Like Kyle, Kyle Phillips at some point. Kyle? Justin Ross at some point. Khalil Alex Shakir. Wright to the Browns. Khalil Shakir. Alex Wright. Okay. Not to be confused with Nick Wright. Not to be Let's confused. Not. What, Let's what, not talk about what him. What position in school is Alex Wright? You know, that's your job. Uh, I just read the tweets and then react. Alex okay. Wright. Okay. Um, Alex Wright, that's a good pick for the Broncos, you know. It's the Browns. No, I'm saying it's great for the Broncos oh, that oh, oh. Alex Wright is going ahead of them. Outside linebacker from UAB. Mm. Blazers. Yep. <laughs> Blaze Hunters on the water, of course. Um, okay. We're almost on the Twitter clock, Big Rye. Very we are close. almost on the Twitter clock. I will alert you as soon as that happens. We just need the Los Angeles Chargers. Which we're probably going to hear about the Broncos being on the clock before we hear about done. what the Chargers are doing. That's right. That's right. And Henry's been on it. Henry's guessing all of these exactly right, except for Alex Wright. I'm a little he bit afraid. He was Alex of, wrong on that I one. Was Alex wrong. I'm a little bit afraid of Tariq Woolen to the Chargers. Yes. Would not yes. like. Yeah. Would not like. 10 out of 10 would hate. And yep. that's that would be the Broncos' fault. So Tyreek will. Broncos okay. are on the Twitter clock. We still don't know what the Chargers. Nightmare are. scenario for the Chargers to pick: Nicobe Dean or Tyreek Woolen. Woolen, at this point, Dean. Yeah. There we have Kenneth Murray. But I mean, like them how drafting how a guy with injury issues would be highly uh, advised against. Honestly, yeah. the Chargers should take Isaiah Spiller here. They should. They absolutely should. Oh, DeMarvin should. Leal, too. Yeah. Yeah. We Oh, JT Woods. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. We are at that point in the draft where we get a little surprise -y. Everything gets yeah. weird. A little surprise here and there. JT Woods to the Chargers. Who had they drafted thus far, Henry? Well, JT Woods. Just Zion <laughs> Williams. Not Zion Williamson. <laughs> Zion Johnson. Oh, right, right, right. Zion He's Williamson would play a mean offensive line. Probably picked the wrong sport, let's be honest. Especially with his all beignet diet he's on now. I think actually as a, Baylor as a guard. Baylor for JT Woods. Baylor. Safety. We're in a four three six. Second Sheesh. safety. Oh, but right. Everyone runs four threes in this year's yeah. combine. Second safety to be drafted out of Baylor. That's what I have for you on JT Woods. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean a workout warrior. A workout warrior. You're in the woods on this one. I. Well, thank goodness for Ryan to bring the humor <laughs> to the mix because I would have. I would truly have been Alex wrong and in the woods on these last two picks. So. All right. Uh, we are let's do it, big guy. I got an update for you. Oh. The Kobe <laughs> Dean. No. It's a trade down. No. No. Greg Dolchich. That's a good pick. Dolchich and Gabbana? To the Broncos. That's a good pick. Wow. Dolchich, yep. And Gabbana. Yep. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, let's talk about him. He's let's from your compare conference, and contrast Henry. To Trey McBride. Let's compare and contrast to Jelani Woods. What did the Broncos just get Henry? He um, comes from the Conference of Champions, right, Hank? Yeah, comes from the Conference of Champions. So I that's mean, a plus. He, he worked the middle of the field really well. Kyle Phillips, a little <laughs> slot yeah. receiver there. The two of them were just pulling coverages apart. He can stretch the seam. He's he's big. He's He's... Like a full tight end size, he's right. not like not to take shots at uh, Trey McBride, but nope. he is a little bit undersized. So, yep. so you get somebody who's a really good receiver, really good hands, sharp route runner, um, good athlete, and you just got to turn him into a blocker too. Right, right. Maybe more upside to become a good blocker, but a little mm -hmm. behind the eight ball. Of course, Chip Kelly offense. You're not going to have a standard inline tight end, but as Henry's describing early in the year when the Bruins were rolling ranked, you know, everyone's mm -hmm. it's the classic, like it's not quite as Texas or Notre Dame back, but it's as UCLA back as chip, you know, going to rule LA now. And they, they had mm -hmm. a moment. It was really Greg Dulcich, Cal Phillips kind of setting a tone 
for that offense, and you got to like the upside. you got to like the receiving ability yep. that Dulcic has. Um, some good bloodlines, some good production. And I think in some ways compliments Albert O a little better. Yeah. But right I now, think, neither's a great blocker. Exactly. But you could play them both out there together. Yep. And yep. I mean, Albert O just doesn't – he's got to block better at the end he of the does. day. But, yep. but if you – Dulcich is at the point where he can at least get by – if you have those two out there together and throw the ball, though, it's uh, it, that's right. that's a great offense. Right. Like that that puts right. the defense in a really tough spot. Best athletic comp I see is Dawson Knox, who I actually like a decent Dossie amount Noxie? as a comp. Yeah. Dawson Knoxy, probably more of an athletic freak, but uh, Dulcich and Gabana not that far off. I believe it's pronounced Gabana. Um, just gonna be honest. I'm so, we're doing Italian pronunciation. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Um, I was trying to adju adjust everyone, to of you course, guys. waiting for the, this most important update. Eight point two four RAS score. Whoa, yeah. that's a. What, what's that? It's like a cat call whistle. Oh, okay. Um, that's pretty bad whistle. It is a terrible. Uh, one seventy nine out of one thousand and ten tight ends since nineteen eighty seven. So, a wow. legit. Athlete, hundred and seventy ninth greatest tight end in NFL history. That's a good turnout. <laughs> His hands four too. six nine, uh, forty, which feels slow when you compare it to Noah Fant and Albert Okwebunam. But, but it's hey not. right? No, huh? And hey four six nine. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, looking at where else he scored well. Oh, look, and Dulcich is a Balkan name from Adam Maris. I'm in. Oh, there we go. So. Jokic one, Dolchic two. Yeah. Yeah, some are saying uh, the second best big man in Denver. <laughs> All right. Um, High point so, him in the post. I find this interesting just based on trading Noah Fant and replacing him with Dolchic. He's better. He's better than Noah Fant. Well, Noah Fant couldn't break a tackle. That's yeah. for damn sure. Couldn't convert a first down. Could barely catch the ball, so you tell me where we're missing all this talent from Noah Fant. I think Noah Fant was improperly used in Denver, yep. and so we never got to see what he was supposed to be. Now, what could happen is Greg Dolchitz comes in and gets used properly and instantly looks awesome. And I mean, right. using That's him properly true. looks very similar. Yes, and it so does. Sending him yes, down the does. field, right. yeah, yeah. Right. A, let's stretch the f let's stretch the seam with yep. these athletes with size. Let's, you would think. Let's try that. Um, for we're, fucking once, excuse my language. And we're, then uh, we're 0 for two on comparison uh, player comps on NFL.com. This one, Trey McKitty. That's not fun. So we got the Broncos have so far drafted Vic Beasley and Trey McKitty, according to Lance Zerline. We trying to He's hurt from people's Miss, feelings. I, I don't even know where he is in the NFL. Trey McKitty. <laughs> yes. Uh, so what? Yeah, that's that's NFL that. might not know what it's talking about. NFL.com, well, uh, please. Okay. Um, the Giants just took Cordell Flott. Ah, Cordell Flott. I like Cordell Flott. All right, RG, you want to sub in for me real quick? Yeah. All right. We'll trade Ryan's, a Ryan for a Ryan. Hopefully he has better takes than Ryan's going to take uh, Wiz Khalifa. Let's go trait by trait. Jalen Weidermeyer is still out there? Oh, yeah. He's going to be out there a while. Oh, yeah. He might not get drafted. In really? the USFL, he will, though. He was at one um, point yeah. the oh, number yeah. one tight end. Oh, yeah. What you did he do wrong? I mean, he ran a 5.09.40. Oh, no, that'll do it. All right. Ran like a geriatric. He can't block or – yeah. So he doesn't let's, do anything. He's just big. Let's go trait by trait, Fant versus Dulcich. Okay. Raw speed. Fant. Fant. No doubt Fant. Yep. Hi, RG. What's up? Hi. You're excited I gotta for say, this game? The, the show has been anything but Dolchich so oh, far. Oh, my oh, guy. Am, uh, my guy. Holding down RK's seat. I hope yeah. I hope he's being honest about that because <laughs> uh, uh, mixed bag, mixed bag. It's been fast hitting and yet somehow slow. You in on this fan first Dolchich game, though? Uh, let's go. Size. Let's go purely height. I'm guessing fan. fan yeah. I yeah. Guess fan but has all right. I, I hope the next... 
<laughs> thing yeah, is who it, uses it, their size correctly. Ah, because yes. also have always watched Noah Fant going, dude. You have no idea how big I know, you are. I know. I know. You have it's, no idea the body you were given. Yuppers. It's concerning. It was concerning all along. Um, hands. Dolce is fair to say Dolce. Definitely. Definitely. I think so. Definitely. Run after the catch ability. Could be a push. Oh, uh, that's average. a tough one. I saw his 75-yard touchdown, and he broke some tackles, yeah. so I'm going to go him right there. And yeah. average 17.3 yards per reception. That's nothing to sneeze at. No. Um, and, again, that really plays into what we were just saying about Fant. It's using that size uh, properly. So properly. I, I'll say let's say that's a push. Okay. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. Blocking. Oh, I, I go Dolchich. I think Dolchich, though, with Fant having a couple years in the NFL, that might be a right. push as well. Two yeah. years ago, I would definitely say Dolchich. Yeah, but, definitely. But, yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're right there. Route running. All right. Dolchich. Dolchich. Yeah. So, it's, it's a 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. All right. So, forget about Fant. Yeah. What about the tight ends on the roster? Oh, Okay. Okuwebunam is obviously who we all think is going to be the starter right now. Sure. He's sure. fast. Yep. He'll be Does faster. Does it stay that way? Or, like, what What do you think the reps are here? <sighs> just more two tight end oh. sets? Or is this just kind of a Zach made Alberto, some great, you've been injured a lot. Man, Zach made some great points about how the staff has been talking about okay. Albert O. Okay. I have not. I've not a lot of praise. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot not. of praise. Now, I think a lot of that is... more of a zero than an O. (laughs) Right. right. Got it, got it. A lot of that is seeing a ton of talent in the guy, hearing all all the praise he gets from the media, and keeping us and him accountable that, look, he hasn't done anything. I'm amazed Drew Locke's endorsement did nothing for this new (laughs) regime for the Broncos. I cannot believe (laughs) they don't want Drew Locke's guy. But you know, Albert was a standout, standout tight end in the SEC. I, you know, I from what the and very limited flashes. we've seen, he has yeah, appeared good, very good. good. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but uh, yeah, I'm just curious as to how the Broncos view Dolchich, where it's like, no, you're kind of the guy now, man. Like, he might or be. It's just, I mean, I'm, he I'm might just curious be. about that. Of all these rookies, he's going to be the one with the best chance to come in and compete right away for a starting yep. spot. Definitely, that's undeniable. I mean, there were plenty of people who had him as the top tight end in the draft. Yeah. Yep. And they, and they were wrong. That's fair. And they were wrong. They were wrong. They were it wrong. Was Trey McBride, but, as we but, all knew. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. But <laughs> I could. people did say. I mean. Wow. Real and quick. I could even see a world where Albert O's more of an H back. Dulcich is more of the Y inline tight end. Yeah. And then you're bringing in Tomlinson for the block. That's fair. Tight end That's sets, fair. You know? The Falcons drafted D'Angelo Malone, and Philadelphia's on the clock now. Okay. Okay. How long to the Broncos? D'Angelo Malone. The Broncos are in the 90s. Is that right, Kale? I, I think there was one more today. I can look it up. There is one more. And we are at 83. We're at 83. So 13 picks. Okay. 13 picks. Okay. Okay. We've got a ways to go. We've got a ways to go. But, uh... I don't know. I think I think this might be another trade down. Yeah, yeah, I'm still I'm still expecting something towards next year. At some point, it's got to happen. I, uh, yeah, they got two guys. Yeah, Ryan's asking, do we really think they'd trade out? At th- I mean, and you can just trade out. Period. Just peace mm-hmm. out. They're really going to be able to own. Round fours and five, though, yeah. right now. Uh, they have everything set Chet's up. Chet's saying 96. Just like we all dream of. Right. And I mean, want to own round four and five. That's what the talk was going into this draft, is the meat of it is really going to be the fourth round on. Yep. There's just so many huh. players. It's Everybody came players. back for one Some more year. Solid and yeah. this year. That's why last right. year was so shallow. But yeah, I don't... Uh, I mean, Leal's still out there. I know. 13 picks sounds like a long way, but if you added Leal to this group. Yeah. That's fair. That'd be pretty pretty dope. Yeah. That'd be pretty dope. And there's some interior linemen I like at this point. The Georgia kids, Ferrum. Um, And I mean, there's still some good talent at off-ball linebacker. 
Totally. Is that uh, so? Dr sit, sitting where the draft is, what's the what's the need now for the Broncos? Oh, as we're getting a graphic in. Oh, there he goes. Oh, Kobe, Kobe Dean. Dean. Yeah. So that means he's competing with uh, our guy Davion Taylor for that starting job. Wow. Yeah. What polar opposites. Yeah. Davion at CU, so athletic, mm -hmm. really kind of blew up in the draft process. 4 3 um, 9 40 will do that. Right. As a linebacker. Yeah. And now Nakobe Dean, the stocky instinctual SEC leader type. Injured. 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 Important Injured. note, yep. <laughs> Unoperated on. Uh, yeah. So true. Possible character issue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the Eagles added a, a first rounder so for next right. year, so they're happy as can be. They don't Again, care. like you were saying, isn't it to the point where we're, where the teams are like, okay, right. we don't care anymore. Like, right. That's value. Yeah. You might be really good. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. worth a try. Well, exactly. exactly. Yeah. And who we? I, I think you compared him to Ray, Ruben Foster, right? Right. It was like, yeah. And uh, again, say what you will about Ruben Foster, but he did have some productive NFL stints. Yeah, short, mm -hmm. but that's all they were. But that's all they were. That's all they were. Woo. I don't know. There was some off-field stuff as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. M now that you've of knocked stuff. off tight end, and Benito gives you. With Browning almost almost fits two needs because it's a bit of edge and linebacker. I think it's offensive line. It's defensive line. Defensive line. line. Defensive okay. line. Offensive line. Corner. Center. See, I see defensive there, line yeah. is kind of a strength. So that's why where where there's edge. just no depth. There's no okay. depth. That's fair. Yeah. You're an injury away from having to start McTelvin a team. <laughs> No That's shade, you know, That's no shade to McTelvin, who probably has more upside than anyone you're going to draft here. Mm -hmm. But if you could have another body or two, you'd feel better. Okay. Yep. And then, I mean, especially at this point when offensive line, when you draft, probably won't play. Defensive line, when you're looking for depth. Yeah. Like, corner, you go to equal, and he's probably not out there all that much this year. We are kind of getting to the point where immediate impact players just might not be out there. Yeah. You, yes. you you are probably looking at depth positions. Which at this I point. guess is why you're taking to Kobe Dean. And more drafting for twenty twenty three, you next know. Year. I mean yep. doesn't just have to be trading for picks for next year. It can be drafting guys who might be a year away from being Fair. a contributor Fair for point. you, but you have that luxury of okay, we take a year, we develop, and then we'll feel better about this a year from now. What a pick from the Eagles, man. That was really yep. nice work. It was. Nice work from them. I like me, Jay Sanders. Fly, Eagles, fly. On the board. Fly, Eagles, fly, baby. Go, Birds. Um, trade Chubb. Draft Sanders, trade Chubb. Wow. Henry throwing out. Well, throwing out Gregory some and stuff, Chubb, I believe, huh? are not on contract next year. Gregory is. Gregory is. Gregory is. Not, not Chubb. Chubb. Was, okay. Not Chubb. Yeah. Well, yeah. if you draft two edges and you still have Malik Reed and uh, Jonathan Cooper, trade Chubb. No, nah, it's a possibility. Hey, now. Is it too late for a trade like that, though? Uh, Would you be disappointed if Chubb went for a third-round pick? A late third, yeah. 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 That is true. Yeah. Might as well as keep Yeah, him. when we still had Raymond on the board yeah. like 30 picks ago, okay, yeah. you could have talked me into it maybe, but... Um, he is on an interesting bubble, though, to think that the fifth overall pick in that draft has now become a guy who, like, for an early third, we'd start to have conversations. Yeah. That's a fair point. Flipping That's him. a fair point. It's not great. It's not great. And he's got a big year to kind of turn that around. I mean, you're only going to have so many chances in the NFL to kind of restore, restore that top five pedigree here. Who would you like to see, RG? Oh, God. <laughs> or, I mean, just... We ran out of players I know by name a long time ago. Position-wise, who are you Position-wise, see, I feel the here. same way about defensive line you did about the offensive line. Mm. It's like you are an injury away from... You are a Billy yeah. Turner. Right, like, 
uh, stub toe yeah. away from like we're in trouble. Uh, right. And again, it's like or like being exactly where we were the last right. five years of like right. Hope Calvin Anderson has a good game. Right. Where yeah. it's like okay, well, who are you protecting, Teddy Bridgewater or Drew Locke? It's like no, we're protecting Russell Wilson now. <laughs> so like we yeah. should have yeah. some depth right. there. It's a great um, point. It's a great point. But who am I? And now you do hear you've dried that up a little bit. Now you are looking more at Salier, Darren Kennard. Steelers pick is in. Kennard would be great, but do you trust him at right tackle? DeMarvin Leal. Leal? Leal. Damn, that's a We pronounce that's it a great like a Brazilian. Like yeah. a, like yeah. Uh-huh. It's a great pick. Leal, Leal. Madrid. Leal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Leal Madrid <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so the Steelers get Pickett, Pickens, and Leal. The Raiders are trading uh, with the Titans, and the Titans are moving up to pick number... 86. 90. No, 86. You're right. Sorry. (laughs) And that means, do we know who the Patriots took at 85? Yeah, I mean, the Steelers have a good draft, but at the same time, it looks like someone... Marcus Jones for the Patriots. Marcus Jones. There's your returner. Mm -hmm. I mean, just when we thought Belichick couldn't be any worse at drafting, (laughs) he goes Cole Strange, Tyquan Thornton, and Marcus Jones. Holy cow, that's bad. That is. That's an atrocity of a draft. I uh, I you, can you come on quick. Okay. You come on. Let me jump off. Real quick. Oh, 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 all right, oh, all right. Oh, Henry's jumping off. Henry's jumping off. We've got a little Ryan Andre sandwich you have, here. When you appear on the DMBA show, this is where they put you, isn't it? They call this me is, Winningsburg. When this I is literally R and R. R and R. Little R and R for our guy Zach Stevens. Yeah. Is oh, he Zach's here? here? Zach. He Zach. Are you here? Paging Zach Stevens. Man, that's terrible. From Broncos HQ. We'll wait on Zach. Uh, everyone is patiently waiting on Zach. From the Valley of Dubs. All right, Ryan. What are you looking at? Tell us about your Titans oh. take Malik Willis. That wow. was a, they, wow. the they trade it up for him. They take him at 86. I love this for them. Wow. They're back in the mix for the AFC South. No, I'm just oh <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, um, what does this mean for Tannehill? Restroom clarity for you. I like the Titans now. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was what came to me in the, okay. in the restroom. The other thing <laughs> that came like to me that. while I was there is... I'm not in love with Dolchich. Ah, wow. It's pretty rare for me to not love a pick after it happens. And I right. just... Especially from the Conference of Champions. I can't... I told Spencer this, and, and that maybe this isn't fair. Ah. But if you didn't just roast the hell out of the buffs, and you're a Pac-12 player, I'm, I question you. Spit off that game log for me, Henry. What do you do to the buffs? Oh, that catch is 87, bro. It must have been one long one. Yeah. We've got was it, was it, that game was probably over by halftime, too. Yeah, he had a 55 so. yard catch. Okay, yeah. anything else? We've got Zach live from Dove Valley. Oh, right, oh. Zach. I got to admit, in the preview that I'm seeing, he's looking a little choppy. No, um, he looks good there. But man, I love to chop it up with this guy, Zach Stevens, our guy. What are you talking about? What's up? Oh, God. So it seems like there's a delay. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, boys, guys, I, I'm ready for some R&R with you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, right. you are. We have a pretty long delay, Zach. So what we're going to do here is you're just going to talk for a while, and yeah. we're not going to talk. Yeah. I love that. I love talking for a long time. You guys know I can do that. There's so no I'm delay now. Start. And what I'll tell you guys about – I'm going to start with Greg Dolchis. And what I'll tell you is if Greg Dolchis is half a good of a player as he is confident – oh, man, the Broncos just got a fantastic oh. tight end. A couple of quotes that he said. He knew he was going to be in the NFL when he was in middle school. He knows wow. he's the best receiving tight end in this draft. He – 
thinks he should have been the number one overall tight end taken. He was, what, the third taken? He's so pumped to join the Broncos. And quote, unquote from him, God, we're going to win Super Bowls in Woo! Denver. This guy is oh, so wow. confident. I love the juice he brings. And I mean, come on, you guys know the hair that he brings. You guys know the dominance that he's had in Colorado, of course, playing against Ryan Koningsberg's buffs, not Ryan Green's Rams. Of course, they wouldn't got beat like that. And now- Let me jump in, let me jump in really quick. I don't, I don't know, you told me you just- <laughs> well, The delay is gone, so we're back. Um, okay, so I was really wrong about that. Um, I guess I just didn't feel it. I don't know why- It's the name. It didn't, I mean, it, there was that crazy shootout between the buffs and UCLA in 2020. So he had four for 126 and a tud in that. So I should have remembered that, but the Buffs won, so maybe Jeez. I just forgot all the bad things. You've been happened. repressing a lot of Buffs games. Yeah, no so. kidding. That might actually be it. <laughs> yeah, the only no person shit. I remember is Drake London. <laughs> he haunts my dreams. AJ yeah, uh, uh, Green also haunts my dreams from a game against Khalil the Tate? Oh, my God. you got to <laughs> get off. Legend. Khalil Don't you Tate. ever... Ever bring, bring up Khalil up Tate again. in my presence? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, next? so Kadeem I was wrong Perry? about I was wrong about him not owning the buffs. He definitely owns the buffs. I'm back in. He's great. You good? You did it, Zach. All, all I heard, all I heard there was uh, was Ryan Green haunts you in your nightmares, Ryan. That, that's all I heard. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. All right, tell us more, Zach. Um, that's why you uh, hired him. Let's get some Dolchich, a little more Dolchich, and then we want to know uh, about Benito. Yeah, well, Dolchich, guys, of course, a George Payton guy, and he knew that connection coming in because George Payton went to UCLA. Dolchich coming from UCLA as well. This is this is a guy where some people love him. Some people think he's kind of just a, a slower pass catcher. So I think the Broncos uh, it, not hit a home run with this one yet. We're going to have to see what they do. But, of course, the Broncos did pick up that fifth-round pick, George Payton, at that magic number 10. I would start to expect some trades for next year, whether it's at the end of tonight or, the, uh, or tomorrow, to get some more picks for tomorrow. But now let's hop over to Nick Bonito who, I mean, speaking of special traits, just like Greg Dolchis thinks he is a fantastic pass catcher, Nick Benito knows he has a special speed rush. And guys, that's something that we talked about with him. We said he's a little undersized, but if you want speed rush, which the Broncos aren't drafting an outside linebacker for run defense. They're drafting him to get after the quarterback, and Nick Benito knows he has that special speed rush, and we even said that entering the draft. So this is a guy that has so much talent, can get after the quarterback, uh, and it's going to be interesting to see just his role. Did you Are you really using the first pick in your draft to be a backup this entire season? We know that he'll fill in as a starter if and when Randy Gregory or Brandy Bradley Chubb can't go this year. Or is he going to push more for week one or somewhere in the middle of the season, take over that starting role? Hmm, very interesting. What, like, I, this was what I was asking to everyone here. How do you imagine uh, Ivaro using this unique group of players that he has? Because it's not, you know, we ta the way I tossed it to Henry originally was like, we talk about 4-3-3-4. Four, three, three, four. There's just no such thing anymore. And when you look at the players that the Broncos have, you don't even, uh, like, a Baron Browning or a Nick Benito, you don't even know if they're a linebacker or an edge rusher. How do you envision this defense utilizing these talents? I remember with the Broncos Super Bowl 50 defense, we heard about a lot about NASCAR. Oh, man, they're going to have these four edge rushers on the field at once, these three edge rushers, and then we never really saw it. Well, uh, Evero's going to have that opportunity to do something similar with that and maybe not actually using Randy Gregory on the inside as pass rush and Benito on the outside. But I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, Benito with his versatility going somewhere in the middle at times and bringing that edge up the middle because he is a very versatile guy. He's the smallest one by far smaller than Bradley Chubb and Randy, Randy Gregory. And we talk about how the Broncos certainly have two pass rushers on the defensive line with DJ Jones, uh, with Draymond Jones. Oh, well, you could slide Randy Gregory or Bradley Chubb in there as a defensive lineman for a couple of plays and then have the other one on the outside and then Nick Benito as well. And that can kind of be your NASCAR package as well. Do next? Do you think they stay here? Do you think they trade back? Do you think there's a specific position that they're targeting? 
Uh, uh, offensive line, line guys, I mean, Raymond was right there for them at 75. Then he goes two picks later. But I do think that's a position they have to address at some point. Look, we came into this draft, and what were the big needs? You had edge, pass rusher, and you had offensive line, and you had tight end. Well, boom, two of them are off the board right there. Cornerbacks, guys, were flying off the board. I would kind of expect that to be a tomorrow position that they take. Uh, but the Broncos, what, just a couple picks away right now. You alone in that field house? I don't see any other people there. Yeah, it's just just me and George Payton. He's just over here. It's just us two. Hanging yeah, out. you should get some scoops from him. <laughs> um, maybe you could just like you should just go hand the phone to someone and tell them they're on our show. Oh wow, what's that? Uh, what's that screaming about? Wait, wait there I'm, are I'm unfortunately a don't lot even say of it. There's yeah, no so one no, here. It's dead at the oh, bar. <laughs> There's a lot of hype about the end of the third here, Zach. There's uh, a lot of people that weren't hugged as children here at the yes, bar. Yes, there we go. That's a good way of putting oh, it. I thought they uh, were just cheering on Zach's analysis. I, I too. That, that was me. That was yeah. yeah. Is like Vic Lombardi over there? No, Vic no. is no. not here. Let's see if I can. Turn <laughs> was it Russell no. Wilson in there just a few hours ago? No, he goes. Russell Wilson wasn't here. He came over and just started talking to us and. Uh, <laughs> It was pretty cool. We can't uh, see yeah, anything. Here's, here's what we have. <laughs> it's just black. Can you see me? No. No. Oh, there, there we go. It might just be us. You know, Start naming out people, guys. and I'm going to choose one, and then you're just, we're just going to take, take the maybe, phone over maybe there. Maybe don't do it, Zach. I don't know. Oh, we're yeah. losing him. Oh, man, we're losing, losing him. Me? That's a shame. Oh, it's just really choppy. It I, looks I like, don't know uh, what you guys are talking about. I've always wanted to tour the field house one frame at a time. <laughs> Is it oh, cool? now it's black. All right. <laughs> My oh, grand yeah. idea to get us a guest is not looking like it's going to work. Mile out. high salute, Zach. He's doing some great work you're, you're out stuck there. With me, guys. All right, Zach, any final thoughts you want to chip in here uh, before the Broncos pick again? And we'll probably bring you on again after that. I mean, Nick Benito, guys, he, he could be a, a first round top 10 sort of talent in terms of just a pass rusher. That's what they got there. So Broncos are going for upside with that pick and uh, they're in a they're in a place where they can go for those luxury picks yeah what about our guy leo chanel huh or oh, chanel, chanel. Uh, yeah. also chanel, let's go go chanel chanel guys. would really fit because i'm also calling dulcich dulcich and gabana zach do you like it's that gabana gabana <laughs> it's not That's that not. is beautiful is that an italian picture. brand of course, all brands, the high fashion, are Italian, right? And you're going to tell me it's They're Cabana. all from Milan, where I'm... Look, I'm just... who riff, You know Riff Raff? He has a song called, Only at, to be respectful, <laughs> F with B's, who wear Dolce & Gabbana, and the way Riff Raff pronounces it is Dolce & Gabbana. Okay. So I'm going with the Riff Raff pronunciation. No, you just said it Not the way. pronunciation of my ancestors and current sisters. I bet you he's saying Dolce and Gabbana because it rhymes with like bandana and that's what he was going for in that. Or his yeah, banana. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Also, if you don't know who Riff Ress is, you should Google him you and be Google. like, oh, Andre visual. wants him to be Zach, the... Uh, are you familiar with the work of Riff Raff? <laughs> yeah, Riff Raff? <laughs> no, and, 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 and in this building, I don't think I should Google him despite... Oh, uh, yeah, they do. They track your Google searches. And they track, sure. but you could YouTube his... Classic video, only F with B's who wear Dolce and Gabbana. It's a good one. Only a, it's a good one. It's a good Zach's one. looking over his shoulder like, God, I hope no one can hear this. He's ready to click that red button more I than he be ever has you before. I guys if I didn't have these AirPods. Uh, smart, smart. smart. <laughs> veteran move, as the kids would call it. All right, Zach, we're going to uh, cut you loose here. Um, let's, uh, let's hope for a good one in this next one, and we'll talk to you a little bit after that. We might high salute you. See you, fellas. Later, Zach. There he is, the absolute goat. He is he really exactly is. what the show needed. Yeah, he is. He really I, is. I feel like 17 times more oh, alive. <laughs> I know. Almost feels like he shouldn't be at Dove Valley with all those serious people. The fact he that should be here with us. I can't believe jokes. he didn't see one person that he was like, oh, this is definitely someone I can just <laughs> hand the phone to. He, he might have been about to. We just didn't. Do we want to no. get caught up on some I, I picks that it, we missed? I talked about yeah, it three times, and he didn't really seem to be into it. <laughs> we do. We do. The Cardinals took Cam Thomas. Cam they, Thomas from the cards. So there, they went Hollywood, Trey, and Cam Thomas. Meh. 
Um, Cowboys, Jalen Tolbert. Yup, yup. Ryan then, loves them. South Alabama. That's basically our alma mater. Oh, then, the Jags. Yeah. And then yep. Buffalo just took Terrell Bernard. Or Terrell Bernard. However you TB? Say. Terrell Bernard? Uh, any more info on him? It's funny that we're talking so much about Bernard here in the third round. Because I've always felt like Andre's name was destined to be Bernard. Yep, he felt like When my you look at him, don't you just see Bernard? Doppelganger name was yeah. Bernard. Similar to the Italian. head elf in Santa Claus. Yes, I think that's where it comes from. The head elf in the Santa Claus <laughs> kind of looks like Dre. If long you hair? actually Google I would need him, to see long hair. it's not, not so true. Yeah, Bernard's way better looking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> incorrect. I'm going to do my guy like that. I will say, when uh, Zach was talking, they showed Malik Willis after he got drafted. He's crying a lot. Not only was he crying, he looked very mad. Oh, yeah. he looked like he was like, "Oh, you you're gonna wait till now to draft?" Like he did not. Yeah, I, Drew Locke I maybe on did the... that too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he said, "John, baby, how's it going?" Johnny, Johnny, he was, Johnny. He was fired up when he got on the phone with you. Terrell Bernard, another Baylor player. I hate Baylor, but you love Tyron. Tyquan Thornton. Bears? Oh, Tyquan Thornton. He does love bears. Big bear guy over here, right? Correct, Brian? I enjoy good bear. Yeah. I mean, he's not from like... I would consider myself a bear appreciator. He's not from bear country like Henry Chisholm, of yeah, course. Yeah. But, Someone you know. on the stream was asking Henry where he got his hat, but the, his hat literally answers the question. Meadow Lake Golf Course. Meadow Lake Golf Course. That's where he got it. One of ten golf courses in Montana. <laughs> no, there's like ten reading skills. that just like... Are like within dr like driving, and I don't mean car. I mean driving. with your driver, driving distance from Henry's house. Oh, there are ten with active bears just hanging out on the course. Literally, oh. when I went to visit Henry, what's that bear's name? Uh, when I went to visit Henry, so we were about to go play golf, and someone was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a just so you know, there's a bear, a mama bear with babies on hole three. So just be careful. It's like <laughs> that's just normal around here. We just that's yeah. that casual, right?" Dude, in there Colorado, a, we would shut down that business, you know. A bear got loose in Bozeman High School when I was there. Wow, that's almost Students like Students were tweeting videos of a bear in the high school. That had to be a, a 10 out of 10 prank. If that was a senior prank, I need to... That ooh. person deserves a medal. Hey, now. That's intense. <laughs> that's intense. A bear in your high school? We yeah, never man. had those kind of situations in Milan. Um, we had a bear in a tree at CU, and then oh. there was the falling bear meme. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was the bear? Yes. Wow. Yes. Went, yeah, the more you went know. Viral. Went viral for that. All right. Any more picks that we need to update on? Oh, here comes Las Vegas. Wayne Newton on the stage. Wow. Oh, for the love of With God. Marcus Allen. Who's With better? Marcus Allen. Probably got to go Wayne. We sure that's not Wayne Newton's Madame Tussauds wax figure. Marcus Allen does have that epic Super Bowl run, though. And a USC guy. Oh, my got God. Got a soft spot for USC guys, you know? It's just rough to look at. Vegas has Wayne really has embraced the Raiders. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you think? <laughs> was um, Wayne Newton ever, like, was he always just a Vegas performer? Is that his thing? Is that how No, I think he was a performer started. before that, and now he was probably one of the so first, he like, was Vegas like Celine Dion. Yeah, yeah. He was a singer. He had a run, and I think then he got made, a residence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then I, he, right. I think he was one of the first, like, Vegas stars. Like the Blue Man group. A lot of people have said if this show keeps growing, we could get a residence on, in Vegas. Still in Parham. Many are saying that, that Hank, you and I will just be available <laughs> for a 10 p.m. show every It'll be single night at Penn the and Bellagio. Tyler, and then <laughs> Hank, Hank and Dre. We are in, <laughs> we are in serious talks with DraftKings already, and Eric... Henry and I just earlier today were tra trying out ball gowns, and I thought I thought Hanks looks. <laughs> Say stunning. that again. We are trying out ball gowns. For gowns. Lenwer, Sorry. We're okay. Okay. Our, okay. Our, uh, <laughs> Her guess. Our Vegas shows um, at the Bellagio. Dylan Farum, Memphis pa Parham. guard. Parham. With a P. Parham. Chicken Parham. It tastes so good. <laughs> he play. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> All right. Um, uh. Played some right tackle, as you can see. Played some right guard. He's mobile. He's athletic. He plays for the Raiders now. I don't bogey holes. I par them. There's very <laughs> good. Very good. 
There's Calvin Austin running running wild, the little speedster from Memphis who has oh. yet to be drafted. He was in the senior bowl. I liked him. He sure was. Yes. Yeah, and he's available, but Wandale and uh, who is the other small boy? Sky? Sky, but there was someone who was smaller. Tyquan. No, he wasn't that small. Tyquan's big. If you're in the chat and you know what I'm talking about, hit us up. All right. I... Um, I like that this show has gone big enough that we're getting hit with porn bots in the comments. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That was me. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, that makes more sense. Uh, I just, I you know. Where where are are we? Check it out. Six. Ninety-six. I need to get my. Hold on. I'll, let me get my computer. Real yeah, quick. and Ryan, while you're at it, would you pass me my computer? Yeah, we're doing a computer check. Yeah, computer check. Com check. Thanks, buddy. I'll stick oh wow! My, I'll stick with my phone. Are the but? Oh no, 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 no! I thought the Buccaneers took Matt you, Corral. We gotta know when the Broncos are on. The they Twitter corralled clock. him. It's different than the regular clock. Yeah, it is different. The Twitter clock. Why is it, R RG? You've worked in television. Yeah. Why RG. is it that ESPN can't keep up with Twitter? In terms of these picks coming in. Dude, because there's 90 people it has to go through before it finally makes it on air. Mm. They have they, to one. TV loves they have to confirm bump. it, right? They have to make sure that it's all spelled correctly. They have to make sure that it rolls correctly. They have to make sure that the hosts are talking about it. They have to make sure they have the the, the video up and ready to go. I fear we're moving I mean, in like, this direction. Just more people to talk to. <laughs> no, we're not. We're actually moving away from it. It's what makes us great. We are on a delay, like compared to live television, we're delayed, and we're somehow still beating them with all the picks. Right. Yeah. Which is why you should watch. Which is <laughs> why I got out of TV. Damn. There you go. Look at this Greg Dolchich of evolution that Zach oh just posted. Oh my gosh. I kind of oh like. Oh my gosh. Mid. Like, um, First off, we I'm all getting, need to do those I'm, for when we started working at the MVP. I'm getting Entourage, Medellin vibes. Okay. From the year two pick here. James Franco vibes from year one. He's big James Franco look alike. Oh, wow. Okay, well, can we bring this up? It's actually yeah, a tweet yeah, from please. Zach Stevens. Let's see this. We're talking about... It's done numbers. So, Greg you Dolchich know. evolution here. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Pablo Escobar uh, year two vibe. But look at this. The, he's rocking the James Franco. So that's when he Jam first that is oh, that's James Franco that is to a T. James Jane, Franco with long hair. Same. What's James that? What's Franco. that movie? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pineapple, uh, Express. Pineapple Express. Okay. Pineapple Express. This one is my. That's I'm the, all about. That's this. the big guy from uh, the Longest Yard. We've all. This is Pablo Escobar. This is uh, no, no, Adrian no. Grenier playing <laughs> Pablo Escobar. I'm sorry. Pick two though. We've all been to at least five keggers in That's our life. That's Albert O, isn't that it? That guy also attended. You should always go to a kegger with that guy. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I. That's actually like a ten out of ten. If you're a guy, me. if he looks like that right now, I think he would have been my number two. Ryan, team. you <laughs> literally have partied with five hundred dudes like this in Boulder. I get that gets me going. I know there are five dudes in our bar that look like that. He's a, yes. And right. this one is. This guy, Fabio. It's, dude, I see James Franco. That was a really it's good call. James Franco That's a James Franco again? face. This is more the kids I went to Western with. Can the ladies in the chat let us know what like yeah, which what do one you like? they like the best? One, two, three. Because men and breaking the down the looks of men and is, the gents. Is, is, not, not as good, good as it could be. Yeah. I'm gonna throw my my vote in for there, number two. Uh, there were two I like it. there were two women for in number here two, earlier uh -huh. that I would have got there. There was actually dude, three. The mustache on the second no, pick. It's elite. It's elite. elite. It's elite. And the jaws just like he really has that. Like that dude is so in college out west. No oh. one's ever been more dude. in college out west. Then Greg Dulcich and pick two. My guy is literally taking a like he has an Woo! off he has an off period. He's oh, going to the man. beach catching some waves. <laughs> Homeboy only wore socks <laughs> to have his cleats on at practice. <laughs> Wearing the rest of that year, yeah. his toes were out and about. Hundred <laughs> percent. Wore board shorts in PE. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> sir. White Those toes to were the, breathing uh, good. Yeah. Bucks. And pick pick three. Is a guy I went many guys I went to Western with again toes yeah. out at all times even if it's zero degrees. So wow, we've got a biggest ladies man the for the Broncos since Eric Decker. Whoa, Dang. really? I was a big D Wolf guy. D 
<laughs> no. You know, you tell Brady you're going to eat his wolf. children. You have my heart forever. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Okay. Forever. Important we were going from a lady in the chat. All right, we got Three. a real woman commenting. <laughs> Three is giving off knockoff Jason Momoa, superior That's for oh, sure. That's a okay. good Jason Momoa. That's knockoff great. Momoa is a positive. The Former CSU Momoa. Ram, Jason Momoa. Stop. Did he really? That's yeah, he, awesome. it was like a semester. Don't like. Hey, he, we had like, Jonah Hill at CU. He's <laughs> proud to be, bro. That <laughs> sounds amazing. The rumor has it that he felt like he was getting fat shamed. Um, that sounds about right. So he left Boulder. Yeah. I mean, Jeez. there are like, because now I he's like pretty slim, but when he was one. younger, he was pretty big. There are. Yeah. People don't really look like that in Boulder. I wouldn't have bragged about that one. Sean Ryan to the Packers. He feels like oh, a he, Packers He kind of looks like a knockoff Greg yeah, Dolchich. Yeah. Him From UCLA. Him and Bakhtiari are going to have a grand This was time. clearly a minute. thing. This is yeah, like yeah, the yeah, Tampa yeah. Bay Rays when they all dyed their hair blonde. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. Or the PHNX production when they all dyed their hair blonde. That okay. highlight, he got off the line really late there. Damn, wait, wait, we got a we got another comment here that I want to hit. Yeah, okay. it was all the porn okay. comments. No, Best okay, we got to delete the porn <laughs> hey, box. Keep it clean, okay? <laughs> Hold on. No, I wanted can, to hit we that for As we're judging uh, players' uh, looks. Hey, hey. Oh, my God. Look at Sean Ryan's hair there. Wow. Tasmia here says, prefer Dolce with a helmet on. That's kind of That's brutal. a, yeah. Dang. Or are we, are we talking fired about. fired to my God. Or are we just talking about safe sex? Oh. Okay. Well, <laughs> Ryan. Uh, Lights off, helmets on. Oh, we have a trade. The Panthers yeah. have traded up. Panthers oh, trading rawr. up to pick 93 with the Niners? Yep. Is that correct? There's no talks between the Panthers and Browns 94. on a Baker Mayfield trade right now. No, Niners made their pick. Who is it? Do we know? Niners made the pick apparently at 93. Do who's Dr. Disrespect? Ty Davis Price. Okay. Yeah, some weird dudes making picks tonight. Is uh, that a wrestler? I think that's a, a YouTuber. That's got to be a it YouTube. It could be. Guy. It could yeah. be. Some Silicon Valley. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of the biggest yeah, Twitch I streamers. I kind of recognize it's that guy. It's been a we fun mix of him. old Vegas personalities and, uh, <laughs> you know, TikTokers. Ty Davis Price. He's got to be a fast running back if the Niners are driving. LSU. Go Tigers. Ran a 448, which was really slow this year. Not fast at all. Not fast at all. Didn't Terrell Davis run a four four eight? I think T D ran oh, more I like think a four six. Four six. Yeah. Some people four in the chat are um are updating us. That's Doctor Disrespect. Is that that is a Twitch streamer. The Matt Panthers Corral took Matt wow. Corral. Matt Corral. Yeah, they're definitely not getting Baker Mayfield to now. Pantera. Um Pantera? The Panthers. Okay. Right? Yeah, I didn't know we were calling them. You Pantera. and Greg Dulcich in year two, you guys were parting it up. <laughs> Lots of Pantera shows. This guy gets what? it. We were listening to ACDC, bro. Those toes never, never got covered up that whole year. So, <laughs> um, Ty Davis Price, very Ninersy to go with. Like I used to wear very underappreciated. I used to wear slides to the bars in in Boulder. I believe it. Gross. It's one of the few places you in had, the world you had that's to go allowed. for a oh scrub when you got home. Yeah, yeah, you would have to. They frankly shouldn't have allowed. Seems you like to win. women in Boulder would be in defeat, though. I like that. I you like know, that. I like that. We don't have that many like attractive things on our bodies, so that's true. Humans are gross. Humans. Colin Cowherd giving a shout out to the Broncos feels bad. That doesn't feel like it's a good omen. For doing what? Because he's a big Dulcich guy. The Broncos have crushed this offseason. Free agency and draft crushed it. He is an LA guy, so Cal maybe no. Cal Remember when he said Drew Russell. Locke would be the MVP of the NFL? Yeah. Uh, Cowherd's a big Russell Didn't Wilson guy. <laughs> mm. That's when we should have known. Mm. So he's going to expect a lot of Broncos love okay, from Cowherd. Okay, so we're almost on the Twitter clock because since he's on the Twitter clock they, now. They got Zach Carter. Zachary Carter. Fun story. Ooh. Oh, he's got to sit up for this I one. Know. Oh, yeah. You guys will enjoy this one because it has nothing to do with the draft. It has everything to do with me being a dumbass. So... <laughs> He's been talk about prospect fatigue. We've been talking about Zachary you Carter move quick because could for be a pick any second at least here. three years, and for some reason, instead of pronouncing it Zachary, I've been calling him like Zachary this whole time. I only That's made bad. that correction wow. a week ago, 
Yeah. So Zakari Carter to me. That actually sounds way cooler. It does. It does. It's a more exotic cray name, you know, like a five star prospect. I figured it was Zakari Carter, not Zachary. If the Niners uh, are putting. So it would have been Car Cartier. Yeah, there ex exactly. What was I thinking? If the Niners Very are putting cool. up famous gamers up there to announce picks, shouldn't the Broncos put me up there as a six time Super Bowl champion? In I, the, think so. draft, I think so. DNVR I think so. The DNVR Madden League? Right, who would be like Maybe the hipster round. hero of Denver to go on stage? I mean, give me some clear... We have some good TikTokers. Oh, the homies 303. Right, the uh, homies 303. I give mean, me some clear lens glasses. Ooh. I'll grow out the beard a little bit and the we can go. The Flowbots are always available <laughs> for a good uh, wait. July 4th uh, concept at Big Sporting Good. Got, Why not have them announce a we, pick, we've right? We've got a small window here before the Broncos make a pick, and we also had, just had three women enter the room. Can we show them the Dolchitz picks? Come on, show them the Dolchitz picks. It's uh, of. We need to see which one you guys like of the three Dolchitz yeah. looks. Also, by the way, right, so man rocket. That is, that is a term used for yeah, one man yeah, yeah. in this All town. All right, so this is option one. Option one, James Franco period. It's a great time. Great right? hang. <laughs> Sweet boy. This, this is guy, the one. Ali in Boulder, you partied with this guy about a million times. We've all been to a kegger in college with this dude. All right, so. speed it up. Many years. Here's option three. Year three, Marissa at Western hung out with this dude. Many a keggers as well. Kylie, Kylie likes option Kylie. three. Kylie's going with Tarzan. Makes sense as year her husband three. has a mullet. Yeah. Uh, all, all right. right. All right. All right. All right. Let's no one go. likes baby face. Greg. James Franco was the call. So do you think that means people like the uh, the sleep-induced scars that I have on my face from old age now? Since the ladies don't like a don't like a clean, they don't like cut? A clean cut, fella. Yes. Yeah, thank yes, you. they do. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, Wife says no. Okay. Oh, damn. That's a shame. She rocks. I believe it. I believe it. Sounds like it, Shane. All right, Ryan. Tell me what the interwebs are saying. Um. Is it yet another trade Twitter Twitter down? We're on the Twitter clock, right? Yeah. So who did Cincinnati take? We don't know. What? We just don't know. The Queen City? We don't know. Did you know that Denver's sometimes known as the Queen City of the Plains? That's, That's too long of a... No. To say... To That's make too a, specific. Already Queen City's basically insulting. Hold on. This whole time we were talking about Nicobe Dean, because it sounded kind of like Kobe Bean. But there's actually a player named Kobe Bryant in this draft. Yeah, yeah, we all know that. Literally, he wore 24 RG in the. To RG's actually interviewed Kobe Bryant a, five different. He times. could be a target right here. <laughs> so Maybe. I've got a new Dolchich look. This is Combine Dolchich. Whoa! <laughs> new Dolchich just dropped. <laughs> Holy shit! He's giving me the Dolch itch. <laughs> this is a beautiful man. <laughs> wow. What? Right. That was a compliment. The are about to pick. He only F's with B's uh, Rock Dulcich and Cabana. <laughs> wow. That's a great look. I wish I had flow like that. Holy shit. Yeah. Those <laughs> curls. Oh, my. New mm. Oh, my. Mm. Absolutely hypnotized by those curls. Wow. Combine Dulcich just took over the world. Oh, man. I know what my new combine phone Dolchich. background's going to be. <laughs> Ryan, the uh, chat's asking, where can I find this Combine Dolchich Oh, pick? Combine Dolchich yeah, can can't be found you drop it, bro? Can't at Zach Tyler Palumbus. Tipo. Tipo. Broncos are going to pick here, so yeah. be prepared. After the hotness. How often do you think oh. Tyler Columbus rocks Sanders? Wow, he looks even better on a bigger screen. I got to be honest. Uh, I'm going number four here. Oh, and I mean, Kale is switching from forget the curls. Now that voltage. I look at it, the depth on the stash. Oh my, what depth on that stash? Weird Al Yank Dovich. did trade down. Oh. Colts are now on the clock. Oh, the Broncos have trade. Oh. Wait. Tell me, NFL Ryan. Network saying the Broncos traded out of 96, making a deal with the Colts. Where are the Colts? If we don't pick again, I'm going to be Where are the Colts? 
No, the Browns no, just <laughs> traded for 96. We're 96 she's, now. she's not wrong. The Colts are at 96. They traded back to 179? Wow. What? Nothing next to, year? Bro, that's the 2023. That's be the third next year. Next year. Okay, is that's it confirmed? It is. Yeah, that's all right. And our, work, all that coming. our all right. workload just got a whole lot lighter, bro, bro. <clears throat> sure, sure so, did. We're done. See you guys. Yeah, let's okay. wrap it up. Could someone so, on staff start Googling more Dulcich photos? Yeah, let's go back to that combine Dulcich photo. Into now, okay? we, are, we are merely here to evaluate Dulcich at this point, and we're not talking about film. <laughs> no, my, heart is, my heart is full chitch. Can we get Dulcich on the show? <laughs> I'm going to DM him. Full chitch, yeah. Yeah, DM him, absolutely. He seems like he might be a homie. Oh, he most def is a homie. Say you work at a bar. Too. He does. We he have does. nothing better to do. I'm DMing Greg Dolchich. Yeah. Right, oh, his so. DMs aren't open. Shh. Wow. What Good are call. Doing here? It's a mid Good move. Good call by him. Um, Wait, he's got a some sort of flag next to his number. Could it be the Serbian flag? Balkans, man. Ukraine? Maybe Big Balkan check? vibes. Ooh, check. Why don't you check on that? <laughs> <laughs> this is a problem because he hasn't even tweeted about coming to the Broncos yet, which means he definitely would not check his DMs. Not active on the his old last bird tweet was app. from January 10th. You ain't getting a yeah, legend, we're not man. Getting a, legend. We might have to back channel this. Does anyone in the comments have Greg Dolchich's number? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. he was 85 in college. <laughs> Wait, I might have. A channel that I can go through to get his number. You should do that, Ryan. I'm gonna try. Why did that sound like some type of drug? Wow, deal? a third round pick next year. It really. I've <laughs> so many. I've gone Wait down that way for me. Yeah. I have so actually with Greg a Dulcich, connection. number two, right about 10 p.m. He goes. Wait a second. Actually. I have a connection. Comments letting us know that he is from Cro his his heritage is Croatian. Croatian, throw out the red Croatian flags. nation. A baby. lot of people are calling him the Croatian sensation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so true. It's so true. Should we let Henry back on this? Yeah, show? we should. We should. Is we he should even awake? Ryan, Ryan's really Ryan too. He's settled in nicely. He's settled in nicely. <laughs> Oh, uh, let me warm up a no spot for you. Oh, okay, I will get mind. up. Never mind. All right. I could get up too. If anyone can think of any ways that we can reach Greg Dolchich. Yeah. We got to work on that. Yep. 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 Maybe I could just message Broncos PR. That doesn't sound exciting to me. No, it sounds unexciting and definitely the most direct way for you to get his contact through a contact of yours yeah it does yeah. it does i want to go through like back channels right rather than the very obvious official channel that is right in front of you well think about this i'm gonna take rg seat yeah you are okay. henry's gonna take this seat it's known as the host seat so you are our host Guys, I just want to warn you, uh, I've produced seven hours of draft content over the last two years. I'm uh, a little loopy. Get a little loopy here. Mm. Oh, well, we're going to be looping clips you. of Greg Dolce on yeah. the show later. I yes. was going to say, when he warned us, I thought he was warning us that a new Dulcich had just dropped. And I was about <laughs> to don't, lose it. Don't ever warn us again unless it's about a new Dolce. <laughs> <laughs> Until it's a new dose that's just dropped, we don't want to know. Be Bleacher Report just sent me a notification that says, Denver snags a TD that can find ways to get open. That doesn't feel that encouraging to me. No. They should say that the Broncos got a deep threat. Open. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah, the Broncos got flow. Like, I don't know. Broncos do have flow. But I guess I don't really care. So that's why you guys are in your jobs and I'm in mine. That's <clears> true. So, Henry, a 2023 third. How do you feel about that? For a late third this year, pick 96. I'm all right with it. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, it's the Colts, though. It is the Colts. If, if it was the Lions, you get fired up. Right. It's the Colts. It's still, like, on the right side of the line. Like, I would make that trade. Right. But we don't think yeah. Matt Ryan's exactly going to win a Super Bowl. But playoffs. Playoffs. They are the favorites in the AFC South. And, uh, yeah, it's just. But 
at the same time, we didn't really love anyone left on the board, right? Perry on Winfrey would be fun. Perry on Winfrey would be awesome. Tariq Woolen would be awesome. Yeah. Uh, Channing Tyndale to me would yep. be awesome. NJ Sanders, I think, still qualifies as mm. awesome. I've sent a text. We'll see what happens. Jamari Salier and Leo Chanel would be cool. Not awesome, but cool. Winfrey, definitely awesome. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it's more I good stuff. Yep. Like uh, Rashid Walker, Justin Schaefer, Darren Kennard. I would like a little speedster at wide receiver. That'd be fun at this point. Britton Covey. Go get Britton freaking Covey. Wow, Britain you want Covey a chain guy. mover. D yeah, I mean, he does everything. He does everything. We just he, want a return. Mostly, bro. exactly. Mostly it's the return ability that makes me want Calvin it. Anderson, Memphis. <clears throat> Calvin Austin. Austin. Thank you. Calvin Anderson already on the team. Don't have to draft him. Right, right, right. <laughs> I pulled nice. a Cole Turner for Cole Strange. Kyle Phillips would be a good receiver. This guy loves Kyle Phillips. I love Kyle Phillips. Khalil Shakir? This guy loves Khalil Shakir. I've been talking about him for a long time. Justin Ross is that. still out there? Justin Ross is still out it's there. It's still too early for the Broncos to be trying to get a receiver, but Wait. we're getting closer. So on top of the future third, what other pick did they add? Was it 170-something? Is that a sixth? That must be a sixth round. Uh, yeah. Boy. They still have a lot of picks tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be a busy A lot of day. picks. Two fourths, three fifths. So it's going to get it's gonna get pretty hype. Do we know who the Lions select here? Pashal? No. The, how do Does you have Barry do Sanders announcing your third pick? Right. I thought uh, well, he was yeah. already taken, Pascal. Barry Sanders should be announcing first round picks. Right, he should have announced Aiden Hutchins. Yeah, Barry That's Sanders fair. doesn't need to be out there announcing the third-round pick. The Washington Commanders took Brian Robinson. The Commanders Another one before took Brian Robinson Jr. out of Alabama. Lions here taking Kirby Joseph, safety out of Illinois. That catches me a little off guard. We're going to see so much value at the start of the fourth is always where the draft pops off and we see some of the best value picks. I'm not going to lie. Getting a 2023 third it for slaps. that pick was kind of nice. Now you have two thirds. Yeah. It's nice. <clears throat> and I'm a fan. And any a free agents year. that you could lose that would lead to a comp pick? Chubb? You jumped out of the last pick of the third round. Upgraded, almost guaranteed, whatever number that third round pick is yep. next year. Yep. And got a fifth. It's not yeah. bad. The, the last fifth, but yeah. It's as good as it gets, in my opinion. Yeah, it's a good deal. It's a very good deal. Um, I'm still working on uh, an our outside chance of somehow getting Greg Dolce. Uh, <laughs> if, anyone, so. uh, if anyone in the room wants mm. to help out or in the comments... Maybe we could find out who his agent is. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. If there are any bros who've partied with that bro in the chat, you know, maybe. Weirdly, not as easy to Google as you would think. Okay. Should we, do we want to go to best available? Talk that out just a smidge roosk? That works. Yep. Let's do that. Um, the Broncos' next pick will be what? Oh, I have it right here. 115. And they're back-to-back, -back, right? 115, 116? Yep. 115 and 116. And that would be only 10 picks into the round. Yep. yep. 10 and 11. Yep. yep. So they have 10 and 11. Let's say someone ends up being left on the board here at 105. They could easily package those two, jump up. Oh, and get or... Them. Yeah. package one of those yeah, two in like a six. sixth rounder That's that true. they've added you That's know true. they, they could really to. jump back in now if they wanted to totally package those totally two. um so best remaining on my board tyreek wolin isaiah spiller <laughs> yeah sam howell whatever channing tyndale really high on tyndale carson strong whatever mej sanders really high upside edge rusher uh jamari salier Oh, great message from someone here who says his Insta DMs Leo are Inwood. open. Wow. I'm, in, I'm on it. I'm, I'm sliding in Dolchish's Insta DMs. He's I an Insta it. bro for sure. <laughs> He's busy. 
I love Jose saying Leo and Winfrey. I was going to get to them. Yep. Leo Chanel, Perry and Winfrey, Jamari Salier, the left oh. tackle for Georgia. We might Rashid just need to pull up his Instagram Walker on the show. For Penn State, <laughs> Some yes. Some bangers on here. Yeah, I think we do. Kellen Dyche, Arizona yeah. State offensive tackle. Wouldn't yeah. be bad. Guards, Justin Schaefer, Darren Kennard, Calvin Austin, best returnability left. Michael Clemens, defensive end out of a and He's a low-key stud. Devontae Price, Florida International, a guy that um, RK and I still like. Actually, a lot of good running backs left. I know. Kobe Bryant's another high-end uh, corner that's still left. Cam Taylor Britt did go, right, Ryan? Yep. In the second. Um, as did Fidaria Mathis. And Taylor, Neil yep. Farrell out of LSU would be a fun down line. This dude probably has David Bell still left. Seven hundred people congratulating him on just went getting drafted right now in his Instagram DMs. There's no way he's gonna see us. The shot in the dark. Yep. David Bell just went a very divisive prospect in the draft community. A dominant guy this past season. Gets Michael Thomas comps, but people really worry about his inability to separate mm -hmm. and think that he could basically be. I don't know, like another Rashad Higgins, like a guy who puts up really good stats and was really good at getting open in college, but is going to lose that slight edge and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. boom. I like that pick from the Browns, though. I think David Bell is a fun one. You think George Payton's regretting the Melvin Gordon deal? George Payton regretting the Melvin Gordon deal. With no, all? not at all. No? Not at all. I think that just gives him more security, more options. I still expect them to take a flyer on a back. Yeah. In day three, right? Um, For sure. Just makes it's just sense. so hard with Isaiah Spiller sitting right there. Because like I if know. you could just get Isaiah Spiller in his place. Well, and even Samir White, Devonte Price. I'm happy with a lot yeah. of these guys we've talked about. You know, Damon Price. Yeah. C.J. Verdell. Yeah. Tyler Batty. My uh, Jay Sanders off the board. Kevin Harris out of South Carolina. That's the guy we talked about a lot last year. My Jay to the cards. No. Oh, yes. Wow. Huh. They're low key making putting together a draft class I like. Yeah. Hollywood, Cam Thomas, Trey McBride, and now who'd you just say? I blanked. My J. My J. Sanders. That's a lot of value, man. It is. That's a lot yeah, of value. I didn't like the Hollywood trade. I thought they maybe overpaid, but in their four wide receiver offense, having one of those inside guys. Who's such a vertical threat in a seam stretcher? I actually think matters a lot more than like your run of the mill slot. Uh, and yeah, I I love this MJ Sanders pick, and he's a guy we were yep. talking about a top half of the first round consideration coming into the year. He's part of a phenomenal defense. Doesn't put up great stats, but I mean. The size and traits are all there for him to be a really high-end guy. I mean, man, the NFC West is going to be interesting. What do you guys think of the AFC North? Deshaun Watson comes there. Obviously, the change at quarterback for the Browns. Um, Bengals still there. And, uh, and the Ravens, who dominate the yep. draft. They lose Hollywood Brown. But they're going to add a lot of talent regardless. J.K. Dobbins and some of those guys mm -hmm. might be healthy. Of course, you have that wide receiver they took really high a year ago who was uh, injured most of his rookie season. That'll be a different story. Uh, yeah, what, how do you see the North shaping out? I think the Ravens win. That, that's my go-to. I mean, just that defense and those pieces that they've added, they're just going to be so good. And on top of that, like offensively, they're going to be, they're always going to be fine at the very least. And they have a chance to be pretty good. Yeah. From there, I mean, it's super wide open. I wouldn't be surprised if the Steelers make a run as crazy as that feels. I mean, a lot depends on yeah, how much Deshaun Watson actually plays. Plus, you got the Bengals uh, in right, there. Right, right. How much Watson actually plays is a huge part of all this. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if the Steelers make some sort of run. Right now, the Browns are favorites at plus 175. Bengals plus 200. Ravens plus 225. Really? If we're just assessing value, feels like a really good pick. A big ride. Yeah. Totally. Um, I sent a picture totally. into uh, the NFL <laughs> draft chat. <laughs> Anyone want, can we bring that up really quick? This is a big quote from my guy, Greg Tolchich. <laughs> oh, my. 
That's like Fabio Weird Al and James, played by James Franco. <laughs> you really seem like you're coming around on Greg Dulcich. I'm in. Yeah, yeah he's I, all in. I roll out of bed and look like this, no problem. Tag. What Shout a out legend. to Kylie for sending that to us. What a Croatian legend. Mm, the Croatian sensation. Wow. Yeah. That's really incredible. Shouts to him for being simply amazing. Um, also, I sent him a DM. No traction yet. Damn. No traction yet. How many DMs do you think he currently has unread? Probably a lot. A hundred. Just a hundred? I would say five. Yeah, it's possible. Here's a connection. Greg Dolchich's high school head coach was mm -hmm. George Payton's college roommate at UCLA. That makes me like it less. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, so Payton did an interview with the, the Broncos website. Where he basically said, like, yeah, I've been super in touch with that guy, obviously, and, like, tuned in to everything Dulcich does. Like, crazy smart guy, and everybody agrees. So I, I kind of like it. It just reminds me of Brock Osweiler. Uh, yeah, me too. But that's that's a different thing. It might be. I mean, it just all that matters is if he's good or not. Yep. Uh, Again, for a lot of people, he was the best tight end in this draft. But, like, I'm a human oh. who is very susceptible to bias. Oh, no. And I feel like most other humans are also very susceptible to mm -hmm. bias. And so if I find out that there was something that could have impacted that, it worries me a little bit. Yeah. Also, it's more information, though. You just have to hope that Yeah. Well, could go one way or the other. You want to know about more information? Vance Joseph's brother coached Carlos Henderson in college. Yeah, that part's and not good. And somehow he still ended up here and had zero career receptions. Although Carlos Henderson, big RAS guy. Very he true. Got Very up, true. Bro. Also Very big true. eating dry ass weed guy. Yeah. That is what happened to him, huh? Yes. Yeah. He got pulled he over panicked. with weed, tried to take care of it by just eating. <laughs> <laughs> eating it. He's a genius. <laughs> Smart guy. But I, I want to see, like, those are the ones that are crazy, Can we right? get Carlos Henderson on the show? I want to interview him <laughs> yeah. about what that feels we like. We need to have, like, a weed-eating contest. Eating dried, a dried plant. It's like a the, dense, dried plant. Yeah. Eating that sounds like the worst thing ever. Yeah. It's like instead of eating uh, hot dogs for a contest, you just all eat weed. Yeah, right. that doesn't sound great. <laughs> I mean, again, Greg Dulcich in photo number two would know all about that, actually. Um, 105, huh? 105 is where this ends. 105 is where this ends. We do have a guest coming tonight. Oh, really? Um, but it is not Greg Dulcich. Oh, no. Uh, um, <clears throat> but we really hope for Greg Dulcich, Ryan. You got to hope he's so, going to be coming here in any second. So I'll introduce him when he does. Um, yeah, that'll be fun. I'm really there curious where this is going. We will uh, <laughs> patiently wait for Greg Dolchich to respond to my DM three months from now. Yep. And we'll have him on then. Should be fun. You'll probably have met him in person many times by that point. Probably not. Mm. I don't really leave this bar ever. Mm. Fair. Fair. Okay. Is this a... M oh, okay. Jeremy I thought Rucker? we were must Master Teague highlights for a second. Um... But no, no, no. Okay, good. Jeremy Rucker to the Jets. J-A-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. They've had a decent draft. Brees Hall, Jeremy Rucker. Oh, someone asked, didn't Carlos Henderson live in Colorado? Why did he eat the weed? I believe he was in Louisiana he at was. the time. Louisiana. There's uh, a, so there. Jordan Addison, receiver at Pitt, yep. the Blitnikoff winner. There's this whole big thing Absolute going on stud. tonight, I guess, where now it's sounding like he's going to transfer to USC because there's offering a massive NIL deal. Oh, I heard about this. This is this is bad. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona State, they just put it's together pay just for play. some of their super rich people. A news just came out a couple hours ago. They have like a seven-figure fund that they just created solely for NIL. Yeah. How does that work? What do you mean? But NIL was supposed to be an exchange of no, Nobody services. checks, though. Not I, mean, I mean, the way that typically... So most of the big schools just have, like, a fund like this, and they say, like, do charity work or or uh, 
post about charities around here. And so then they call it that. But there's, I mean, there's no rules right now. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, it's not. See you taking it's advantage. Definitely of it. starting a new era. Don't they're trying. believe him. They are. Okay, all right. They're trying. Wow. Should, we, should we just start a GoFundMe? Sounds uh, I've, about yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, we should you funnel should. through us. Well, I mean, we're already doing that. <laughs> that is true. But the players have to actually be good for us to want to work with them. That's the tough part. Couple of picks to get caught up Especially on. Especially if they travel uh, every or transfer every couple of years. The Jets took Jeremy Ruckert and the Dolphins took Channing Tindall. Oh. Damn. That sucks. Jets took Tindall, huh? Chanel now. Huh? They swiped well, right on Tindall. Yep. Wow. Sure did. Yeah, is, that the, is that the right way? Yeah. Yes, it's it is. Good. It's a good pun, I guess. Good play on Henry words. is a Tinder success story. So yeah, I am. He is. I am. He really is. They're going to make a commercial out of me someday. Henry is a three. Henry is a. Oh, I hate this next one. Oh, boy. Tell me. Tell Leo, me. Leo Chanel to the Chiefs. Dang. They've gone so defensive heavy. Defense, 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 and Sky Moore, right? I think so. That one sucks. Thing is, the Broncos could have had all these guys, and they didn't want. Yeah, them. they didn't want the off-ball linebacker, so they didn't. They didn't get it. Oh. Though I will say, Rams taking Logan Bruss. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Logan Bruss, my guy. So. Brandon Smith out of Penn State. That'd be that'd be a fun one at this point. Yeah. But again, um, like, can, how many Beaver, linebackers Cincinnati? can you even add? I know. Like, I wanted to ask Zach, actually, do we think... Do we Sounds like we don't. Think. Do we think at all? <laughs> Sounds like we no, don't. No, we talk. don't. I mean, Yaya's coming in with Studio B problems. So, you know, I got We're doing our own show. We're doing a show over here, Drake. Because I can't tune out. We're trying to do a show here. I can't tune out everything, you know. Not us. Oh, no. it's Nick. That's our guest. I should have. Uh, uh, there's the spoiler. blew it. Nick with a K. Nick Benito himself. Um... Did you I like Darren. I like Darren Beavers here. <laughs> okay, we can talk while they figure yeah, things out. Yeah, you should talk. It's a damn good thing we didn't I'm get very Greg distracted. Dolchich <laughs> to call really in and distracted. have him be calling in to Studio B. Dre, you were in the middle of saying, "Do we think?" Yeah, I don't know. Do we think? <laughs> it completely <laughs> sounds like the answer is no. I have nothing, is, bro. <laughs> Do we I have nothing. Do we think? Yeah, yeah, derailed me completely. Something with so I was thinking, I uh, you don't, I don't even think they take a linebacker, or maybe they do in like the fifth, sixth, seventh, somewhere in there. But right, you just look at care. how many inside outside linebackers they have; they're they're stacked. I wanted to ask Zach if he really believes, like you do, that the Baron Browning conversion is now happening. Like oh, we can un get he's Zach getting oh, unconverted. Wait, no, He's getting right. unconverted. We're trying right? something new. Logan Bruss. Feeling dangerous. <laughs> Let's have AJ, bring in AJ. Come on. <laughs> Just bring, AJ has no idea he's joining our show right now. Hey, AJ. Hey, AJ. <laughs> that guy. People that are trying to call into this show are somehow calling into the Av show. People are <laughs> trying to call the Av show. So let's get AJ's draft takes. He actually has really good ones. Yeah, he has great draft takes. Exactly. Oh, uh, we have Nick uh, oh wait. I can, hear, I can hear both pods at the same time. So oh, if, you, if one of you is talking to me, I don't know what's going on. Just give us, give us a quick it. breakdown of the Broncos picks. <laughs> Um, I've liked, liked it, it so, so far. far. <laughs> um, if the apps people are listening to me, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I've liked, yeah. it, liked it so far, man. I think that they've I think that they've addressed needs. And really, when you have well, when you when you have your first pick is like what 64. Yep. Look, come on. Yeah, yeah. Like you have certain ex like you're you're just trying to get you're just trying to find guys that can help you out a little bit. So I yeah. think they've done I think they've done a good job with that. All right, AJ, we have the guest we were actually trying to get. Um, so we're going to toss to him. Oh, no, no, no. no, no. Uh, no. Uh, something is that, Okay, right. more AJ. Let's, more AJ, more AJ. Um, <laughs> I'm getting both. 
Okay, now we have... <laughs> yeah, both of us have... grew it all. Okay. All right, bye, AJ. Bye, bye AJ. AJ. We love you. Man, that Ferrari hat he's rocking looks so good. Wow. All right, wow. now we're going to bring in our actual guest. The oh, homie, here Kendall. we are. This is a guy who puts in a lot of work when it comes to the draft, mm -hmm. and I really value his opinions on this stuff, so uh, I'm excited to have him on tonight. Nick, how you doing, my guy? Hey, doing pretty well. Back-to-back uh, -back days covering the draft. A long wait till the Broncos finally picking at 64, and... Uh, two players that should probably be immediate contributors for the Broncos this season as I think George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett sees a, a window cracked here uh, with the Chiefs kind of falling back to the pa uh, back back to the pack a bit. So excited to see what these guys are. Maybe not the exact direction I would go, but obviously as soon as the draft happens, I want to see how it plays out and how these guys' careers play out. Well, you, you kind of teased it there. So what is the direction you would have gone? I mean, you had two offensive tackles there at pick 64 that probably would have interested me there. Uh, Abraham Lucas, Bernard Raymond. I know Raymond is 25 years old, sub 33 inch arm length. Uh, Abraham Lucas as well, not the best run blocker, but to solidify that position would have been ideal. Honestly, I probably would have been on the, fall, uh, on the phone calling, trying to move up uh, for one of those edge rushers that I valued up higher than the, than, uh, the Broncos were able to select somebody like an Arnold Ebiketti, somebody like a Boye Mafe, I think would have been a major difference maker, more three down ability uh, than both those, than uh, what the Broncos probably are getting out of Nick Benito. Um, I've asked around a little bit. It sounds like the Broncos were really hoping uh, to move up a slight trade up to land either a Cam Taylor Britt or Drake Jackson. Didn't work out that way. Uh, they end up taking uh, Nick Benito there at 64, but uh, Either way, uh, day one pass rusher, maybe even if he's just a designated pass rusher, third down specialist early on, uh, that's going to be some value for the Broncos in 2022, no doubt. Awesome. Go ahead. Compared to the other tight ends in the class. Dulcich, I think he is probably one of the more versatile tight ends as far as his deployment in the pass game. Um, and what makes me really excited about his usage here is that uh, – the, the Packers, when they brought in Nathaniel Hacker, they spent a lot of draft capital on versatile tight ends that can not only play the F tight end, I like to think about it, the flex tight end, but the H back role. And I think this is adding some versatility to your backfield and the tight end room in general. I think you're going to see a um, usage with Greg Dulcich lined up in the slot as much as you're going to see him lined up in line, as much as you're going to see him line up in the backfield. I think this is a, uh, this puts Andrew Beck's position on the roster uh, in question and uh, also gives you some options for Albert Okoyebinam, who is a bigger, faster athlete, not as nuanced as a pass catcher, uh, but um, Albert Okoyebinam hasn't been able to stay healthy. Uh, so now you fortify that position as well and raise the floor of that room. Yeah, Nick, do you see this between Dulcich? Yaya's way too loud. He can't. He can't He's so loud. loud. Do you see um, some Dulcich, Albert O duality and switchability and same thing with Benito Baron Browning this is what has me excited is that Benito for example listed at linebacker at least by like Mike Cliz when he talked about the pick and it's very reminiscent of the Browning pick he's kind of a yeah. unique guy you, not exactly used as Kenneth Murray was at Oklahoma but not necessarily not used like Kenneth Murray was at Oklahoma and I like what you said about the H-back stuff that was some stuff I was talking about Albert O and his utility when he was coming out of Mizzou. So how do you see that interchangeability? Is that something that you think the staff is uh, trying to bring to the table? I definitely think it's some interchangeability there, especially for the the Nick Benito pick. Maybe not as much for the Dulcich, right. uh, just because Albert Okoyebinam is a much more linear, explosive athlete, where I think Dulcich is more nuanced in his ability to break in routes and yeah. uh, create separation, where yeah. Albert Okoyebinam kind of turns like a battleship sometimes in his breaking off of his routes. You know, He's so big that when he's moving that fast, it's hard for his momentum to change direction. But I'm really curious to see about the, the pass rush games that uh, Ejiro Evero is going to use with Nick Benito and yeah. Baron Browning. Um, very unfortunate to see uh, Leo Chanel come off the board to the Chiefs just recently, but uh, Baron Browning, talk about the versatility of him rushing the passer. I'd love to see some simulated pressures there. Uh, shout out to Mike Zimmer who kind of brought that and really uh, left an imprint on the NFL with simulated pressures, but walking down Baron Browning and uh, Jonas Griffith even yeah. to the A-gap with uh, wide nine of Nick Benito. Who's coming? Who's going? And uh, Nick Benito, while Probably not the, the most valuable pick in my opinion because I don't know if he's going to be a very good first or second down player. And in today's NFL, you need to be able to get your pass rusher still on the field in first down because teams are passing on first down more than ever before. Uh, but the ability to, again, Nick Benito, is he dropping on that edge spot from the nine wide? Is it going to be Baron Browning over the A-gap? Twists and stunts. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully they have some 
unique and uh, timely blitz packages this season that they can utilize those guys and uh, really play games with the offensive line and the quarterback. I think, and I was talking about this earlier, when it comes to Benito, I think that you can play him on first down, especially against teams like the Chiefs and the Chargers. You're almost daring those teams to run the ball against you anyway because it's yeah. like you, I know you don't want to do it. So prove to me that you'll actually do it. We'll put Nick, Nick Benito out there on the edge. Mm-hmm. Try to run the ball into him. You'll, you'll probably be doing us a favor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's always a little bit of give and pull, though, um, for yeah. that kind of thing. And for Nick Benito, I do worry about – I'm very much a believer in the tenets that uh, Brandon Seeley is kind of implementing on the NFL right now where bigger, longer, heavier on the defensive line so you can play more defensive backs like Broncos fans screaming for a linebacker than cover a tight end for years. Why on earth would you play a linebacker when you could play a safety? Like, right? So you need to have uh, defensive linemen with length and the ability to play multiple gaps up front so you can play more defensive backs in the back end. You kind of lose that ability with uh, Nick Benito projecting him wise just because the length, the lack of speed to power, uh, the smaller stature, but a very good player from space. Um, and I do love, I think he's as good on first and second down in space as he is holding up as a at the point of attack containing the edge. So it will be really interesting. There's also a weird projection with Nick Benito because of Oklahoma's defensive front and what they did was different yeah. than what most teams do in the entire all of college football because there's so much slanting up front. So the projection of him playing on first and second down, it really is a projection uh, because we didn't see it very much at Oklahoma. Uh, But it should be a lot of fun. And I'm with you. Um, The pass game is definitely the way to go in today's NFL. Um, But you do, I think there's value to having players that are so good in the run game that you can play less of them on the field so you can play more defensive backs. Same with linebackers, same with uh, nose tackles like Jordan Davis. Oh, he doesn't get off the passer okay, I can play two safeties and a 230-pound linebacker and not worry about it because he's so he's that good against the run. So always that uh, give and pull for that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, both these guys are going to worry about a little pre-snap tells as Dulcich develops yeah. that ability to become a complete Y and as Benito develops that ability to be a more well-rounded power player, run defender, first two downs ability. But sticking to the speed rusher for the Sooners – in what you've seen of that Rams defense over the last couple years, and semi-similar edge linebacker tweeners that have kind of fit in there, how do you see Nick Benito's role then in adapting that to Evero's defense? I mean, they did like, I know a lot of Broncos fans got pretty upset about Vic Fangio's usage of Von Miller, but per a game snap basis, Von Miller was dropping into coverage almost three times as much uh, in the Rams defense as he was for the Broncos under uh, Vic Fangio. You didn't see it as much, because, or you didn't complain about it as much because they were winning, and you had Aaron Donald also rushing, so yeah. who cares, right? Um, but I'm guessing you're going to see a lot of uh, who's coming, who's going uh, simulated pressure up front, especially with uh, Baron Brown, and I'm curious what this looks like with uh, Josie Jewell. I think he is the constant at the off-ball spot spot um but still i think that's that is the main thing here and obviously they're going to try to bring pressure and again benito let's say he's this year he's just a designated pass rusher you're starting randy yeah. Gregory. you're starting uh, bradley chubb over him that's okay this season it's it's more about 2023 and 2024 yeah. what he can do there can he actually hold up on first and second down can he develop more speed to power does he have the frame to put on 10 to 15 more pounds i don't know um but this is a very much a, an instant impact pick with one of the more twitchy pass rushers in this entire draft class. All right, looking into tomorrow, tons of picks for the Broncos. Um, lots of interesting players still on the board. I guess start with a couple of positions you'd like to see the Broncos address and then finish with maybe some of your favorite players there. Oh, man. Um, well, like I mentioned earlier, the Broncos, this is what I've gathered, and you know, some people might push against it because uh, sometimes that's how it works in this industry, but it sounds like the Broncos are trying to move up uh, in that second round to snag one of Cam Taylor Britt or Drake Jackson. And there's been a lot of buzz about the Broncos trying to target defensive backs. So this seems like an area where Broncos are going to look cornerback, safety kind of guys. And there's still a lot of good uh, cornerbacks and safeties available. Um, as far as I can tell, uh, is uh, Mathis from Pitts, Pitts still available? Did he come off one of the last picks there in the, the third round? No, he should I be didn't still see his available. Name yet. Okay, I absolutely love uh, Damari Mathis from Pittsburgh. I think he is actually your Cam Taylor Britt light. Uh, version in this class and with uh, what Pittsburgh does coverage wise with a lot of cover four he plays on an island and has to play off cover oh, oh did we mute him audio. well Nick we might have just lost your audio as we is there any we're chance talking you got about muted like on your end? Cam Taylor Britt 
notes. It says you. It says our side muted says it. you oh. muted yourself. Oh, there I'm we back. go. All right, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, I really like Damari Mathis, though. They played a lot of cover four at Pitt and a very physical player. I think he's your discount version of uh, Cam Taylor Britt uh, in this scheme. Um, I think, as far as I can tell, I think your, your guy, RK, is still available in uh, Tariq Woolen as well. Yep. Even if Tariq Woolen becomes your David Bruton of the Broncos defense, where he's uh, like, okay, no he can back and play special teams. Who cares? You're talking yeah. about a fourth round pick there. Yeah. So, um, and Broncos special teams could use some gunner ability. So, sign me up for that all day. Um, some other safeties that uh, defensive backs that stick out to me. I really like uh, Tyson Anderson from Toledo. Doesn't know exactly what he's doing in coverage all the time yet, um, but uh, really lengthy, really good athlete, valedictorian, very smart. I think Nick Cross is still available as well. From no, he Denver. got taken. Oh, he did? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> that, take that one off the board. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, Joshua Williams, another small school cornerback from uh, Fayetteville State. I think he had some of the... Um, best athletic testing numbers from the GPS data at the Combine. Um, has some work to do there as well as coverage, but you're taking developmental guys uh, down this late. And uh, also I could see some depth on the offensive line. I think Zach Tom is still available as well. He's a versatile player. I think he projects well as uh, he played tackle and center for Wake Forest. Tested like a really good athlete at the Combine. I'm surprised there's not more people talking about him. His yeah. number one comparisons on a mock draftable are like Joe Thune and uh, multiple all the standout guards, Joel Batino, um, really good guards and uh, center prospects like that. So Zach Tom stands out for me as well. Other than that, I mean, special teams, depth, Think start thinking about 2023 as well. What positions start to become uh, concerns for you after the season? That's what day three is about. That's why I like having Nick on. He's talking about guys from Fayetteville State. <laughs> Fayetteville State, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do you, You're a big Cam Taylor brick guy. What about JoJo Doman? Would that be a guy, his teammate, that you would uh, circle as a day three target. By the way, that's a homecoming, not a reunion, so I'm in on it. Mm. There you go. Yeah, we're all anti-Nebraska here, so no. <laughs> I, I, yeah, no, I'll, I'll let the no Nebraska beef, thing no go, beef. I guess. You know, I, I'm an Iowa Hawkeye fan, so I'm here for yeah, all exactly. the Nebraska slander I can exactly. possibly get in here. Um, but uh, JoJo Doman, he's an interesting player because there's multiple factors here for him. It is a big projection for him inside the box because he played kind of that hybrid safety out in space coverage role and the processing and the ability to fill in space and uh, on your run keys from the box versus in the slot is a totally different game. Things happen much quicker, close to yard of the ball. So that's a projection which concerns me. Um, he measured teeny tiny as far as arm length uh, at the NFL combine as well, which for linebacker types that have succeeded recently in the NFL on playing in slot and playing in space, those guys all are pterodactyls. I mean, they have crazy arm length. Talk about like Javon Kurse and Von Campbell two of the best non-cornerbacks playing the slot over the last couple seasons. Those guys are like 34 arm length, crazy um, arm length. So Jojo Doman, very short arms. And uh, also I think he's gonna be turning 25 or 26 oh, this year oh. as well, which for a linebacker, uh-oh, uh, you don't wanna hear that. So, a few of those this I, year, yeah. Yep, the uh, the COVID year, um, which makes that a thing. But uh, concern for Jojo Doman there, uh, for me, if he's there, you know, Broncos have two round five picks now, right? Um, I wouldn't be against it because he's a good athlete. Again, you're talking about it in special teams. Yeah. Um, so I wouldn't be against that, but uh, I'm not looking to spend 115 or 116 on it. Yeah, yeah, great point. And then just real quickly, I'd love to hear your thoughts on, uh, you know, this was kind of a big moment for the Chiefs. And in the end, they have five picks, four on the defensive side. Um, Leo Chanel, Brian Cook, Karlaftis, McDuffie. They do get Sky Moore. What did you make of Kansas City's haul on this first two days of the draft? Well, I'm about to say what some people in Broncos country might think are curse words, but I think they had a really, really good draft. Um, I like a lot of these picks um, for where they got them value-wise. It's really unfortunate uh, in that regard. And yeah. this is, again, this is more about the Chiefs are remaking their identity, and they understood this year making the Tyreek Hill trade that they're kind of falling back to the pack to give themselves new avenues of – remaking their team going forward but every single one of their draft slots that they got i thought they got decent value yeah. for where they took them uh the one that i think i pushed against them the most is trading up oh we lost you again he on the muted audio. himself again but yes trading up for <laughs> trent mcduffie in that scheme did not make a ton of sense a man heavy scheme and going with a zone heavy corner i know that's exactly what nick was gonna say here um, Do we have you back? Try to see if that Michael unmute itself. It, yeah, I got nothing on our end. We've got nothing. All right. Well, it, honestly, uh, this was great. 
Once he <laughs> praised the Chiefs, it was all gone. Yeah, it that's what happens. Gone. You start saying the Chiefs did good yeah, stuff, and damn. we got to get the the, yeah, the broom we gotta out. Go. Sorry. Off. Uh, appreciate you, Nick. I hope you can hear this. We really uh, enjoyed thank having you, you on. Uh, so thank you for that, and we'll we'll definitely talk again soon. Uh, yeah. A lot of people in the comments loved having you on as well, so we, we appreciate it. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest of your draft. See ya. There he is, Nick Kendall. Mile High Huddle, I didn't give them a proper shout out when yep. he first hopped yep. on. Uh, he does great stuff over there. Like yep. I said, you guys saw, he, know, he knows a lot when it comes to the draft. Respect his opinions, except for when he said the Chiefs had a good draft. Um, <laughs> but everything else I respect. Uh, <clears throat> and I really respect what he was saying about Tariq Woolen. I mean, David Bruton's a really good comp there in terms yeah. of take a guy who's a really good athlete, uh, put him out as a gunner. Let him help out in special teams. And again, if you can't figure out how to make a 6 4 corner with a 4 2 6 work, it's just on you. You screwed up. Totally. Yeah, I mean, the, wrong. if he's there, they should take him. Kind of simple as that to me. Yeah, yeah and um, we'll talk to Zach here just in a second as he gets off the phone. Or, sorry, if he gets out of the presser with George Payton. There's and a ton of interior D line talent. Nathaniel right. Hackett, but George mm -hmm. Payton just told. Reporters, there's five or six players left that they really like. That's the start of the fourth round for you. So Last they have saloon. the tenth pick in the fourth round. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, 11th, and the eleventh. Yep. So you expect one of those guys to fall to them, but again, they but two. absolutely have the the ammo to move up. With that being said, as I told you guys, George Payton said it was quote unquote critical to get a pick in next year's draft during this draft, which I just think is funny because he takes it so seriously um, to have us to have more picks. Right. You can't um, have four. Right. Imagine you four, four picks. You got to have at least six. So yeah. now you have five. I'd bet they end up and with at least seven. two thirds, two day, two picks. That's yep. huge. Right, right, right. Yep. I agree with that. Especially when those. the last mm -hmm. one they're going to, the the one they have naturally is going to be the last one of the round, you know? That's heavy, so it's going to be nice. Um, I got Shariq Wool and any other guys that you guys are really targeting? Parian Winfrey. Yeah, that's a good one. Neil Farrell. Big time. Um, Where's Neil Farrell? LSU, the guy that saw love at the Senior Bowl. Just dominating the entire right. time. That's why I recognize. The and name. Uh, I think there's a lot of talent at guard. Dan Darren Kennard, Kennard yep. my Georgia guy. So I'm getting redundant on that. Chris Paul out of Tulsa. Uh, Jatari Carter. All guys who should be in that mix. And uh, some half decent tackle talent as well. Rashid yeah. Walker out of Tennessee. Uh, Kellen Dyche out of Arizona State. RAS off the charts for him. Let's go. Max Mitchell out of Louisiana. So trenches really seems like. Fall Lele, too. Like, not a great fit for the Broncos. Not a great fit for the Broncos. But. As a mascot? Eventually, do you the get to the point where it's like, himself. yeah, he's. The why not? So, some point it's worth the chance. That's a non football athlete on a football field. Not yeah. a track athlete. Is he though. an athlete? Give me Calvin Austin, though. I want a little speedster. Uh, Why does everyone else get to have little speedsters and never us? Well, we Covey. do, but then KJ Hamler gets hurt. Can you guys believe Greg Dolchich still hasn't read my DM? Wow. That's crazy. Like, Greg, just so you know, usually his DMs get written within the first two minutes. That's how hype <laughs> people get when they I get that noty. From all the big game RK over I here. I did see someone in the comments like defending him. I think they thought I was being serious. Like he's probably calling his friends and family right now. I was like, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, guys, <laughs> everything it's we it's say is a bit. It's all um, a bit. But I, it would be cool if he jumped on. AFC West <laughs> grades? No. No. I looked at Ryan. He's no. It's Super guy. chats? No, he, do you have grades? Do you have them prepared, or are we going to have to table-side Caesar it? No, I'm not table-side Caesaring any grades. We're going <laughs> to super chat it, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Five picks before we're even up, and then we'll meet back here. We'll figure out what time in a sec. So super chat it up. First. All right, let's super chat it up. Uh, so just an organized our, segment. Our apologies to these <laughs> that are no longer relevant. Okay. Uh... Kenny Drew, nine ninety nine, super chat. What a KD, comment! KD, my chat. guy, Kenny my Drew, my guy, Kenny Drew. Appreciate it. Next one, 
Cheers to fellow Ram McBride. Good luck in PHNX. We'll cheer you when you come to Denver this season. Uh, to a point. To a point. That's the to important part. There. To a point. Yes. I'm not above booing him. If right, you are not. No. And also, if Josie Jewell's the one defending him, that's enough cheering. Oh, that's God. good enough cheering for me. There you go. Uh, from where? Why rocks? Yeah. Why rocks? Four ninety nine. Super chat. Woo! Why rocks? Love that for us. Love you. Travis Jones, a steal for who? Yep. Yeah, Travis uh, Jones did Baltimore. end up being a steal yep, for those. Of course. Damn Baltimore Ravens. From uh, Broncos Redacted, uh, best OT prospect left that fits. That That's, and the fits is the Faalele. That's why he's not involved. Yeah. Um, Rashid Walker, Kellen Dyche. I'd take Walker. I too would take Walker. Yeah, All right, Penn there State, it is. big Penn State guys, big Nittany Lions. Yeah, wonder what Nittany means. <laughs> no one knows, but it no doesn't knows. sound complimentary. And it doesn't get the people going. Yeah, I think all. it has something to do with being a nit wit, but I think oh. I'm incorrect. On that okay, uh, from <laughs> AK Nugs Life, Benito, future Hall of Famer. Wow, let's hope a Hall of Fame. Nick Benito is getting a lot of speed rush off the edge. That's going to be fun AF to Let watch, me say this. Bro. If he stays in 11, Hall of Fame for sure. No doubt. No um, doubt. This all right, guy gets Let's it. finish these up here from Broncos redacted team. Told you, Ryan, LOL. Go Broncos. We have no idea. What I believe him, though. He big I bet he did tell you. Tell, told he, Ryan. He on probably that told one. me. Yeah, he told he probably him. told me. So it's tough to tell what exactly Nittany means, but the general consensus is that it comes from a Native American term meaning yeah. single mountain. Yes. So mountain lions. But single now not from a, one mountain. Not a mountain range, big rye. A specific this is a mount standalone mountain that has some mountain lions on it. Right. It is a very specific mountain. That has lions. Thank you. Thank yep, you. Yep, mountain lion or cougar. And okay. that's why Henry's the Jason Owe of this show. One more here from the same account. Off the charts measurable. Filled pass guy. rusher, edge player, got a TE2, and added a pick next year with a bunch of picks left and no definite holes. Go Broncos. Tomorrow's yep. going to be a mega day. George Payton in the fourth and fifth with those many picks is going to cook. Mark my words. Mm -hmm. Are we even sure that... He's tight end two. He might be tight end one. I think he's competing to be tight end one. Me too. Yes, absolutely. Big Hank. Yes. I would say tight end one, but if he responded to my DM. <laughs> <laughs> as soon Curls as he comes alone. On, as soon as he comes on the show, T E one for sure. Curls okay. alone, he's tight end one. It's true. He could probably run a great curl route. Plus, you saw the depth on that stash, right? It's, it, it's not the best, but it's. Okay. Good depth. Okay, fine, I like it. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, it's good depth. Um, I guess width on the stash maybe is more correct. All right. We're waiting on Zach, I think. We are? We are waiting on Zach because we want to hear what they said. In the Zachary presence. Stevens is joining us? Yes, Zachary Stevens. Oh, my. that's That guy's a big deal. How did he decide on just the C? Zach? Do you know how? Well, he didn't decide. That was his parents. His when they oh, so he's him. not even like a Zachary or anything? No, he is Zachary David Stevens, um, but I just think he used logic to say like, Zach, you don't need the H. That's for the okay. Uri. Yeah, I Zach, guess. Zach speaks uh, on Zach the way I, when I go to pick up my wife's pills from the pharmacist, <laughs> I'm able to speak on my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, like, this is her name. This is her insurance. This is her date of birth. But, like, when they it's went with Zach, see. like, is that a decision that he made, like, in preschool, probably? It's right. like, write your name. And, it's like, and then you just let a preschooler decide it? Right. Does, You're just like, bro, exactly. send it, you know? Did his probably. parents say, like, hey, when it comes time to write Zach, no no H. Right. Scrap, like, whose decision was it? Scrap the H, little buddy. Not for you. Not exactly. today. Makes you Man, think. Man. Ah. If only we could have the legend himself, Zakari Stevens, on our show to ask him. So all these I've spoken with Zakari, uh, and he said the presser is still going. No, so we're still just I'm eating still getting the tweets. Here. Dulcich and Gabbana, big talker. 
He's not talking to him. He's talking to George Payton. Oh, Georgie Patey, big blah blah. Um, are you? Are you like eighteen months old? <laughs> <laughs> That's 100% <laughs> how he talks to his daughter. <laughs> George, he made big <laughs> Oh, God, I think I just broke a rib. Oh, <laughs> no. The fact that this company thought it was wise <laughs> to put me in front of a mic for five hours straight, two consecutive nights. Yeah. I think oh. really speaks to the uh, lack of sound decision making that's I need to going see on. a chiropractor immediately yeah he I think yes. I actually did just laugh <laughs> a rib out of place he blew his back out once again George you baby big blah blah <laughs> it hurts oh. alright uh, new update from Zakari <laughs> Zakari where's he at um, um, he said phone going to die so shorter call Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> That's my <laughs> kind of... Zachy Stevie, no ra- blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my kind of... That's my kind of... That's my kind of... To the point. <laughs> talking. No, we're is. having fun and so is everyone else. Yeah, Everyone <laughs> is loving what we're offering in the backstage. Nothing but laughter and compliments. <laughs> Talk about the Eagles. Who do you guys think won the first? Really, game? once you got into Kobe Dean, it was just birds all the time. Yep. I think I'll be. Yeah. I think yeah. the family and I will be moving to Philadelphia yeah. now. So yeah. it's wow. a big moment. What else Go did they birds. do today? Anything? Go birds. Did they do anything else? Did they draft any other players today? Actually, yeah, one guy. Okay. The guy that was meh. The Kobe Dean. No. Oh, the center. Oh, the Jergens. center. Yeah. Jurgens. Oh, all right. They got jerked yeah. around. Yeah. Yep. 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 That's some right. athletes, We're waiting though. on I love it. <laughs> Zakari. Zakari is on his way. Zakari. Why have you guys named him Zakari? Well, we were talking about this prospect, Zachary Carter, mm-hmm. for Florida. Literally, Hank and I have been talking about him for four years, probably on the pod. Only a week ago that I stopped calling him Zachary and start just calling him Zachary. For I just some... assumed that he knew something. Right, right. <laughs> like I... like when somebody sees Zachary and says Zachary, you're like, oh yeah, it's Zachary. <laughs> you're not you're not just going That's to assume. Right, right. So it's like, oh, I guess it's Zachary. Because why the hell would you say Zachary? <laughs> I don't know that I should blah blah on this. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good, Zach. <laughs> Zach, what's up, guys? We're uh, we're over the we've completely gone off the rails here. Also, I'm ninety six percent sure that I dislocated a rib uh, from laughing. Uh, so we've had some on show injuries here, um, but things are going. I'm gonna have you kids popping it back into place. <laughs> we might need someone to like yeah, stand yeah, on that. Yeah, yeah. Where is I mean, Mario you know, when we know need I him? I would do that. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it would. Yeah. That's All why right. he speaks so highly of you, Zach. Okay, let me you just get my rib there. back into place here yeah. a little bit oh, before no. I ask some questions. Uh, what did we learn from uh, from George Payne? <laughs> George Payne, you spoke a lot. Huh? <laughs> Big well, I think, I think it was actually Nathaniel Hackett that kept the room light and kept oh. some uh, kept, kept some ribs uh, dislocating in the Broncos draft room because it was <laughs> very amazing. clear that those two guys, I mean, they, they had a giggle just like you guys had, right, when I joined the show. I mean, they couldn't stop laughing for about five seconds with themselves. So you could tell that Nathaniel Hackett brought a very different energy than what Vic Fangio has brought to the draft room a couple of years, the, or I should say the past couple of years. And one of the things that we learned from George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett after this draft uh, was I think they're very realistic about the two players they got, which is something that you don't always see after these drafts. Typically you see, oh, this was the best guy on our board. Now, one of the things that we heard regarding that was – uh, that they view Nick Bonito as one of the best pass rushers uh, in this draft. But we're very clear, he needs to get bigger, he needs to get stronger in order to be better against the run. So they're, they're, they're I mean, they're spot on, exactly what we thought uh, with him. In terms of his role, they downplayed that a lot, did not touch on if he needs to, or, or what his role is going to be this year, if he's going to be a starter, Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory. And it's 
pretty clear that he is here to eventually take one of their jobs. Bradley Chubb will be the first one, as we've talked about. And then when it comes to Greg Dolchus, I said they were realistic uh, in Bonito. Uh, they're, they're very realistic in him as well. You know, he said, Dolchus said he's a great pass blocker. That was pushed back a little from George Payton and Nathaniel Hackett. Said he needs to, you know, continue to get better in those areas. But what they focused on was the downfield threat that he is. And two years ago, he averaged nearly 20 yards per catch. Last year, over 17 yards per catch. And that's what they're getting. So I think they view him as a little better, well-rounded Alberto. Interesting. Mm. It's so interesting because Alberto is a 4-4 guy. And Dolchich is a four, four, four almost a four seven guy. But four six nine. But yep. what, what's George Kittle though? I'll look it up just because I'm up. curious. So, to be clear, like a four, high four, four, nine. Five. I thought it was four four five. We got a we got a friend of the program. Oh, Yo, let's go! Oh, now we're doing it. What's up, Rome? She can't hear us. <laughs> They're saying they love you. You're there. Oh, she can't hear us. No, she can't hear oh. us. Yeah, she can't. You can't hear. Oh, <laughs> sad. Uh, okay. They love you. I well, love you guys so much. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thanks, Rome. <laughs> That's good We're stuff. Touched. All right. <laughs> it's the best stuff. It is so, the best stuff. So four four true. nine for Alberto. I thought it was four four five. I don't know yeah, that. Four, Kittle four, was four five two. Uh, yeah. Point zero one faster than Noah Fant. Okay. All right. Four four nine. Four six nine. Nice. Four Greg Dolchich. Very fitting. Um. I just I wonder what he does so well that makes him a, a great vertical threat without having you just, just blazing run. speed. I, I, like, I feel like the 40 time can get kind of overplayed, you know, where it's just like, yeah, just get out there and run. Half these guys aren't running. I think you're oversimplifying. Sounds like I mean, it. I think you could say that about, you know, like a, a 400 pound player, just get out there and run. I mean, right. at some point, the 40 time does, does come <laughs> into play. You know, right. maybe he's really, he, the interesting thing is you would think from a slower tight end, and I say slower, he's not like a slow guy, but he would be really good at the possession receiver. He'd be really good at finding the holes in the defense and, and, and spotting down uh, before, you know, it gets to, but no, no, no. They talked about him being a vertical threat and stretching the field. So somehow 469 is going to translate into that. And, and guys, I think that's why when we talked about Dolchich uh, a couple of weeks ago, none of us were over the moon about him because we thought, okay, he's a better blocker than Alberto. Uh, but in terms of his receiving abilities, probably not as big of a threat at the NFL level. And so that's why we thought he's a solid player. And now he gets to come in and his hair gets to prove us wrong. Well, there we go. Best do in the world. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed by that. And maybe it's like a, a release thing. Like he's good at getting off the ball. Um, I mean, he told you his stats. Like absurd big play That's what guy, I mean. I'm asking know? like, yeah. why is he so good at that? I think it's the size and just being able to get down the seam, you know? Right. It could be like an acceleration thing. Like he's good in the first 10 steps. I did see he had one of the best 20-yard splits. On his RAS score, we're a so big twenty-yard split, guys. It's just interesting. So I think um, I, th I think it means Ryan to, to put it in terms that you would understand, that Hank would understand. Andre probably doesn't get this, but speed an eighty-two, acceleration a ninety-two. Mm, I could I would use that player in Madden. I would definitely use that player in Madden. All right, what else did we learn from uh, GP and Hack? Well, we learned that the Broncos really want a corner tomorrow. Uh, a tackle if the right tackle Win. is there. So tackle again, guys. We may see another year where they don't draft a tackle. Of course, they could have drafted Bernard Raymond there, but instead right. they traded back. And as we hear every single year, the Broncos were so close to trading up for uh, for both of their guys on the board. Instead, nope, they trade back and somehow still got their guys. So according to the Broncos, they got the guys they wanted entering this draft. And we also got to hear about Melvin Gordon signing. And we kind of heard the company line here about how Melvin Gordon makes the team better. Uh, and he's going, he, he brings out the best in Javante. Javante brings out the best in him. And guys, pretty darn clear that this is going to be a split backfield as much as people want to see Javante Williams run away with this uh, and be a 1800 yard rusher and knock over 500 people in the process and it's going to be pretty darn close to evenly split between these two guys there was no commitment mm. on if Javante was the starter there was no commitment on if Greg Dolchich was going to be a starter but I give him the, 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 the nod there and like I said with Benito guys they want to stay as far away from a commitment 
on what the role is going to be with him, Bradley Chubb, Randy Gregory. They they are just wanting to stay so far away from that right now. Very interesting. It's kind of weak. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say on Dolchic, we must remember something that we literally said yesterday, if not the day before. Tight end is one of the hardest positions to come in. Oh, Zach Pye. Uh, one of the hardest positions yesterday. to come right in and contribute and be a well-rounded player right away. <laughs> You're essentially having yeah. to learn how to become an NFL offensive lineman and an NFL receiver at the same time. Um, and so, especially because Dolchich doesn't have any gaudy stats. We might have lost Zach. He said his phone was about to die. Um <laughs> Man, that's so Especially sad. Especially because he doesn't have any like gaudy stats. No, he's he not... didn't lose me. He didn't oh, lose me here. We, st- oh, we still awesome. got him. Awesome. I was just trying to give you a little view of the field house. Oh, wow. He, he just ducked. Um, anyways, uh, it's 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 a, it's hard for him to come in, and I feel like people <laughs> could write him off really quick just because he doesn't pop out to you. Yeah. Totally. I mean, just not having grown man strength. Like, yeah. once you're, like, 26 and you have all the time, you're, like, built out, like, that makes a difference. All right, what else, Zach? Were you guys talking – I lost you for a second. Were you talking about me about having grown man strength? Yep. Yes. Yep. Yes. Exactly. Okay, good, good, good. That's what I thought. Yeah. What – you had a question for him. Oh, yeah. Um, who decided the that you spell your name just with a C? Was that, like, your parents tell you uh, or, like, you yeah. you picked that out? He gets. He knows. Yeah, there's a story. There's a, there's a story to this. My my cousin, oh. who's a couple years old than me, spelled his. He was Nick, and they decided to spell it N I C. And my mom was like, "So I guess the first two years of my life, I was Z A C H." And they said, "No, no, no, no. We really like that. Cut off the H." So I t- changed from a Zach to a Zach, wow. and been that my entire life. Wow. Where would you be now Isn't if you that, were still a Zach? Oh my gosh, you're a legend as Z A C. I can't imagine yep. with that H. And actually, I love a good story about someone circle. cutting off the H and making yeah. a good comeback. Yeah, big time. Big to, time. To bring this full circle, the cousin whose name was N I C was Aunt Julie's son. Oh, to bring it back Aunt to Julie. The show. Yeah. Aunt Julie forever. Wow. Aunt Julie forever. <laughs> Aunt Julie forever. Big shouts to Aunt Julie. Uh, last question on the name Did your family ever consider Zakari instead of Zachary? Oh, Zakari, no, because that's stupid. Oh, <laughs> adds up. <laughs> if you knew the backstory, it would be even more stupid, so that's good. It is stupid. Um, He's so right, though. Huh? All right, uh, any last thoughts from, from GP or Hack that we should take into tomorrow? Oh, boy, there better not be eight picks tomorrow, guys. That would be a oh, nightmare. Man. But if anyone is going to have eight picks and make them on day three of a draft, it is going to be George Payton. But, no, I would expect a couple of those picks to be moved, especially maybe those fourth or fifth round picks to be moved to next year for third and fourth round picks. But, I mean, the Broncos are still going to be picking six guys in this draft. And expect, as we saw tonight, a lot of trade, but expect for, for some future capital to come back for next year. Awesome. Zach, I reached out to Broncos PR and DM'd uh, Greg Dolchich myself trying to get him instead of you on the show. True. Uh, but despite good, that failure, good. I think you did a really good job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal oh, stuff. thank you. Thank you. I'll try to replace myself tomorrow with Greg Dolchich. How about that? Maybe come oh, with some longer hair and a mustache. Uh, I cut my hair yesterday. Why didn't damn you tell it. me? Damn it. Damn it. And damn I shaved it. this morning. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Man. We really blew it. With you guys. Next time we make we a really bet, blew it. forget the pizzas. I'm betting if you lose, you have to grow a mustache. Oh, you don't want to see that. I want to see that. it so badly. No, you don't. No, you don't. I oh, do. Hanukkah would be so- I wouldn't be able to kiss her. <laughs> kiss her you know? oh. What are you trying to do to me, Ryan? She doesn't uh, like to kiss mustaches. Yeah, that's on, fair. Bro. That's fair. Well, just don't lose the bet. All right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll do it. Uh, we uh, we appreciate you very yeah, much. And, of course, we'll work. talk to you again tomorrow. Mm-hmm. All right. Have a drink for me, boys. <laughs> All right, later. Uh, there he is, Zach Stevens, the legend. Zachy Stevie, big blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> Zachy Stevie was big blah blah. I agree. Um, oh, I was so recovered. Speaking of big, oh great, Ali hit her head. Oh no. Speaking of big blah blah, she's still making more sense than us. Is yeah. this where we wrap it up? And what's the sched for tomorrow? 
I am dead. I kind of yeah. wish we were just going live the entire time, but that's unwise. Especially yeah. at it's, 10 a.m. I know. What? Yeah, I'll, bro. I'll it's be not halfway happening. through coffee numero uno at that Ooh. time. Um, okay. What the plan is is tomorrow after the entire draft, we will go live again, break down everything. Uh, what happens in day three is a bunch of scrubs get picked. It's true. No, uh, it's not true. And oh, there's literal, some scrubs in literal there. Super Bowls will be won tomorrow. So. Well, both things can be true. It, exactly. Yeah. Some teams will get good players. Some teams will get scrubs. Mm -hmm. We That's can't true. sit here and tell you about them the whole time. There's going to be like 300 people yeah. that we don't know. That'd be um, that'd be right. big blah blah. Me for going sure. like I'm not sure who that is, or tell me more when a pick is announced. Every other pick doesn't sound madly entertaining. It's not good stuff. So what we do is we watch it, we take it all in, yeah. we do some research, and figure out who these players are, where they came from, what they might fit like, and uh, then we'll come on this show. We'll talk all about it. We'll tell you what we learned, watch film, all that good stuff. We'll give grades on the AFC West. We'll give grades for the Denver Broncos. Wow. We'll talk to Zakari Stevens oh, on what they're saying at the Valley. Um, and in the end, this crew, big blah blah. Big, big blah, blah. blah blah. Big tomorrow. blah blah tomorrow <laughs> after the draft. So tune in right after the Broncos make their final pick ish. And uh, we'll be live talking it all. This has been awesome. Thank you guys so much. This turned out to be a pretty, pretty good time. Pretty amazing. Pretty good time. <laughs> pretty good blah, uh, blah. But for now, the three of us, no blah, blah. That's going to wrap it up for us. See you guys tomorrow. Uh, and, and we appreciate you for tuning in.